The challenge is the shiny fishing challenge. The goal is to catch all the fish, all 40 fish, and donate them to the museum. But the catch is... The catch. The catch is I can only catch fish out of season on the earliest possible day the fish can appear. Fish that can appear all year, you can catch them at any time, no big deal. And oh, and once you've caught a fish out of season, you can catch it again in season, and that is uh, that is fine. It's only for the first time you catch the fish. First things first, we'll be starting a brand new town. We'll be looking for a town with a good river and ocean acre. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm looking forward to this challenge. It's going to be incredibly difficult to pull off. This is my third attempt at it, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to just sitting back, relaxing, catching some fish for several hours straight, and having a good time. Hope everyone is ready for a nice, chill fishing stream. I know I am. And Jade has joined us. Hello, Jade. Good Jade. <clears throat> Currently set to noon on Labor Day, 2030. And the reason why is because I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get all the tools without typing in codes. And we'll be going to Shiny Rod. Shiny Rod as opposed to Golden Rod. But yeah, I was on vacation for the last week and a half. It was really nice. I needed a vacation for sure. A good map. I am looking for one thing in particular, and that is a good corner river acre. A corner river acre is a river that runs north to west. It is the shortest river in any of the acres. And not only that, but it has to be a particular corner acre. One in which... You can see the fish uh, no matter where you stand in the most northwest part of the corner. And you can also scare off the fish no matter what as well. Oh good, we got we got the most childish. We got a literal five-year-old character. We got the literal five-year-old. Did he have a name? Tommy. Is that what we named? That sounds about right. <laughs> Anyways, Hawaii was awesome. We ended up, my girlfriend and I, we went together. It was our five year together anniversary. We went to the east side of the big island to the town of Hilo, which is very chill. When I think of Hawaii vibes, I think of Hilo. The west side is where the airport is, so that's where you fly into. At least the main airport. And that one feels less chill. Still chill, but less chill, in my opinion. I rented a car, that was a fiasco. Got it anyways, got the car. And made it over to the east side of the island. They had a nice secluded Airbnb in the Hawaiian rainforest about 10 miles north of town roughly and it was a very chill time very fun very peaceful I thought about fishing and animal crossing a lot <laughs> lots of beach time lots of ocean time lots of volcano time yeah, we just chilled in a volcano. No big deal. I did not find any shiny barred knife gauze, but since I play Pokemon Go when I go on vacation, I did find some shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I actually have a story behind that. Well, let's go check out this river. 
Did we finally get it? Please, this is a great town. I love the lake. We got it! Let's go! All right, we got the town. And I will tell the Pokemon Go story here in a little bit. But first, we gotta complete chores. Yes, we have found our town, everyone. This is the town we will be fishing in. I love the river. I love the lake. Well, I don't know about I don't know if I love the lake, but it's uh, it's good. It's it's good enough. We got tank or spike. I think it was tank. The can. And then uh, let's see who else. We also got oranges, which is cool. Oris. So we got the literal five-year-old has rolled into town. <laughs> we will uh, get a more appropriate shirt. And we got Aurora. And while I'm down here, I want to check out the beach. I'm going to check it out anyways, but let's see what we got. All right, we got... We don't have a very good beach acre here. That sucks. Let's see about the other side. Come on. Yes! We got the perfect beach acre on the right side. Oh, I was nervous there for a second. All right, we have the literal perfect... I don't know about literal, but we have nearly perfect fishing opportunities here. Yes! We got the town layout again. This one is just as good as the last one. Nice golden spot. Hello there, Paolo. You got a shiny Hoot Hoot in Pokemon Go the other day. Or yesterday. That's awesome. In my Pokemon Crystal Challenge. The MPGD Challenge. Oh, and there's our pawn. Good, we need that. Um, known as the Professor Oak Challenge nowadays. Back in 2013, when I did the challenge for Crystal, uh, since I invented it, I found one shiny Pokemon throughout the entire 130 hours it took to complete the MPGD challenge. And it was a shiny Hoot Hoot in Ilex Forest that I headbutted from a tree. Good times. Alright, let's go pretty up our acre. Plant some flowers. We're going to be in this acre a lot. Where's the bridge at? Oh, there it is. My bad. I can't see it over my town map layout. Ah, uh, red tulips. Perfect. And over here, let's see. What do I want? Blue. What else we got? Yellow. White. Yeah, let's plant... You know what? I'm feeling yellow. Yellow pansies. Okay, I got three yellow pansies to work with. Yeah, let's go with yellow. I like that. Look how look at those colors. They're so nice. This is a nice pond to plant some flowers around as well. Purple pansies. Um, white tulips. Blue cosmos. Yellow pansies. That's nice. And we'll go put the other yellow pansies in this corner over here. And we'll plant some trees. Don't want them to really be in the way, so we'll just plant them over here. Because these trees could grow. Since I'll be going forward in time. We're having a good time. We got ourselves a good town layout. Might as well have fun with it. Oh, I forgot to greet whoever is in Acre uh, D3. Whoops. We're having a real chill time, like, uh, <laughs> today, aren't we? A re a super chill time, you could say. Bell. How many seconds lost is that? About a minute. All right, we're not speedrunning. I lost more time planting flowers and trees in fun spots. Not too worried about it.
I also got sunburned pretty bad when I was in Hawaii. At least my legs. I forgot to apply sunscreen when I went kayaking. And my legs were just toast. <laughs> but they're doing better now. They're just a little itchy. I got aloe vera. That's been helping. So anyways, uh, yeah, Gizmola, when you go to Hawaii, I highly recommend sunscreen. Especially if you go in the water. Anyways, let me tell my uh, my shiny Pokemon story in in, uh, in Hawaii. So, well, first of all, I got the regional exclusives there. I got uh, I got a Comfy. If you don't know what a Comfy is? It's basically a Lei Pokemon, L-E-I, with uh, with a face, sort of. If you played Pokemon Snap, it's one of the cool Pokemon to find. So, anyways, I got myself a a handful of comfies. I think I got four. I also got a Corsola, which I already had, but I caught... I don't think I ever caught my own Corsola. I got it through a trade. So I got my own... my Finally, my own Corsola in Pokemon Go. Very cool. And the other regional exclusive to Hawaii is Oracorio. A variant. A hula dancing variant. So, there you go. If you play Pokemon Go, Gizmolo, that's what you need to find. That's your mission. But, anyway, so now on to the shiny story. So, I got those Pokemon, and I was looking for shinies. Look, I'm not going to leave this island until I find a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> well, obviously I didn't have a choice, but I really wanted to find a shiny. And so, we went to some botanical gardens in Hilo, and... Um, the service was really spotty, unfortunately. The service is actually pretty good for most of Hawaii. However, they don't do 5G over there. So you're, it's going to take a little longer to load up the internet, load up Pokemon Go, load up whatever that requires uh, service. So that's a factor. Because at the Botanical Gardens, at the Visitor Center before you go into them, the service is decent. It's like two or three bars. And, uh, and it's, it's cool. It's chill. But the moment you enter that botanical garden, which is, it is incredible. That is true. But the moment you enter it, within, like, a hundred feet, you're down to one bar. And you go 200 feet, and it still claims you have one bar, but you don't. So, at first I was like, this is a great Pokemon Ghost uh, spot. There are Pokestops everywhere, gyms everywhere. Uh, they're so close. They're all close to each other. Great spot. Um, unfortunately, though, the service is bad. So, upon entering the Botanical Garden, I was uh, clicking on random Pokemon, catching them, and it got more and more difficult to catch. As in, like, it loaded the Pokemon, but I tried using a berry, for example, and it just... And it didn't work. You just stare. The Pokemon was just staring at you. The berry wasn't actually being applied. And so it was very spotty. Whether or not the Pokemon could even be caught was, you know, going to be an issue. Well, anyways. Finally, I uh, I catch a handful of Pokemon slowly. And I, I find a Froakie. And this is a struggle to catch this thing. But uh, it claims... Like, when I, when I threw a Pokeball at it, it claims it I missed it and it fled. However, upon checking my inventory, it was, in fact, caught. So, that was alright, I guess. Nothing special about that Pokemon. But the very next Pokemon I find, after this Froakie, was an Axew. And it was not loading. I clicked it on the screen, and it was just not loading. So, I, I put my phone down for a moment, for something... And I look back up, and it's a shiny Axew with 0.5 bars, barely functioning. And it was so cool. It was uh, it was brown, but it evolves into uh, into different shiny palettes that are also very cool. But regardless, I couldn't believe it. I was I was just like, there's no way. I am playing with 0.5 bars right now, barely catching Pokemon. Saying the Pokemon are fleeing when I catch them, but they appear in my inventory as caught. And now I have a shiny Axew staring at me. 
And so I'm like freaking out. I tell my girlfriend, I need to uh, hold on. Whatever, whatever we need to do right now, I need to go away from this botanical garden. I need to go back to the visitor center to get service again because I'm I can't throw pokeballs at this thing. It simply won't let me. And so I start walking back, and I I, I golden raz ultra balled, you know, the whole thing. And this has it was a low CP, so like. It was a green circle. It was it was 100% catch. Like, it was guaranteed. Uh, I, all I had to do was have service. That's all I had to do. Oh, wait, I'm going to Aurora. Where is she at? There she is. And so uh, and so I throw the ball at it, and it, it's like the ball's just there. The, the Ultra Ball is just staring at me. Nothing is happening. Not saying it's caught. Not saying it's not caught. If I wanted to get a screenshot of the Shiny Axew, I, was, I couldn't do it anymore. There was no opportunity. And finally, after like three agonizing minutes, I'm not even kidding, three agonizing minutes, um, something finally happens, and it says the Axew fled. And at this point, I'm like, well, I just caught a Froakie, and it said it fled, but I caught in my inventory. Did I catch this shiny Axew or not? I should. Um, so... I can't now. I can. I can't even load my inventory. I can't do anything in Pokemon Go. It's so, it's frozen. And so I uh, I I try and try to load my game, and I just can't. It just won't load anymore because the service is so spotty. Finally, I go like closer to the entrance and I can load it again, and I didn't catch it. It must have been a network error. It must have been a network issue where the the Axew had already left, but the it, the network hadn't caught up, and uh, and so it claimed that like it claimed I could I could see it and throw a pokeball at it, but it actually was already gone before I clicked on it. That's my theory because it was a one hundred percent catch rate. It was very tragic. It actually bothered me for like four hours straight. I'm not even kidding. So I had one mission. I just needed any shiny. I needed a shiny. Otherwise, I was just going to be sad for the final day. I was one. We were one day left in Hawaii, and so I was clicking everything after the botanical gardens. You know, I enjoyed the botanical gardens, but I, it was unfortunately not uh, the greatest time because of this shiny Pokemon <laughs> uh, mishap. It was it was such a bummer. Uh, so, yay! I completed chores. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, I do have a strat, by the way. But anyways, for the rest of the day, I was shiny hunting. I clicked Pokemon, didn't catch him. Shiny or not, I fled. Didn't care. Um, I finally did... <laughs> I did manage to find a shiny. I was very thankful. That night, I was... Uh, I had incense going out, everything going. Uh, I found a shiny Spearow. Definitely not as cool as a shiny Axew. But it was still a full odds shiny, one in 450 or whatever. That I that shows it's from Kona, Hawaii, not from Hilo. But we had made we were over in Kona in the last day, so I did get my shiny, and then I got a second shiny the next day, a Ferris seed, which I don't really care about, but it was another shiny. Not a shiny Axew, but I do have quite the story. So rest in peace, shiny Axew gone but not forgotten one day we will meet again maybe in community day in june has not been confirmed but there's a good chance it will be shiny axes in in less in like a month yep i know it, was, it is quite the story tears were shed i didn't shed tears but i was bummed and there we go that's my shiny pogo story in in hilo hawaii beautiful gardens Sad shiny Axew. If only they had better service, I would have caught the thing. Probably. Or not been teased in the first place. <laughs> Complain to management. <laughs> yep, exactly. I want to, I want to, I would like to uh, file a, uh, a complaint. You need better service in these parts. I can't pogo properly. It cost me a shiny Axew. I'm not saying you should get 5G, but I am saying you should improve your uh, your 
internet services in the park. Or the gardens. <laughs> Your horribly beautiful botanical garden cost me a, <laughs> a sick Pokemon Go shiny. I would like a full refund, please, as well as compensation. <laughs> <laughs> all right anyways <laughs> that was my shiny pokemon story i have a shiny spearow i can now look at i did catch a regular axie later on as well so i saved that as a sort of a consolation prize Hello. yeah that shiny was worth was worth at least 399 on the pogo black market it i know i know that's what i'm saying so sad. All right, let's uh, let's continue on with the challenge. So, I am going to get all the tools without typing in codes. I think that'll be fun. And look, my town isn't corrupted. Yay! So, to accomplish that. I sold a shop model, which I got on Labor Day. That was not a coincidence. And next, we should have more tools for sale. Oh, there's a cool shirt. I'm wearing that shirt. However, I'm going to wear the blue puffy vest at some point. Spoiler alert. But I would like this shirt, please, and thank you. It'll be a great background. Nice tape deck nook. Oh, Trendy Top. Trendy Top. It really does look like the scale shirt, though. Kind of. Anyways, fun shirt. Let's see. Let's see which we like better. Straw background? Nah. Yeah. There we go. I like that much better. We'll keep that for now. Anyways, we do need a net at some point. The reason why I'm buying a net is because there is a very good chance that I'll be going forward... Or no, I'm sorry. There's a very good chance I'll be going backward 30 years. And then I will need to... I'll be running out of time in the Animal Crossing clock. So therefore, I'll need to go forward 30 more years. At which point, I will need to deal with weeds. And the most efficient way to do that is with Wisp. And you need a net catch all of the spirits with. I also want a fishing rod and an axe. Oh, you know what? I might not have sold or purchased enough items to even get fishing rods or axe at the moment, or axes at the moment. So I need to purchase random items in Nook's store in order to accrue more money for Nook to uh, sell different tools. But the day in which I'll be catching sea bass, by the way, if you want to follow along with the route that I'm that I'm going off of, which is what I believe to be the earliest possible day you can catch all of these fish after thorough-ish testing. If you want to follow along, you can find the route in my Discord channel under my AC documents. It was the latest thing I've posted. And so you'll note, you'll notice that the very first fish I'm going to go for is going to be one of the hardest, and that's a sea bass. And it will be available uh, September 10th. Anyways, there's our fishing rod. Very cool that we also got a painting, which um, I'm going to purchase. Not just for fun, but because it will actually serve a purpose towards Nook selling an axe in this store. Nice. Very cool. Alright, hopefully that's enough for Nook to sell the axe. I think it is. We'll see. I thought it would feel more authentic to get all the tools without typing in any Nook codes. I thought that was a fun idea. I could alternatively get a Golden Axe. Honestly, it might be faster. <laughs> it 
And once we start fishing, I'm going to turn off the town map layout. I don't think we'll need it anymore. So, all that to say, I am in a shiny hunting mood right now. We're missing shiny Axews. We need to get ourselves some shiny Arowanas to make up for it. Eventually, of course. Also, we're playing on a basically a 251 block memory card. So, saving and loading time will be slower than normal. Not the end of the world, of course, but... In case that felt like a slow loading time, as it was. Alright, well, Nook is not selling the axe yet. So I need to buy a few more things, maybe. Not too much. I don't want him to upgrade his shop. Alright, let's go with that. Might as well have fun. We can decorate our house a little bit. Why do I not want him to upgrade his shop? I I guess there's really no reason. Yeah, you're right. I guess he I guess he could. It's not gonna increase the number of tools he'll sell. I guess it's just because I don't want to run over to Nook, see it's closed, and then lose a minute. I guess really that's the only reason. Look at this beautiful art. And we don't want cockroaches in here, so we'll uh, zap them with the bug zapper. Or we could pretend it's a, a lantern, a, like a light source or something. Alright, there we go. There's our beautiful house. Anyways. Enough messing around. Let's get that axe and move on. Are you guys excited for some fishing to finally start? I am. Well, we got four days to get an axe, so hopefully I get it soon. It's <clears throat> not the end of the world if I don't get it in four days. I'll just type in a code. But I should get it. Statistically. Maybe. Hopefully. I'll buy a carpet. See what we got here. No. It should be available. Yeah, for sure. For sure it's available. I just didn't get the 50-50. I sure I'm going to a lot of trouble to not type in a note code for really no reason. But, whatever. Having a chill time. Yo, Abilene, welcome. Thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate it a lot. Hope you're doing well. If I don't get an axe tomorrow, I'll buy one more thing from Nooks. And that should be good.
Nice rain. Hmm, still no axe. Alright, I'll buy a carpet. Oh, not the charcoal tile. That's so lame. Lame. I want a cool carpet. I mean, I could always go back in time. No reason not to. I'm going to be doing it at some point anyways. I only have today and tomorrow to get the axe, because on the 10th, I'll be starting at midnight. Oh my goodness, Nook, you've got the stupidest carpets. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Too much, too expensive. Beautiful. Exactly what I already had. <laughs> Nook, I wanted something cool to go with my library. I don't know why I'm like this. I'm too I'm being too chill right now. We got fish to catch. Too casual at the moment. Animal Crossing is very chill. That is true. Alright, September 9th. That'll be the day. One week since I've started this town. I got weeds to pick. There's our axe on the final day Nook pulled through. Perfect. Alright, so we don't want... What do we not want? Wait, hold on. I need to get myself a fishing attire. I need to get myself a fishing vest. So, we are going to get ourselves a blue puffy vest. Oh, you know what? I should also get a red puffy vest as well. These are beta items that you cannot normally acquire under any standard gameplay. 
except through Nook Codes. This is the only way to collect these items um, without action replay. And they're pretty fun. They're beta items. You can wear them. They have a unique model. <laughs> All right, let's get the red puppy vest pulled up as well. My bad for not already having something pulled up. No. Alright. And for our other note code. Perfect. A red puppy vest. These will be our fishing attire for the challenge. Let's go ahead and put on our first shirt. We are going to wear the blue puffy vest. Yay! And we will have Trinity Top as our background. Let's clear out our inventory and get going with the challenge. <clears throat> so, before I officially start, I'm going to clear out some trees that are in that could be in the way, including this one. This one. We want to minimize the amount of trees blocking our view of the river. Whoops. Let's see anything else blocking our view. Not really. That should be good. At least for this side. Let's go check the other side. And over here... Ah, yes. pick up any money. Wow, actually quite a few trees. Pick some weeds. Ooh, we even got a good river for the uh, river start acre. Nice. Over here, I'm, ac I'm actually going to go ahead and chop down these trees just because they're uh, they, they, they're just in the way. And we can plant ourselves another flower to look at. Do we like the white tulip? I'm going to see what other flowers there are. White pansy. And yellow pan No, we already have a yellow pansy. Alright, well... White tulip or white pansy? I'm gonna go with white pansy. That sounds nice and aesthetically pleasing. Oh yeah, that's good. It's got a little blue in it. I like it. <clears throat> that should do it. Get some letters in our inventory. Another reason why I was going forward days. I now do not need an axe. Shovel. Or net. And I'll put the red puffy vest over here for now. Cool. 
Let's see, anything else? Oh yeah, let me go run around town, pick some weeds. Because if you have a low town rating, you'll actually have fish spawn at a lower rate than normal. So you want to have a somewhat decent... Or you don't even need to be decent. It needs to be an average town rating. Typically, you don't even need to worry about planting any trees. You mostly just need to worry about if there's too many weeds in town. But if you're chopping down all the trees in your town, that will be an issue for fish spawns. If I find I'm not spawning fish all the time, I'll go plant a few trees in the acres I chop some down. Oh, hey, we got Katrina. That's fun. Let's see what fortune we get. All right, Katrina. This is going to be the RNG we need for this challenge. Huh. All right. What does it mean? Uh-oh, I got the unpopular fortune. Well, it allow it Katrina's right. It will allow me to focus on my goals. All right, fair enough. Basically just uh I'm not going to be tripping, but <laughs> but can <laughs> does not want to talk to me. You know what's funny, though? That's actually a useful fortune so that villagers don't go into the acre you're in for fishing. Bill, I want to pick this week. Thank you. However, I'm not fishing today. I'll be fishing tomorrow. So I don't think the fortune will stick around by then. That is funny, though. All right. Fo Got to focus on my goals, which is catching fish. Fair enough, Katrina. Fair enough. Pick some weeds, catch some fish. See how this goes. The sea bass are not out yet. The sea bass will appear for the first time in this challenge tomorrow. So let's get our town ready for the sea bass, the arrival of the sea bass. Well, the hopeful arrival. It's not guaranteed. Welcome, greens, hiddles. How's it going? For now, clearing out weeds. Very briefly. Don't need to spend a whole lot of time doing this. But I don't want to have, have any issues with catching fish. If I can help it. We're almost done. The majority of the town is in the upper level. But not a whole lot left to check. I'm also curious to check the other acres for other ponds. I'm glad we have at least one pond. Because on rare occasions, you don't get ponds. Oh, there's a weed. But we got at least one, which is all we need. This is the blue puffy vest. This item is only possible to get with a nook code. And it's perfect for the fishing challenge. Because it's normally used in Dobutsu no Mori Plus during the fishing tourneys. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, we have three pawns. <laughs> We have plenty of pawns in this town. Good. No issues with pawns. That's what I like to see. Hey, Proto Spartan. We are doing well. We got ourselves an acceptable town layout for this challenge. Third time's the charm. We got myself a memory card that should hopefully not corrupt. Famous last words, fingers crossed. This waterfall is actually decent to fish in. Not the best, not the worst. So that'll be good for the large char. And <clears throat> that'll do it for weeds. Let's get started. Oh wait, there's a weed. Is it is it are we good for weeds? Are we done now? Yeah, for sure, right? I went over here. Yeah, yeah, I went over here. Were there any pawns over here? Nope. Okay, cool. Museum, police station, and nooks all have pawns. We are set. 
<clears throat> and now, we'll hide the town map layout. We will now go to the very first possible day Seabass can spawn out of season. Which will be the very first fish of this challenge. And we will be fishing the very first second it could spawn. Well, not the very first second. The very first minute. September 10th at midnight is the very first moment you could catch a sea bass out of season. Which is interesting, because the way the off-season fishing logic works is fish can spawn up to five days before they're supposed to normally spawn again. Did I go to... Yeah, Golden Spot's in the same spot. Oh, yeah, because that's not the next day. Anyways. Uh, right. So, five days beforehand, there is a one in six chance you might find a fish off-season. However, there's a little more compli- there's, there's one more complication beyond that. You see, a value is rolled between 0 and, and 5, and depending on the value is how many days in advance you could catch fish off-season. So if the value is 0, you're not going to catch any fish off-season. The first moment you'll be able to find the, the fish during the season will be the day it, it arrives. But if it's if you roll a five, then it's uh, up to five days before the fish will normally spawn. You could catch it that far out of season. But the odds of that happening are one over the number of days remaining, plus one. So, for example, five days uh, beforehand, it would be a one in six chance times their normal odds. And that is the very first possible day you can catch most fish off season is five days beforehand. However... Sea bass are interesting because they will spawn mid-month. They will spawn for the very first time on September 15th, which, if you count backwards, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Um, is that right? Yeah, yeah. That is five days before September 15th. But normally, wait, let me hold on. Let me rephrase it. September 15th is the very first possible day you can catch a sea bass. So that would be... Uh, so if you go backwards from there, the 14th would be one day beforehand. 13 is two days beforehand. 12th is three days beforehand. 11th... Wait, is this right? No, 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 no. Let me back up. Let me back up. One more time. I'm sorry. I messed it up. Uh, hey, Charlie, what's up? Thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate it. Sorry. The way terms work in Animal Crossing is uh, there are two terms per month. The first through the 15th is term one for any given month. And then the 16th through the end of the month is the second term for any month. So uh, sea bass will normally spawn for the first time on September 16th. They are gone for precisely one month from October, or I'm sorry, from August 16th to September 15th, you will not find any sea bass in the ocean uh, under normal conditions. However, you can, therefore, with the off-season logic, catch sea bass up to five days before September 16th. But you'll notice I'm playing on September 10th. It's actually six days before September 16th. And there's a weird bug in the programming uh, for fish, for off-season fish, where it actually is glitch. It's actually bugged for mid-month uh, fish. So, for example, there are only two seasonal fish where this applies, where where this is, uh, where there's, yeah, there's only two seasonal fish where this actually is, like, this bug is applied to. The sea bass and the jellyfish. The jellyfish will spawn in uh, August 16th, and the sea bass will spawn September 16th. However, you can catch them up to six days ahead of time, which is different for every other fish. 
just because of the bug in the programming. So, with that in mind, I discovered very recently, if this is a recently this is a recent discovery that sea bass can be caught on September 10th, six days before they're supposed to spawn. And now, to actually catch a sea bass, there is only a one in six chance that these sea bass, well no, there's only a one in five chance these sea bass even exist. If I did not roll the correct zero through five value, if I rolled zero through four, oh wait, no. Yeah, it is zero. It is a one in six. There is a only a one in six chance that this that sea bass have actually spawned and are possible to catch right now at this moment. If I didn't roll a five for my fish term index is what we're going to call it, then I will have to re-roll it by going back in time or going to a different term, exiting an acre and entering a new one will re-roll the value if you're on a different term. And then you'll you'll try again. But there's no way to know what the fish term index is without actually catching fish. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be catching ocean fish. And if I'm not finding a sea bass after a while, I know I probably didn't roll the one in six odds. And I'll save and quit, go to a different time, re-roll the odds, and then try again. So that's going to be the general strategy. Um, but there's one issue with catching the sea bass, is I can also catch barred knife jaw, which are seasonal as well. And if I catch a seasonal fish, I'll have to reset. Because I will have caught it in season, and you're only supposed to catch it out of season. So, if I catch a barred knife jaw, I reset. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to not catch barred knife jaws. And the way I'm going to do that is all fish have different bite times so a barred knife jaw will bite very quickly and it will uh it will you will go away from like after it after it uh, goes to the bait it will go away very quickly a sea bass has a little bit longer of a delay so if i just hold off catching the fish for a split second i can let barred knife jaws naturally go away and if i don't wait too long i can then reel in a sea bass so that's gonna be my strategy and after like five minutes of not catching sea bass, I'll reset, go to a different time, and try to reroll that one in six again. So, anyways, without further ado, let's catch this. Let's uh, let's catch this fish that's staring us down and see if it's a sea bass. Here we go, first fish. I'll let it bite. That was not a sea bass. I would have, uh, I would have probably caught it if it was. I let it intentionally get off the line by delaying when I caught it. Okay, that was probably a red snapper. The barred knife jaw are the fastest biters. Red snapper second, sea bass third. And I'm, I think I got the timing down pretty well. So, a sea bass would currently be like a 1 in 10. Oh, I caught it. Uh-oh. Okay, it was a red snapper. We're good! We got ourselves our very first fish. Red snapper are year-round fish, so it is perfectly okay to catch them. Um, I don't know if I would have caught it if it was a barred knife jaw, but it wasn't. Uh-oh. Okay, another red snapper. Okay, okay. I'm getting the timing down. I need to delay a little bit longer. Ever so slightly. Cool. Bar knife jaw. So, sea bass are about 1 in 10, so I'll catch like... I'll go through like 15 or so fish until I'm convinced there's no sea bass. That was a bar knife jaw, 100%. Because if you think about it, a sea bass is normally like... Roughly 66% right now. Or uh, under normal conditions. So, a 1 in 6 would be like a 10%. Roughly. So if I catch, like, 15 fish, I'll feel pretty confident that sea bass are not currently possible to catch. Also, sea bass have a wider bite radius than barred knife jaws. But red snappers and sea bass have the same radius. So I'll, I'll at least know if it's uh, not a barred knife jaw. 
Oh, that can happen as well. Yes, I need to prepare my inventory to not catch boots. And I can do that by filling my inventory up with, uh, with bell bags. I should just go ahead and do that now. However, I think it would be fun to catch at least one piece of every trash. So I will catch the boot. And we'll move on. I'm going to fill my inventory up with bell bags so when I catch fish, I can guarantee I will not catch trash. When I want to catch trash, though, I will make room for that. There's no reason to catch trash, but it would be uh, it would be fun to catch all the pieces of trash for whatever reason. I also do not need two red snappers, so we'll get rid of one. There we go. I'm pretty sure there's no sea bass. I'm going to say there's not. And we will re-roll the one and six. Where am I? I also need to get familiar with my town layout. Anyways. Hey there, Charlie. How have you been? Hope you're doing okay today. Thank you very much again for the sub. So, to re-roll the fish term value, we must go to a different time. So I will do that by going back one month first. And then to actually re-roll the value, you have to enter and exit an acre. Like so. The value has now been re-rolled. However, it's not going to matter, because I'm going to go back to September 10th at midnight and re-roll it again. But you have to go to a different term in order for the value to be re-rolled in the first place. So even if it's a different year and you go to the same term, it won't re-roll unless you go to a different uh, term entirely. And I also want to start right at midnight every time. So September 10th, 2029 this year. And now we are all set for sea bass fishing. Roughly a 1 in 10 chance to get a sea bass. Let's see what we can do. Yes, I did figure out what was going on with the Bard Knife Jaw. The Bard Knife Jaw is actually glitched for some reason and doesn't spawn five days prior, even if the fish term index value is at a, at a value of five. It's the only fish I believe that has that glitch. Uh, it took a while to figure that out, but I did find you can catch it three days prior for some reason. Yeah, don't know why. There's no rhyme or reason to it. No logic whatsoever to why that's a thing. It was just something that was inevitable to discover. Uh, so yeah, that time loss was inevitable. I had to test it thoroughly to figure out what was going on. Very weird. But... 
Yeah, unless someone can figure out otherwise. We will not be catching barred knife jaws on February 24th. Rather, February 26th, for some reason. Still not sure why. Unsure. Very weird. Another reason why I'm doing the sea bass now is so that I can uh, regain my fishing abilities. Because by intentionally delaying, that's not good for practicing fishing. Normally. Okay, this fish is... We're done with that fish. Probably no sea bass. Three more fish, and then we'll re-roll the term index value. Done a pretty good job of not catching our knife jaws so far, though. Alright, try again. Once we get this term index value, though, it will save. So, even if we save and quit, the value will be saved to the save file of the game itself. And, um, and if I need to resume on another day to actually catch the fish, it will not be an issue. But on the, the bright side for the Bard Knife Jaw discovery, that is what allowed me to discover you can catch jellyfish and sea bass six days before you're normally supposed to, as opposed to five. So, it did kind of save the challenge in a roundabout way. In one way, it kind of saved the challenge. At least it made it more authentic. Though I do wonder if there are other discoveries that have yet to be made. I kind of want to chop down that pine tree. Kind of in the way.
All right, here we go again. Hey, Poke. Thank you for the good luck. I appreciate it. Oh, I caught it. Red Snapper. Pretty good. Guard Knife Shot would have gotten away. All good here. Guard Knife Jaw. But I didn't catch it, so we're good. Oh, yeah, all right. Just a red snapper. I timed it all right. Not a sea bass, but it wasn't a bard knife jaw. I'm getting better at the timing, I think. it. Should be a red snapper. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So we're like four more fish and then we'll reroll the value. Red snapper. Red Snapper. Hey Ryan, I appreciate that a lot. Welcome from YouTube. Glad you're enjoying the content. And we got some more going here soon. Okay, another Red Snapper. Looking for a the rarest sea bass you could ever catch. The rarest sea bass of them all. Alright, no sea bass. Those are all Red Snappers or Bard Knife Jaws. We roll the one and six again. But yes, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. This one and six roll, by the way, I'll have to do ten times. Maybe nine, depending on... Um, depending on if I can group the jellyfish and the salmon together. By the way, I've decided I got one more tree I want to chop down. This one. Yep, I can tell the type of fish from uh, from how long it bites down. That is correct. At least in that case. There's various ways to tell what the fish is before you actually catch it. In this case, I'm trying to distinguish between a sea bass and a barred knife jaw. Shadow size is the same, but their range and bite time vary. And I don't want to catch a barred knife jaw because I because it's uh, currently in season and it's a seasonal fish. So that'd be breaking the rules and I would have to reset if I caught a barred knife jaw. But sea bass, that's what I'm going for. They're currently out of season by six days. Normally that would be impossible to catch fish six days. Um, like six days before they're supposed to arrive. But in the sea bass case, it is possible. It's extremely rare. The so one in six chance even be possible. And then the odds of it happening are... Um, the odds of... Even if it is possible, the odds of catching a sea bass are one-sixth the normal odds. Thankfully, the normal odds are pretty good. So we're looking at about a one in nine to one in ten chance of catching a sea bass if it's possible. To catch it at all. Which means I'll catch about 10-15 fish or go for 10-15 to 15 fish 
they aren't if none of them are sea basses, we'll re-roll the value. And that'll be the strat. At least for the sea bass. If I catch a barred knife jaw though, I have to reset. Alright, Gizmolo. I'll catch you later. Thank you very much. And I'm going back in time only to prevent weeds from spawning. After a while, though, I will go through the entire 30 year, uh, 30 years that I can play, and I'll have to go back to 2030, which will require finding Wisp. To, uh, well, it won't require it, but it would be ideal to find Wisp to get rid of all the weeds quickly instead of handpicking thousands of weeds at once. All right, time for another sea bass check. This will be attempt number four at looking for sea bass in the ocean. Not a sea bass, cool. Hey, a non-viewer, welcome. I'm glad you've been enjoying the YouTube videos. Welcome to the stream. And you've been sleeping to my content, as in it's a good sleeping soundtrack. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very chill. I can see that. Glad you're enjoying the content. Hopefully I get some more out here soon enough for YouTube. Uh, don't know about this fish. Bard knife jaw. That's three... I don't think that's a barred knife jaw. That was a red snapper. Pretty sure. Not a sea bass. Seabass would have gone for that. Enjoy the lurking. Not a sea bass. Not a sea bass. Definitely a barred knife jaw. Not a sea bass. I have a feeling we did not get sea bass this time around. One more. Nope. Alright. Next. hard to get a 1 in 6 chance when you have to check for the fish every couple minutes. Or when you can only really re-roll it every couple minutes, I should say. It's going to be so satisfying once we actually get the sea bass. The more time and effort you put into something, the greater the reward when you finally get it.
Oh, it's so nice that tree's gone. Look at that time save. By the way, this is the only fish where I'm gonna have to do this nonsense where I don't, where I intentionally don't catch fish. Well, I guess I should say where I go to catch fish, but intentionally did not catch it. This is thankfully the only situation where this is something I have to do. Otherwise, um, there after the sea bass, I will, I will route it in such a way that. I can. I'm guaranteed to not break the rules, for no matter what catch, no matter what fish I catch. This is the only situation where I have to time the fish bite, which is a, one reason why I'm going for it first. The other reason is so that I can get barred knife jaws out of season and be able to catch sea bass freely, because once you catch the fish off season, you can catch it in season as many times as you want. That's the way I've set up the rules. And I think it's I think it's reasonable. All right, here we go. Another sea bass search. Red snapper. Coelacanth, oh no, it's raining. I'll have to deal with Coelacanth. They're technically year-round, but I have a strad. I have something cool I'm going to do with them later. You'll see. Guard knife jaw. Another Coelacanth I have to scare off. Oh, I caught it. Must be a red snapper. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was red snapper timing. I pressed A a little too early, but I knew it probably was not a bird knife go. Coelacanth. Don't you just hate it when you find coelacanth when you're looking for a sea bass? Ugh. Happens to me all the time. I'm going to try to catch the fish from over here. Oh yeah, that works. Cool. Coelacanth. 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 <laughs> the most coelacanths I've ever gotten in, like, a very short time span. And I'm, I don't want them. Awesome. Ooh. Red snap. Dang. That had the... That was the, the most promising sea bass catch yet. But it was a red snapper. Thelacanth. The Thelacanth are 1 and 9 right now. And I'm finding them like they're 50-50. Alright, one more. Probably no sea bass.
All right, no sea bass. Not getting the one in six roll in the first five tries. Let's see if I can get it by the sixth try. I officially got everything set up for fishing by 45 minutes, and it's almost been double that time since we began. I haven't even caught the sea bass yet. I'm trying. Go to January. Let's do January, uh, like, uh, time resets. That sounds good to me. That was working out really well in my second attempt. Though it was just pure RNG, of course. But still... Gotta get you, you become a little superstitious when you're rolling RNG rolls frequently. So let's see, I'm averaging about seven minutes per check, which is about how much I estimate normally, anyways, for this kind of thing. So yeah, we're doing just fine. Need to get that RNG. This is year six. It's already been six years since we started this challenge. go attempt number six nope that was a barred knife jaw nope well this fish is already ready Knife jaw. Three. Four. Five. Time does fly, especially when you're fishing. Six. Where's, where's the fish? Or whatever. Oh, I caught it. Red snapper. Yeah, that fish is on a mission. Fine. I'll leave it be.
Or not. Try again. Nope. Nope. Two more. Nope. Nope. Alright, we're officially entering bad luck territory, at least for the sea bass. Hopefully I get the sea bass tonight. That would be nice. I would like to move on from the sea bass, but it is a boss. For a reason. Oops, wrong way. All right, we're almost to the current year. Just like that. Twenty twenty four. Will this be the year for the sea bass? We will see soon enough. All right, let the fun begin. Oh, I caught it. Red snapper. Oh, it's facing the wrong way. How dare it. Oh, wait. Our knife jaws might not go for that.
Oh, that was that was a bard knife job. Never mind. That's right, I did not catch it. We're good. Oh, red snapper. All right, two more fish. Dang. Getting bad luck with this one and six. At least for now. I have to roll the one and six ten times, though. Other times will be faster to check. This is one of the slowest. Um. Yeah, this is one of the slowest one and sixes, though. To, like, confirm if I got it or not. Another reason why we're getting this out of the way. First. The corner acre I got is also, like, really close to the house. So that is going to save some time throughout this uh, challenge. Right, 2023, already at the current year, just like that. Will 2023 be the year? Well, good thing I'm not going for rain, because I'm not rolling 40% either. I rolled it once. Also, might as well fill up my inventory. Uh oh, I caught it. No! <laughs> it was not a sea bass. Don't look. First reset. Dang.
Yeah, I had a feeling that one was going to be the... I finally messed up. Got the barred knife jaw. I was like, oh wait. I zoned out for a second. I didn't time the fish bites. Hello, Mr. Rossetti. Yep, yeah, we gotta deal with you. I'm getting bad luck. Honestly, though, it's probably faster to just reset from the beach, then run all the way up to town, save and quit, reload. It might actually be faster to do that. Maybe. Depends on the dialogue. Wait, let me, uh, let me re-do this. There. Twenty twenty two attempt nine Joy. Though attempt eight, I wouldn't consider a full attempt. If I do catch a barred knife jaw, I mean that is that's a strat. I could maybe I could like see if sea bass exist and if they do, and I've already caught a barred knife jaw, just like reset and then go for the sea bass. I don't know. I don't know if I like that strat. I'd rather try not to catch any barred knife jaws in the first place. I also feel like it's maybe faster if you're good to not catch fish until you caught a sea bass. Maybe. Just gotta get good. Oh, I didn't hit the fish in the face. Hey, Fricks. Thank you for the good luck. Because I need it. Come on, sea bass. Dang it. Not a sea bass. Nice. You shimmy right away from it, why don't you? Cool. Probably a barred knife jaw. Not a sea bass. Miffy with the prime sub. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Hope you're doing well today. Oh, I caught it. Red snapper. Dang. 
It definitely was not Bard Knife Job Vision. Anyways, thank you again. I appreciate that a lot. Alright, come on. Nope, Bard Knife Jaw. Almost caught it, too. Oh, do Snapper and Knife Jaw have the same vision? Yeah, they might. I thought they were ever so slightly different, but they could have the same vision. I thought Red Snapper and Seabass had the same vision. Oh? Oh. Sounds good, Fricks. Yeah, let me know. Alright, two more fish. Don't think we got the sea bass in this attempt as well. Uh, that's That would have been a sea bass. No, no, that's not a sea bass. Alright. Next. Dang, this is rough. But that's the challenge for you. I like that little... Little, uh... Wiggle behind the tree to get past the cliff. Okay, cool, Fricks. Thanks for looking into it. I did remember the sea bass had a a wider range than the red snapper but i was thinking for some reason distance the red snapper and uh sea bass were the same but that's the i guess now i think about it, that wouldn't make sense because it's never like 50 40 it's always either 50 50 or 40 30 i think anyways Range is the preferred way to test sea bass, but it's not always an option. And even then, that uh, that angle, I guess I should say, angle, angle, distance, and bite time. Those are the three attributes that I'm looking at. For the red snapper versus barred knife jaw, or the sea bass versus barred knife jaw. 6180 is is very cool. That's the best one. But only for only only for the rare fish. Well, it's really cool in the fact that not every fish has it. If every fish had 6180, then you couldn't tell them apart. As, uh, at least not with uh, distance and range. It really should be 360 vision, not 180, because it can see behind it. I don't know why we call it 180. I guess that's just the value that the game says it is. I think the game multiplies that value by 2, maybe? Like it's 180 per side. I think that's how, it's, how it works. Ah, plus or minus. So, effectively multiplies it by two. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah, not the distance plus... Yeah, distance plus minus, angle plus minus. Yeah, for both sides of the way the fish is facing. Yes. That's right. 
All right, here we go. Attempt number 10 at the one and six. Nope, not that fish. That's fun, Fricks. It's a fun April 1st challenge. I like it. <laughs> yeah, the ocean fish always like they do have unique behavior. It has to do with the shore, like swimming towards or away from the shore. That would have been noticed by a sea bass. You know, with these fish, I really do have an opportunity to go for range. Or for angle, I mean. It's a little tougher to test. Yeah, that's not a sea bass. So you can do angle and distance. A sea bass, I think, would see that. I think. It would definitely see that. Oh, wait, no, maybe not. It would for sure see that, and it would start going for it. That's not a sea bass. Glad I didn't catch it. Sea bass would have seen that. Alright, well, I can't test that for this fish easily, at least. Hmm. That had good potential. Yeah, the delay strat is pretty cool. But, uh... It's, uh... Not like... It's kind of hard to do. In this case, I can also see if, like, even if I miss it, I can see if the time was, like, extra long. And then I would know at least sea bass exist. But in runs, like, you know the fish exists. So. Unless you're, like, somehow insanely good at it. Not worth going for the delay strat. In my opinion. All right, one more fish. We did not... I don't think we got the one in six. Sea bass would see that. All right. Dang. This is, a, this is rough. Ten. 
10 days so far. Nice Arapaima. In season, though, so we can't catch it. I was like my cat. Pecan was just like my cat right there. Darts out from behind something right in front of me. Yeah, Seabass is only two frames more than a Red Snapper. Which is two frames more than a Bard Knife Jaw. So it's not the easiest delay strat. But when you're when you're fishing for a while, you'll get a pretty good idea of how long each fish is staying on the bait. And if it lasts an extra two frames, I feel like I can tell the difference. Maybe. I wish the sea bass stayed on the bait longer like a jellyfish. That would make this so much easier. Oops, gotta leave the acre. Yeah, I can. I have a pretty good idea if I'm going for a red snapper or barred knife jaw. I have caught like 10, or I've caught like a dozen red snappers in this run so far. Probably last frame. Or at least one before it. But I did catch one barred knife jaw, but that's because I zoned out for a second. And I reset. I don't think. Any of my 10 attempts so far have yielded a sea bass possibility. Yeah, the fact that jellyfish is like, they stay on the bait forever, it's so nice. It relieves a lot of the stress when you're trying to catch them in one minute. Yeah, and then giant catfish as well. But yeah, also, I'm not even hitting 40%. I've hit one 40% in 10 rolls so far. Now, I actually don't want rain because it slows down the check, but that is kind of interesting. A 4 in 10 chance I've only rolled once in 10 tries so far. All right, here we go. More sea bass. Come on. Even if I just got sea bass today, I'd be very happy. Just get this fish out of the way, please. Oh? Oh, I, I was feeling good about that one. Nah, red snapper. Doesn't mean it's there's no sea bass necessarily, but that one felt really promising. Not a sea bass. That was a distance check. Did not pass. Angle check. That was a good angle check. Not a sea bass. No, I can't do those. I have to do a time check for this one, maybe. Yeah. Red snapper. Hard knife jaw. Not a sea bass, probably. No, that's a red snapper. Or a barred knife jaw. Yeah. Three more fish. Uh, 
Nope. <laughs> July Gobi Strat. Seems unnecessary. <laughs> I like it. Our knife jaw. All right, one more. Nope. Moving along. Dang. Crazy RNG here. I'm excited to use this corner one day. Every now and then I look I like to look at the fish like stats, the attributes table, and see if anything stands out for a new possible strat idea. Just for that ever so slight improvement <clears throat> or backup. You never know. I really hope all this RNG is just like building up for, um, uh, for like getting good RNG for future fish. We'll see. Is anyone attempting my Pokemon challenge? Yes, there are people attempting it. Yes, there are. But there's still plenty of time left until the deadline for the bounty. So, in my opinion, it's not too late to start. But yes, there are people attempting it. Some have messaged me, and uh, they're having a, a hard time, but some people are making some good headway. There we go, there's finally some rain after... Wait, I'm not even in... Because it's July. Well, rest in peace here. I was like, wait, something's wrong. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see if anyone completes it. So that was not actually September rain. That was July rain, which the odds are slightly higher. But now, <laughs> I have to go back another year. I don't get weeds. Already in 2018. Just the sea bass. <laughs> odds are I'm going to have to uh, deal with weeds more than once at this rate. <laughs> Still no rain. That's 12 attempts with n with one rain. One day of September rain, which is a 40% chance. How am I supposed to roll a... A, uh... A 16.7% chance when I can't even roll a 40% chance? 
All right, anyways. It can still happen. Come on, sea bass, please. Nope. Not there. Not that one. Nope. Alright. Oh, I was gonna do an angle check, but can't do that now. Distance check? No, that's not a sea bass. Whatever it is, I'm not even going to press A. Oh, that's not a good angle. Not a good enough angle. No. Nope. Nope. I think I can do a angle check. No, not quite. Oh wait. Yes, I can. Ah. Oh. There we go. Nope. Oh my goodness, it drifted. Uh move forward. Nope. Our knife jaw. Ah, uh, that would have been a sea bass. That was a good distance and angle check. Nope. That one's too annoying. Would have been a sea bass if it was. Oh? Oh, red snapper. Last frame red snapper catch. Yeah, got my hopes up. One more fish, and then one more check for tonight. Alright. One more check is all I've got time for. Yeah, it's true. That's probably confusing to people who are just joining. They're just like, wow, this guy's really bad at fishing. <laughs> I thought he had the Goldenrod world record. <laughs> yeah, without any explanation, it definitely looks like I'm just really bad at fishing. Now nah, that's why I keep saying not a not a sea bass or like oh that's a red snapper. Cuz it's like okay, it looks like I am doing something intentionally. Mate. Thank <laughs> you. 
This time last run, I've already I already got the sea bass and the winter fish. However, I caught the sea bass uh, likely one day later than um, like I gave myself an extra day to catch it on accident, so the odds were much higher to catch it. They're well, they're twice as high to catch it two days. The second day in which it was possible to catch it. Twenty seventeen. Final day for today's stream, because I'll have run out of time, unfortunately. Still no rain. 14 days. One day of rain. Crazy. Crazy RNG. Sea bass check. Uh, would have been a sea bass. Would have been cool. Would have been a sea bass if it went for it. Sea bass would okay. Well, now nah, whatever. Not a sea bass. Nope. 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 Rough RNG rolls today, that's for sure. We'll get it, though. Two more fish. Probably would have already found the sea bass by now. If it existed. Alright, well, that's not it. Last fish.
Uh, I think a sea bass would have seen that. For sure. Yeah, that was a bar knife jaw. Alright, one, one more. One more. Nope. Alright. Well, bummer. I was really hoping to knock the sea bass out at least today. But that is... That is not happening. What a rough challenge. <laughs> or I don't know about rough, but tough. RNG is... Not being favorable at the moment. Where am I? I am lost. That's all right. We'll continue trying. It's all good. Just enjoying some fishing. We will find a sea bass one of these days. Which will also save time. Always coming up with new strats, I know. I know I am. Alright, let's implement this strat. So, first things first, we need to go back one year, because we've already saved the term index value, and you have to go to a different term in order to change it. So we go back, um, it does, I guess at this point we're doing a standard just going back like so. And then we'll do the standard save and quit. But next year, 2016, September 10th, 2016, we will not be leaving 2016 until we get that sea bass. I'm excited. So now we will go back to September 10th. And we will stay in September 10th until we get the sea bass. It'd be pretty cool if we just got it instantly. Alright, September 10th, 2016. Just like that. And now... Oh, hey, look, we got rain. Wow. Finally. And now we will go see if we have sea bass. And this time, if we don't, we will reset. Even if I catch a barred knife jaw on accident. Which I don't intend on doing. But you never know. I'll do my best. So we're off. It's sea bass searching time. All right. Okay, red snappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, same strat to find sea bass. But this time, we can reroll the fish term index. Oh, oh no. Oh. Okay, it's a red snapper. We're good. <laughs> All good, all good. No issues here. That was a barred knife jaw right there. We can catch red snappers all day. The barred knife jaw, that are the issues.
It is a bummer that it's raining. I'll be curious to see if the rain goes away when I reset. Which I was about to do anyways. Oh, look how fast this is. I kind of want the rain to go away, so I, I have a cool strat I can do here. I can go to August 31st. Oh, wait, no. Not August 31st. Uh, September 9th. My bad. September 9th. The fish term index will re-roll anyways. That doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, but the thing is, is that there was no... I don't think there were sea bass. Pretty sure we didn't get the one in six. Alright, now we deal with Rossetti. Instead of having to save and quit twice, run all the way back up to the house, save and quit, change time, change the acre, save and quit, change time, go back to September 10th. One simple reset and we're ready to go again. Whoops. Hey, Lumi. Welcome. Yeah, the rain is nice, but the coelacanth that will come with it will uh, be a time loss. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to get rid of rain. Oh yeah, the sea bass aren't out yet, even if I wanted them to be. There we go. That Rossetti dialogue was just so, so fast. Oh, it's raining again. <laughs> Well, we'll do the strat again if we need to. Also, upon testing, I found sea bass respawning about, on average, like once every six, once every seven fish. Which sounds about right. No! It's alright, I don't want the rain anyways. I'm too good at fishing today, apparently. Too good at it. Once we don't get the rain, though, then we'll be set. Animal Crossing tasking is hard because you have to, like, uh, deal with the time element, the, the RTC, the real-time clock. So I know people have had issues with it in the past, trying to make an Animal Crossing task. Tyler allegedly, allegedly has found a way to work around it. And he's been... he was thinking about doing a task. Uh, but no, no, I haven't considered doing one. Fish can be caught out of season up to five days before they're supposed to normally spawn. This is an, a mechanic in the game that was... Uh, that is implemented. Uh, there's not a glitch, it's not a bug. That is just the way the game was programmed. But there's some... There's some uh, logic to it that is kind of confusing. Basically, you have to roll a value between 0 and 6, or you don't do it. The game rolls a value between 0 and 6. And then... Oh my god. <laughs> Getting rain. Unless it's guaranteed to rain? No. Anyways, uh, if, you roll the, if you roll the value of... Uh, if you roll the 5, it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 5. If you roll a 5 then you can catch fish up to five days before they're supposed to normally spawn. And if you roll a four, for example, you can catch fish up to four days before they're normally so supposed to spawn. I'm going for the max day, like max time. So it will, for almost every fish, it's five days before they're supposed to normally spawn again in season. So right now I'm trying to get a sea bass, because they are technically seasonal. There is one month when there are no sea bass in the ocean. And right now, I am fishing in a time when there should not be any. But I can do the, uh, the seasonal thing. I can catch them up to five days before they're supposed to spawn again. Hey, what's up, Frix? Thanks for the good luck. Alright, caught it. Red snapper. The roll happens every single new fish term. So there, uh, there are 12 months in the year, right? There are two terms per month. Uh, day 1 through day 15, and then day 16 through day, or through the end of the month. Those are the two terms. 
And so um, for sea bass, they're one of the two fish that will that have that have terms in the middle of the month. So this one is unique. Uh, well, almost unique. The sea bass and the jellyfish are the two fish that. Um, well, actually, that's not true. The crawfish as well. However, that one, that one, it doesn't spawn for the first time in the middle of a month. It will leave in the middle of a month, but it will not spawn. There are other fish that actually leave in the middle of the month as well. Mostly September. Uh, salmon also have a unique property where they will spawn in one location for half the month and in a different location for the other half. But regardless, for this challenge, there are two fish that spawn for the first time in season, uh, in the middle of the month. Sea bass and jellyfish. Uh, but there's actually a bug in the game's programming where you can catch sea bass and jellyfish up to six days before they're normally supposed to spawn. You know, a, a one versus a zero thing in the programming code. So... September 10th is six days before they're normally supposed to spawn again. But that does, in fact, work. I've tested it uh, multiple times because I didn't believe it at first. And it is true. But all other fish are five days. Actually, that's not true. There's all supposed to be five days. But there is also another bug for Bard Knife Jaws specifically where you can't catch them for some reason four or five days before they're normally supposed to spawn. I don't know why. But uh, it is what it is. So you, but you can catch them up to three days before they're normally supposed to spawn. It's a, it is a mystery. It is an unknown glitch. We don't have an explanation for it. And it, it is something beyond just the... Yeah, I don't know what it is, Kyler. But it doesn't have anything to do with the the programming logic that we know, the coding that we know. It must have something to it must have something to do with something else. No, it's not the percentage being rounded down to zero, because I've caught string fish out of season up to five days, and that's a one in six hundred chance. So unless it's specifically related to the ocean which I'm thinking it is that could be an explanation. But no, string fish, 1 in 600. But yeah, it could be related specifically with the barred knife jaw. It makes me worried that it's uh, a problem. It's going to be a problem for other fish as well. Because I've only caught like 6 seasonal fish out of season that I've tested so far. At least on the max day you could catch them. Alright, one more fish. I don't think we got the sea bass. No, that's not the one fish. Oh, is that right, Kyler? Cool. Ah, the spawning logic is embedded in the actor specifically. I guess it makes sense. Ah. New strat. We reset. I have a fun thing I'm going to show off for Coelacanth for this challenge. I'm looking forward to it. I will catch it in February, though. I will, I will say that. Oh, yeah. Let's try to get rid of the rain again. There we go. Told you the weather changed. The coelacanth will be very fun to show off later. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> but for now, we still got the sea bass to deal with. I'm getting insanely bad luck as far as rolling this 1 in 6. Uh, 
But I'll keep doing my best. Oh, you're doing the perfect town code right now. Cool. I wonder if anything will be discovered that we didn't know about. Man, I yesterday I couldn't get rain. Today I can't get rid of it. Oh, wait. We got rid of it. All right, we're good. Dead saplings do count as trees for the perfect town. That I did know. That I was aware of. It is very important to know that information when you're going for Golden Axe without uh, doing any, like, without doing the glitch to get it quickly. Wait, this is not a sea bass. Yeah, it's fair, Kyler. I also find the obscure stuff fascinating as well. I'm also worried I've rolled the 1 and 6 before, but, like, I just... Okay, a sea bass would have gone for that. But I just, like, didn't find a sea bass, or I thought I didn't find a sea bass. I don't know. I think before I reset, I should just catch something, anything. We've all seen the barred knife jaw already. If I catch a barred knife jaw, so be it. Might as well, since I'm resetting anyways. Thanks to the new strat. Now, Seabass would have gone for it. Distance check. I am really looking forward to getting the sea bass out of the way. It is interesting to delay catching fish intentionally, but uh, it is. I don't know. I'm ready to fish in the river. Oh, is that right? Every time I say sea bass, it will add four minutes to the amount of time until I, f I actually find one. Is that how that works? Yeah, you're probably right. I should probably stop saying it. We do start to become superstitious after a while for these challenges. I did double check today. I... I Reconfirm, sea bass can be caught on the tin. I checked on an emulator, but uh, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, what else should we call it than acrolance, or do we not do we not say sea bass? Ocean bass. I also, yeah, I checked the odds that a sea bass would spawn. And it's about 1 in 6, 1 in 7 on average. Like, about half the time you'll find it within 6 or 7. By the time you've gone through about a dozen or so, about a 90% chance. Alright, I'm just going to catch this whatever it is. Now the weather should save, but the fish term index will not. 
As long as we keep resetting. We will still think the previous month was March. Which is a different term, and therefore it will change the term index. Oh, there's rain. I guess there's... I guess the weather doesn't save. So we're just going to have to deal with 40% rain no matter what. That's alright. We're going to have to deal with that previously anyways. Hello, Dawn. Oh, this is so nice. I can also do other things while I have to deal with the Rossetti dialogue. Might as well just get through all the primary Rossetti dialogue now. We're going to be seeing a lot of it from here on out. Probably. That's not a sea bass. It would have gone for it earlier. This strat's gonna work. I swear it will. I don't think that's a sea bass. Nope. Alright, guess we're not turning around. Dang. I was a little hopeful for that one. Alright. Three more fish. Well, apparently I'm getting better at catching red snappers. Versus barred knife jaws. Apparently. One more. I'll just catch whatever this is. You know what? I have a new, I have a new strat. Once I say one more, I'm going to catch fish until it's a barred knife jaw or a sea bass, because I'll be resetting anyways. <laughs> Might as well. You never know. Sea bass are only like twice as rare as a barred knife jaw at the moment. Maybe two and a half to three. I'm also going back to midnight, just because I feel like it. There's no reason to go back to midnight. 
other than starting at exactly midnight for the sake of it, for, for whatever reason. Alright, we have entered the, uh, the, uh, the Rossetti dialogue cycle, the main Rossetti dialogue cycle. So how's everyone's day been? You do anything fun? Anything interesting happen for anyone? Oh, I gotta say something. What do you want me to say, Rossetti? Some good, some good old uh, monkey ball. Is it super monkey ball? I've played a little bit of that game. It's pretty fun. There is some very intense technical skill involved with that game. That much I know. Nice. You made a macro today, Kyler. That's cool. What does it do? Brings you pain. Oh. That's great. Why? Oh, I caught it. Right. Hey, Equins. Thank you for the good luck. Look at it. I mean, they gotta click a link. Oh! Flower leaves, pansies. Ah! Why? But that doesn't that doesn't look painful to me. That's Animal Crossing related. That looks that looks fun to me. So many checks. Yeah, there were a lot of checks, but that means we're really understanding everything about the perfect town score algorithm. This is going to work one day, I swear. That's right, I was almost ready to reset anyways. I had already checked like seven or so fish, seven or eight fish. I like how I'm getting all this rain to make up for yesterday, but I'm not getting the one in six to make up for yesterday. Yesterday I got a 1% with no rain for 14 years. This time I'm getting a 1% for too much rain. In a, uh, in a very short amount of time. Yeah, they give Rossetti a little spotlight. <laughs> Well, they give the they give the scene a spotlight. Really draws your attention to what's happening. Add a glow to the to the scene. Makes it more dramatic. At this point, I should have a reset counter, since we can't keep track of how many resets there are, because I'm not changing years anymore. 
We really need a reset counter. Good sea bass angle. All right, well, not a sea bass. Probably. Should we, uh, oh, you know, instead of saying sea bass, we could say coelacanth. Would that be better? That wouldn't be confusing. Especially when it's raining. Something tells me there are no coelacanth right now. <laughs> How'd that sound? Did that sound good? Alright, I was about to reset anyways. Hopefully this strat works. I tested it multiple times on the uh, emulator today, and it worked. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it's just more bad RNG. Interesting I'm getting rain down. Yeah, I'm thinking that too, Kyler. Maybe for some reason it got saved. Because the weather should be changing. It's already changed once. I'll go one or two more times. If I get rain two more times in a row, then um, I will... Uh, I will change the fish term index the old-fashioned way. I did test it on emulator, but not GameCube. That is correct. Most things, when tested on the emulator, work for the GameCube, but not everything. It is true, but almost everything works. Like 99% of things. 99.9. .9. Hello, Sandbag. I don't believe you that it's your birthday. But hello. Now I believe you, Fricks. I believe it is actually your birthday. I I don't believe it's your CRQ. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Fricks. <laughs> Is it actually your birthday, CRQ? I don't know. 
something's too coincidental. The odds are unlikely. <laughs> There we go, I knew it. I knew, I knew it. I, I knew who was lying and who was telling the truth. Yes. Oh, hey, Trey. Is it actually your birthday? You know what? I believe you. Oh, what do we have here? What do we have here? Oh, it's a red snap. Oh, thanks, Sandbag. I appreciate that. Oh, I see what you I see what you did there. Today. I think. Well, no, that, that wouldn't make sense, and it's nobody's birthday. Unless you, uh, unless you say 19 years ago. Actually, isn't that what you're supposed to say? You know, however many, however old you are, that many years ago was my birthday. Is that how that works? Now, you know what? No, that's not how it works. I blame, I blame all of you chat for confusing me. That is not how that works. Dang sandbag. How'd you know? Time really does fly. I think I'm older than 33. Dang. I really need to get more beauty sleep. That's the way, if, if you believe that. So am I going to look 33 when I'm 46? Cool, sounds good. I'll take it then. Good one, sandbag. Trey, with the one year, congratulations on reaching one year. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. That deserves a reset. Thank you, Trey. All right, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back six minutes. If it's raining, I'm going to be suspicious. If it's not raining, I will know. I will not be suspicious. I am suspicious. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back zero minutes. If it's raining, I'm suspicious. If it's not raining, I'm no longer suspicious. I'll be so suspicious after this reset that I will go back. Something's going on.
Oh, I actually, actually do need to do this. I need to go through the dialogue. I miss the days when villagers called you idiots. Bag, what is what are these thoughts that are going through your mind right now? I like them. We have rerolled the term index value. Stop raining. <laughs> Please stop raining. Uh. Let's see if this works. I swear this strat works. I tested it. I do know there is something weird about the weather, though. Like, I'm pretty sure the weather gets saved even when you reset. But only sometimes... Very strange. if going back in time somehow saves the term index. I don't see why that would matter. I guess I didn't test that specifically. By the way, I figured out why my Animal Crossing was playing at 50% speed in Dolphin. Alright, you know what? I can test things on the emulator while I'm going through the Rossetti dialogue. This is such a confusing challenge. Oops. Hold on. I don't really want to display dolphin right now, I just want to test some things. There we go. Why do I just mute? Why do I just mute the audio? Oh, I guess I can do it in the uh, volume mixer. Alright, I'm going to test some things while I do this.
Hey, Abilene. Good afternoon to you, too. I am having a fine Wednesday. Is today Wednesday? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it is Wednesday. I was thinking it was Thursday for some reason. Yes, today is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. You best would have seen that. That's not a sea bass. Also not a sea bass. That's true. Tears of the Kingdom comes out tomorrow at midnight. Right? Comes out on the 12th. So yes, at midnight. Some people may get it early. That'll be exciting. This is not a sea bass. Also, I'm sure some streamers will start streaming tomorrow. For the Australia release time. Nice. Taking time off to play it. That's awesome. Yep, I'm picking it up myself. I'm not going to stream it. But, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it is a bummer. It's 70 bucks. Game should always just forever be $59.99. From the moment video games were created to the moment uh, the apocalypse occurs. $59.99. That's a good point, actually. Buy a copy and don't open it. Sell it in 30 years. Unfortunately, I don't think you're the only one with that grand scheme. Get a bunch of snakes? Oh, snacks. Snacks. I assume. Sounds fun. Sounds like a grand time. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with chat, but Jade is currently blocking the screen. So, uh, so... Alright, so Kyler, you have a sealed copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Nice, nice. Ah, limited release. Yep, good call. Very smart. Good investment. I'm not blocking Jade. He is not blocked at all. However, she is sitting on the thing that I made for her. I guess that's not really her fault. I didn't make it. I just put a blanket down. Anyways, that sounds like a very fun weekend, Abilene. Enjoy. You think Tears of the Kingdom will be the best Zelda game so far? Really? Wow. That's quite the statement. Now, when you say best, do you mean in terms of sales? Like, total value? Or do you mean, like, quality gameplay? Cool. 
cool. Hopefully it lives up to that hype. We'll find out soon. All right, I'm gonna catch whatever this is in reset. Well, once I get a Bard Knife Dog. I'm not sure if this is working. I'm gonna try to get rid of the rain. I'm gonna play Animal Crossing on the emulator and test this as well. Nothing like playing two Animal Crossings at once. But it's kind of easy when you are just mashing Resetting Dialogue. It's not raining. Got that working. Alright, I'm testing a thing on the emulator. Alright, so that changed the fish term index. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save, quit. Because this is going to matter for, not just for the sea bass, but for every other fish as well. I don't think this is a sea bass. That actually might have been a sea bass. Believe it or not. That actually might have been a sea bass. Nah. Well, not that fish.
Did I change acres when I went in March? Did I do that? I might have actually messed this up from the very beginning, maybe. I don't remember if I changed acres back in March. Alright, one more fish, we'll reset. I'll catch whatever this is. Alright, well... bass would have seen that. I'll catch fish until a barred knife jaw. I think that's I think that's a good strat. Wait a second. That didn't work. Hold on. Unless they just rerolled the values to exactly the same. Testing on the emulator. Oops. See what we got here. Still no barred knife though. Or sea bass. Something tells me there's no sea bass out right now. But something also tells me there's no barred knife jaws. It's fine. Something's going on. <laughs> Something weird is going on here. This worked earlier in testing. Sorry, let me look at chat. My bad. Oh, hello everyone, my bad. Oh, you're just talking about the Cube of the Kingdom? All right. No, carry on. I am testing things on the emulator.
I'm gonna have to type something, aren't I? Oh my goodness. Uh. Hardest one. I'm doing the exact same thing on the emulator that I'm doing uh, on the GameCube right now. Okay, so that worked on the emulator. Actually, that's expected. Now I reset the emulator. Emulation reset. Now I'll go fish on this. On this file. Now we just get to the Rossetti dialogue. See if that works. Uh, I have to type something in the Rossetti dialogue on the emulator right now. <laughs> what do I have to say? I heart Rossetti. See, best would have seen that. Okay, it worked. It worked. So I think my strat's fine. I'm just getting bad luck. Let me test it again. Right, see, best would have seen that. This strat works. I'm just getting bad luck again. I think that's all there is. Nothing fishy about this strat. Testing one more time.
The only thing fishy about it might be if it if it's something to do with rain, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. If it like saves the rain, the weather. That'd be interesting. Oh! Oh, I did it! <laughs> Let's go! I got the sea bass! <laughs> Let's go! It only took three hours. <laughs> yes! Oh, finally! Stupid sea bass. Yes, I caught it! <laughs> it is doable. It can be done. Oh, finally. Yes, I would love to keep this sea bass. Oh my goodness, it finally happened. We got ourselves a shiny sea bass. The rarest sea bass ever caught on September 10th at midnight. Shiny sea bass. Let's go. Oh my goodness, we can move on from this fish. Yes. All right, we actually saved this time. Oh, what a relief. Yes, we can move on. I've never been so happy to catch a sea bass in my life. Oh yeah, I've been playing on various Animal Crossing towns. I gotta remember which town I'm currently in. There's a few times to be happy about a sea bass. Goldenrod runs when you need one. Or any speed run that requires catching all the fish. And then challenge runs that require sea bass in the most ridiculous way to possibly catch them. Which is this way. A September 10th sea bass. You don't see that every day. Very cool. Only on September 10th. Alright, let's move along now. We The final boss is done. We will not be resetting for... Well, we'll be resetting, but... When we catch fish, uh, we will not be resetting because we've accidentally caught a fish we're not supposed to. From here on out, that is the only... Sea bass is the only time where that situation will occur. We can now catch any fish we find. No repercussions. Let's go. So, moving along here. Now we'll be going for winter fish. If you want to follow along with the route, you can find the list and the route in my Discord, under my AC documents. So, if you're following along, you will see we are now going to winter. We're going to get the winter fish. November 26th at midnight. And, of course, we'll have to go back a year. This is the earliest possible day, since there are 30 days in November. Uh, right? Yeah, 30 days in November. November 26th is five days before December when you catch Pond Smelt, Bitterling, and Stringfish. Now, unfortunately, the fish index term, I'll have to re-roll to six. I'll have to, it's going to re-roll. I wish it didn't, but it does. It will re-roll. So, the strat here is to first get fish to spawn. Let's scare away some other fish first. There we go. And... We are looking for tiny fish or uh, or giant fish. That would be crazy if we found a string fish before we a pond smelt, but it is possible. We are looking for tiny fish. Pond smelt are going to be the most common fish uh, if if they're five days if they're if they're out right now. Pond smelt will be the most common winter fish we'll be going for. So we are only going to catch tiny fish. Typically, I find pond smelt relatively quickly from past experience. Somewhat quickly. They're normally like... I don't even remember. They're normally like 30 to 40% right now. Maybe a little less. Yeah, maybe a little less. Maybe they're more like 20%. So... Divide that value by 6... And those are the odds we're working with. Probably like a 3 to 4% chance for a pond smelt, 1 to 2% chance for a bitterling, and a 1 in 600 chance for a stringfish, assuming they're out. So I'm pretty confident we did not find a pond smelt, which means we didn't, or I'm pretty confident there are no pond smelts, so we did not roll 
the one in six, which means reset in like two or three fish. One more. All right. So the new strat now is to reset, to reroll the fish term index. What this will do is reroll the fish term index since it did not save since the previous term, since we reset. And then um, I'll go back to midnight for fun. All we have to do now is deal with Rossetti, but this is faster than saving and quitting twice. And also means we don't have to deal with a wisp at the end of the year. Assuming the strat works. Which, I think it does. I've tested it on emulator multiple times. So now we just reroll the 1 and 6. I'm also already hungry for a snack. And this is a fast, faster way to roll, re-roll the 1 and 6. Oh my goodness. Fish, go away. What is happening? <laughs> There's a fish somewhere that's saved for some reason. This. This fish. That's the issue. Okay. We should be good now. Good to know. I'll remember that. Yeah, I'll explain that here after I finish my snack. That was a very rare situation. But we'll come up in this town... Uh, if I'm not careful. Alright, this is probably a goldfish, but I'll catch it anyways. I guess. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, so let me explain what happened. Why was I not getting fish to spawn in that acre? Well, the reason why is there can only be two fish in a town at once. If there are more than two, there will be no fish spawning anymore in new acres. But if you are, if the fish is in an adjacent acre, for example, the, uh, it will not despawn immediately. You have to run away a certain distance for fish to despawn. Now, if that happens to two fish simultaneously in two different acres, then the third acre will not have a fish because there's already two fish that have not despawned yet. In this situation, there are actually four acres that were all close enough to each other that can spawn fish that um, made, it so, made it possible so that there could be fish in two acres that wouldn't despawn because they're really close. 
and then two acres where fish wouldn't spawn because there's already two fish out. And uh, that occurred in that situation because the river uh, curves downwards, and so there are like four acres where you can see the river all really close to each other. Very rare. The solution to that, to fix that problem, is to not run into acre B4. Rather, run down to C3 and then run across like this. Like so. But even then, the fish spawned in the B4 acre in such a way that it was really close to the bottom corner. Which meant the fish would not even despawn even two acres away. At least in this corner acre. So that's kind of unique, kind of cool. You don't see that very often. In fact, I can't say I've ever seen that before. Or at least noticed it. Ah, so what's new since last time? The reset strat. Oh, I already answered that question. Are shiny fish in Animal Crossing new? No, it's a mod. But the off-season fish mechanics, that is not a mod. That is vanilla. I thought it'd be fun to uh, make a mod that would uh, make shiny fish for catching them off-season. However, it's kind of an illusion, because it's, it's not actually... There's no logic for if you catch it out of season to make it a shiny version of it. It was simpler to just simply change the palette regardless. Anyways, I worked with Kyler on that. Got it working. Very fun. Cool goldfish. I hope this strat works. I tested... I mean, I guess we'll know somewhat soon. Somewhat fast, though. I get a reset every two minutes. Try again. It is a one in six, after all. I've been getting into something, or I, 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 uh, I was recommended the video on Pokemon Chess, like most of us are aware by now, and I decided to try it today. It's actually pretty fun. I was getting into it during my lunch break at work. I was like, you know what, let's try this. Let's see if it's fun. And it is pretty fun. Um, I'm, you really gotta learn your typing for Pokemon, though. So, uh, I got, I got decent at at least beating randos online. And I had great fun with it. Has anyone else tried it? Or do you even know what I'm talking about? I think this is... Dang it. Is this supposed to be a capital B? Ugh. What do you want me to say? Okay, it's not capital. Got it. Me equals bad. In case... What do you want me to say? Me equal. I said that. I said me equals bad. I said that exact phrase. There. Stupid resetting. All right, well, that wasn't faster. No, it's not my equals bad. Oh, is that what I said? Did I make a typo? Uh oh, I spawned a fish up here. Anyways, Pokemon Chess, let's talk about it. Very fun. Basically the way it works is all your chess pieces are assigned a Pokemon type, or just a type. And if you use a super, if like one of your pieces is super effective against an opponent's piece, you get a, that piece gets to go again, or you can forego going again. And so you can like chain attacks. Very, uh, very cool idea. I love that idea. If it's not very effective, then both then you can still capture the piece, but your piece will also uh, be knocked out. If it's uh, if it's not effective at all, like resistant entirely, 
then it will be a guaranteed miss. And then, uh, and so you, it really, you like strategy comes into play of like trying to do combos, do chain attacks, and also prevent getting chain attacked yourself while also trying to juggle the game of chess. And you have to really know your tight matchups because it can get confusing very quickly if you're not completely comfortable with your tight matchings. So that's, that's Pokemon chess in case you're not aware. A recent game, a lot of YouTubers have recently made videos on it. I was, of course, recommended a video. And it was intriguing. I like playing chess. I like Pokemon. So I tried it out, and I got decent at it, I feel like. At least beating randos online. Um, the only thing I wasn't comfortable with is the fairy type. I haven't played a Pokemon game that has the fairy type in it. Like, I've never played it. Except, unless you consider Pokemon Go. But... I don't really battle in Pokemon Go, so that doesn't really count. I have no idea, or I had no idea, what moves, or like what typing Fairy has. Like super effective, not very effective, and what types are super effective and not very effective against Fairy. I still don't really know. I did learn today the hard way that Dragon does not hit Fairy. I, I did not know that. <laughs> Completely resistant. For some reason. Don't know why. But I also accidentally learned Steel is super effective against Fairy, I think. I, I might be mistaken about that. But yeah, Pokemon Chess. If you're curious about it, try it out. I had a lot of fun playing it. There's only one thing I don't like about it. And that your moves can just randomly miss. Like your attacks. They can just straight up miss. And they can also crit. I don't like either of those mechanics because it there's it just introduces RNG. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love myself a fair bit of RNG, but not in chess. If those two things didn't exist, I would play... I would really endorse Pokemon chess. But unfortunately, they do. I understand why, because, you know, it's, a, it's supposed to be in the spirit of a Pokemon battle. But still. So, like, for example, you could... Uh, also, there's no check in the game. So, like, you can, like, put your queen right up against the king. Or not right up against, but, like, you know, put the king in check. And there, there there's no repercussions other pieces can just move. And so that that can come into play. Like if the opponent feels like risking you missing your attack, you have to like physically capture the king. And you can therefore risk missing capturing the king, which could cost you the game. It's a little ridiculous. So even if you play perfectly, even if you're, like, the most insane Pokemon chess player of all time, you're gonna lose to RNG, like, 10% of the time. Dumb. Blame Little Z? I have no idea who that is. Anyways, if they get rid of that mechanic... I'd love it. Or they can make it an optional mechanic. If you want to play, at least make it optional. Like, if you play online, you know, make it an option if you're going to include that. The U Oh, the YouTuber who made it. Oh, that's who made it? I actually didn't know who made it. Because <laughs> couldn't win without it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Silliness. So I should have made the game. I should have made Pokemon Chess first. And not have that as a mechanic. I really just have myself to blame for not coming up with the idea first. Such an obvious idea. But Checkers already has chain attacks. It already, it's all chain attacks. That's how checkers works.
Unless it would give you, like, special powers to take two pieces, jump over two pieces at once if it's super effective against both or something like that. Or even just one. All 1,000 Pokemon have different movement patterns. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. I really hope this strat works. As soon as it works once, I'm going to feel very relieved. Anyways, so let's go over, let's practice together. What is Fairy super effective against? I think I got this memorized. I think it's Dragon, Fighting, uh, Dark? Am I right? Or does anyone know? Does anyone in this entire on this entire planet know the typing for Fairy? Okay, that was right. Sweet. Without Googling it, of course. Alright, what's it resistance? What's it resistant to? I want to say... Steel? Uh, bug? And... I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. What do we have here? Is this a quick goldfish or a pond smelt? Ah, oh, it's a quick goldfish. Got my hopes up. Like, if you use a fairy type attack against something, what is it not very effective against? So it's not very effective against steel and poison. Is that it? Oh, we got another tiny fish. All right, all right. Oh, it's another cool fish. I'll be catching plenty of these. I'll release it. Catch more later. Is it steel and poison or fire steel and poison? Wow, this is a lot of goldfish. If these are all truly goldfish. Oh! Oh, let's go! Let's go! Yo! We got ourselves a shiny bitterling! Wow! Let's go! I did it! The strat works! Yes! Okay, okay, that was a shock, considering I caught two goldfish. Okay, is this a pond smelt? It is. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Well, now I wish I saved those goldfish. Sorry, we'll catch more. Yes! Oh my goodness. RNG. Okay. Well, you know what that means now, everyone. That means we have one more fish we need to catch. And that's a 1 in 600. Yes, that's right. We need to catch stringfish. Joy. I'm not even going to catch a goldfish. I'll catch goldfish later. It is time to look for a 1 in 600. Buckle up, everyone. Grab some popcorn. I don't know, bathroom break, etc. 
Well, I don't know. It could happen at any moment. We got ourselves a 1 in 600 to look for. You know, I actually do kind of want to get a goldfish. Though I'm probably not going to find one now for a while. Yeah, okay, we're, we're not we're not catching tiny fish. We'll get a goldfish later. We're done catching tinies. They're probably pond smelts or bitterlings. That was crazy that I caught two goldfish before a bitterling or a pond smelt. Considering the, uh, the goldfish was actually more rare than the pond smelt by like a factor of three. And the and it was I think it's even slightly more rare than the bitterling as well. That was actually some very interesting RNG. I almost reset after the second goldfish. I was like, there's no way. There's no way that I caught two goldfish before a pond smelt or a bitterling if they if they're even possible to get right now. No way. But it happened. Alright, anyways. Back to fairy type matchups, yes. So, fairy, um, fairy is not very effective against steel, poison, and fire. Kind of random, but all right, good to know. Um, okay, so now what moves, or what is uh, what does it resist entirely? Like it. It can't, like, Dragon cannot hit Fairy. I learned that the hard way today. Is there anything else that doesn't hit Fairy? At all? Just Dragon? Okay, cool. Whoa. I got the Glitch Fish, where it sh a fish should spawn, but it doesn't. It happens like once every 100 fish, roughly. Oh, I guess what I meant to say is, um, my bad. Is there are there any types that fairy doesn't hit at all? Like fairy to fairy, for example, or fairy to ghost, etc. Or can fairy at least damage any type? Okay, cool. So now, now the opposite. So we know dragon doesn't hit fairy. Oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Hold that thought. We just found ourselves a 1 in 600 like it was nothing. I got it. <laughs> oh, I got it. Let's go. You've got to be kidding me. Look at that shiny string fish. It's so blue. Wow. Or purple. Depending on your eyes. I can't. I cannot believe that. I got a string fish five days before it's supposed to spawn at 12.07 a.m. Took seven minutes. Seven minutes after the very first moment it could exist. I got it. That I caught that string fish faster than most goldenrod runs catch string fish. <laughs> and it was a 1 in 600. <laughs> That's about as literal shiny as you can get in this game. Dang. That is a huge find. We're, we're cruising through this challenge now. Cruising. Hey, funny monkey. Good to see you. All right, well, next up is the loach. No, nah, oh, I didn't mark, I didn't mark the pond smelt, my bad. Dang. All right. Um, moving along. We are now going to February 24th. It can't be a leap year, though. Okay, we're good. February 24th. Let's go to 2013 anyways. I prefer... Yeah, wait, is this right? Is this what I want to do? The 25th. Yeah, whatever, let's just do that. Alright, 
Now, I did catch two goldfish before I caught the bitterling and pond smelt, but I didn't save the goldfish. I'm not going to mark them. All right. Moving along. Let's see if we rolled the one and six first try. We're looking for loaches. So, this one is going to be a little trickier. Because... Um, we, we have a lot of tiny fish we gotta filter through. So I think... Oh yeah, yeah well, I, you know, I should get that info pulled up, actually. You're right. I think the loach has pretty good vision. I mean, I can catch these things freely, but yeah, you're right. Let me get that info pulled up. I, uh, oh yeah, pond smelt and loach have. I'm gonna see if there's a difference between pond smelts and loach. Loaches. Loaches are 50-50 as far as uh, rod seek range and rod seek maxing. No, loaches and pond smells have the same logic. Or the same AI, I should say. Same AI. That's alright. Perfectly fine to catch pond smelts now. So, next up, I want to pull up the... Well, I should have the I should have the info pulled up for, like, the encounter percents. So I know when I should reset. Oh, that's a bitterling. I don't even want it. So loaches are 27.7%. Uh, in uh, under normal conditions, so divide that by six, we're looking at like a four to five percent. Currently. Pond smelts are 31%. And bitterlings are 15%. So we're looking at 45% versus 4%. Which means I should catch about 15 tiny fish. Until I conclude with pretty good odds that there are no locusts. Okay, anyways, sorry, hello everyone in chat. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was uh, checking things. Hey, Cupcake, welcome. Hey, hey, Chloe, welcome. And let's see, Kyler, you found something interesting. Let's see, you found... Oh, apparently you can have trash in a player's house acre. Museum Acre, Wishing Well Acre, Train Station Acre, or Lake Acres, and it shouldn't affect your town rating. Really? But I'm pretty sure it still gives you the dialogue 
that or like the wishing well dialogue that says your town rating has failed. Um, but it shouldn't affect your town rating, is what you're saying. Am I understanding that correctly? Do I have a favorite sport or activity? Oh, I play every week. Not really. Um, I try to go for walks in VR every, like, not every morning, but at least once a week. I don't really play sports. Why does it say I'm on out? I'm on the fourth hour. Uh, it's because yeah, this is day two of the challenge. So I I restart or I didn't restart. I resumed the timer from day one. All right. Don't think I got the one and six. An ultimate frisbee kind of guy. I don't know about that one. However, I can throw a frisbee. You are correct about that. I find it interesting, though. I can pick up just about any sport and be halfway decent at it relatively quickly. Like, I've played every sport. Not every sport. I've played every major sport that most people play. I picked them up pretty quickly. You give me a volleyball, I can play volleyball. You give me a basketball, I can I can shoot hoops. You give me a football, I can throw it. <laughs> I catch on to the rules pretty quickly. I'm somewhat athletic somehow, even though I barely work out. Soccer. That one's my worst sport. I that is I I'll admit, I'll admit I'm not that great at soccer. Moles rule. Kyler, would you make a voice activated mod where you instead of typing it? Oh my goodness. You just say it out loud. I'm supposed to save the game? Oh, why didn't anyone tell me? Dang. Well, lesson learned. Alright, we got ourselves a bitterling. We're gonna start counting fish. That's one. Tiny fish, that is. We're going to do 16 tiny fish per check, I think. Oh, that's what Mr. Rossetti's been trying to tell me this whole time. Oh, that's what he's... That's what he's going on about. I thought he just wanted me to compliment him. I thought he was just showing up to my house fishing for a compliment. Yeah, I just ignore it. I just thought he was trying to... Uh, reach me about my car's extended warranty. <laughs> it's another salesman that I was just completely ignoring. Or a scammer or whatever. <laughs> you make a mod for that too. That's really funny. Alright, this will be fish five. We just count to five. Three times. By the way, that's a fun fact. That's how you count to 15 with two hands. You can count up to 25 with two hands. If you, uh, you're smart. You could actually count to 
Wait, what is the most you can count to? 25? Now I'm sure there's I'm sure there's methods to count higher with your hands. Now I'm curious. Whoa. That was weird. I'm not counting that one. I guess that's true. You could get to any multiple of five if you're patient enough. The finger can represent any number, I guess. You just have to remember what number it represents. Okay, mystery solved. But, but here's the question. Every, um, oh, nice goldfish. Just in case I get a loach, I'll save it. I learned my lesson. Yeah, but here's the thing. Every finger has been predetermined with a number. What's the highest you can count? Start, like, starting from one. You can't skip numbers. No, it's not as high as you can keep track, because if if finger one, or it's a ten variable equation, where the the variables can change, or no, 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 they can't change, but rather, now I'm confused. I think you understand what I'm saying, though, right? Maybe. Okay. Let me rephrase it a different way. Every finger represents a number, but you can only put up the finger once it has been incremented to that value, starting with one. So you, one of your fingers has to be one. <laughs> All right, now you can put up one. Next, you count another finger, one. So you, ha you have to have a, a finger that represents two. One, two, um, And then, I guess it would be a binary thing, wouldn't it? That would be the most optimal one. So that's 1,024. Yeah, you're right. It is a binary. Oh, yeah, duh, it's a binary digit. I think that would be the... I think that's the highest you can go. But what if there's a clever way to go even higher? No, I don't think there is. 1,024. Oh, you did just say that, Acrolance. You said that for one hand. Yeah, okay, never mind. That was simpler than I was expecting. Yep. Alright, we got our we got our answer. Now you don't have to worry about it. No need to continue thinking. The answer is 1024. Fascinating. Alright, one more reset, and I'm gonna do a bathroom break. Unless we get the loach. Why am I going to take a bathroom break? Because I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> one one finger represents um, a zero or a one. Oh wait, no, hold on. Does that work? Wait, hold on, we might not be... If you... Yeah, okay, fine. If you're counting in binary, it works. No, no, every number has to be an integer. So, like, if you put up... You can't have zero. Wait, hold on. The anti-aliasing does not do good for pecan? There shouldn't be any anti-aliasing. Or, if there should be, 
it shouldn't be noticeable. Oh, the lack of it. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, the lack of it. Okay, you scared me for a second. You're saying the high, the crispiness doesn't do good. Yeah, yeah. The lack of anti-aliasing does not do good for pecan. Or pecan, whatever. Anyways, okay, so let me let me rephrase this. This question has not been solved. If you are counting numerically. Alright. So not counting in binary. You're counting numerically. Where a finger must represent an integer. And it why did I catch this? And in order to um in order to raise that finger, you must have counted up to that point. Alright? So, so, okay, so one, two, all right, and then once you get to three, wait, now I'm confused. I don't think I'm explaining this properly. You'd only count up to ten with what I'm with what I'm saying. Oops. Um, you can sum together multiple fingers to uh, uh, in order to reach that value. Okay, there we go. So one, two, right? Now to get three, you already have one and two. They sum together. But to get four you need something else. You either need another one, or you need the value four. So I think you'd do four. So one, two, four. To get five, you have one and four. Okay, so yeah, you do a power of two for each finger. Never mind, it's already been solved. Just had to be warded differently. Not bad. All right, we're good. Still 1,024. Just had to think about it from a different perspective. <laughs> Hey, I, th I thought it was a fun thought experiment. It it ultimately had a very simple solution. But at first I didn't realize how simple the solution was. And it took me several attempts to understand the answer is still 1024. You're literally making a, uh, your fingers transistors. I guess that's true. It's been a while since I've thought about transistors and uh, whatever else goes with electrical configurations. I really am not a fan of electricity uh, math. I do not like thinking in terms of transi or transistors. Of resistors and uh, amps. That is probably my least favorite thing to do math on. Even more than chemistry. And that's saying something. Yeah, electrical engineering is my least favorite type of engineering. Followed by chemical engineering. Chemistry is interesting. That's why it's not bottom tier for me. I just have uh, bad memories with uh, Chemistry 101. See, I'm happy to hear that, Kyler, because um, I didn't. I'm happy for you. Glad you had good memories with chemistry. 
Mine was an 8 a.m. course, first semester, freshman. Um, the teacher it was brand new teacher. Well, he's not brand new, but he only did masters. Like he only taught masters programs. So he was trying to teach us like masters level chemistry for chemistry 101. It was rough. I mean, I skipped all the lectures, too. I'm not getting up at 8 a.m. for chemistry. Even if I was awake, there's no way I'd retain any of that information. No way. I got, oh, I got over 100% in two classes in college. Chemistry was not one of them. One of them was traffic engineering. For some reason. The other one was geology. For some reason. I think it just depends on the course material. And probably the teacher. Two years of physics. Oh, no. Oh, you know what? I don't I, I don't want to think about this. I don't want to think about it. No, the memories are coming back. Uh, static bodies. No. Kinematics. Make it stop, please. Back to fishing. We're looking for a loach. That's all we need. Just need a loach. We need a one and six. Get these loaches to spawn. I took physics one and two, same material. Not a fan of either. All right, one more tiny fish. That'll be a reset. Take a break for a moment. I'll be right back. Right back after this short break. I'll probably return with Cheez-Its. Probably. We'll see. Yeah, that's fair, Kylo. That's fair. Alright. I'll be right back. There you go. You can look at Jade.
All right, I'm back. My girlfriend took the Cheez-Its. So I had to heat up pizza. <laughs> Anyways, pizza's fine. The only problem with pizza, though, now my hands are going to get greasy. I'm going to have to wash my hands at some point. Oh, they're already greasy. Dang it. Be right back. Paper towel. There we are. Ah, uh, yeah, same issue with you, but for ice cream? Fair. All right, Chloe, sounds good. Thanks for sticking around for a while. Catch you later. Thank you for the good luck. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Got the double glitched acre again. <laughs> You were actually going for it. Mm. 
I'm working on it, Kyler. <laughs> It does feel weird to scare off string fish, though. I've already scared off two string fish. Intentionally. Looking for a loach. I mean wrong. Oh, I forgot the period. <laughs> How could I forget that obvious thing? Hey, at least we're having fun with Rossetti. We get a Rossetti gets to make a, an appearance in this challenge. By the way, do you guys want me to dig up whatever's buried here? Does it bother you, <clears throat> or is it or is it chill? Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you like the mystery. You actively don't want to know what it is. <laughs> That's true, we're just showing off Mr. Rossetti because he's not in the other... Well, he's not in New Horizons, at least. He kind of is, sort of. But not really. Alright, I'm saving goldfish I catch from here on out. Correct, he's not physically present, unless you have the amiibo thing. Right. <laughs> oh, you know what? We have unfinished... We have unfinished business regarding, um... Uh, typing for fairies. Shall we resume that? As I'm making sure Jade is okay, she just made a, a cat noise. He seems to be alright. Jade. Jade. Ah. I see why now. The other cat has entered the room. And has now left. Anyways. Fairy typing. Right. So, fairy is super effective. Let's go over it. Fairy is super effective against dragon. Fighting. And steel. For some reason. Is that right? It's so unintuitive. Hmm. Wait, no, not steel. Dark. Dark. Yeah, yeah, it's weak to steel. Fairy is super effective against dark. Okay, so good versus evil. Good wins. Got it. Fairy versus dragon. That makes sense. Fairy is good against fighting. I guess that kind of makes sense, maybe? It is weak to steel. As in, for some reason, steel beats fairy. Maybe like Industrial Revolution beats fairy tales. Maybe that's the logic. Um, dragon doesn't hit fairy at all. Fairy is... Um... Oh, is that right? You don't think it was originally weak to steel in Gen 6? Huh. Interesting. Fairy is not very effective against poison. We can think of, like, Snow White, Poisoned Apple. Alright. Not good against, or isn't very effective against fire. How can I remember that? Why is it not very effective against fire? Oh, I see. Ah, interesting. So it was not originally weak to fire in Gen 6. There must have been a reason behind it. Why does fire burn fairies? Fire burns witches. I guess we can remember it that way. Oh, no, it doesn't. Anything. Fire burns anything. <laughs> um, never mind. That's not a good way to remember it. Is there a fairy tale that involves fire, tragically? I don't really want to think about it, but... Such a random weakness. 
Alright, what else? What is super effective against fairy? Steel. What else? Poison. Okay. So poison is back and forth. It's both super effective towards fairy and fairy is weak towards poison. Got it. At least that's how I think of it. What else is super effective against fairy? Bug? I'm going to remember Steel is super effective against Fairy because of the Industrial Revolution. The Iron Age. I'm going to remember it. Just Steel and Poison? Okay. Dang, Fairy's actually pretty OP. That makes sense why they made its Fairy not, uh, like, not very effective against Fire. And what is not very effective against Fairy? Fighting? What else? I have a feeling no one actually knows off the top of their head. I have a feeling no one in chat actually knows this information off the top of their head. Very nice. Alright, so they resist bug, dark, and fighting. Okay. So fairy is super effective against dark and fighting. And it also resists dark and fighting. Cool. Super effective against dragon and is immune to dragon. That's all real easy to remember. And for some reason they resist bug. That was the other way around. Resist bug. Huh. Why? I don't care about the other random nonsense. All I care about is this information for Pokemon Chess. <laughs> Trying to learn the type matchups for Fairy, because I have never played a Pokemon game with Fairy moves in it. But that's good to know. That they uh, often learn psychic moves. I guess that makes sense. I don't really know any fairy moves. I'm sure there are some. I'm sure there are plenty. I do know how to on passant. Yes, I do. I do know that rule. I also know castling, queen side, and king side. And I also know in Pokemon Chess you can move out of or you can uh, uh you can there's no such thing as check. Actually, I don't know if Onpassan is in Pokemon Chess. I assume it is. I don't see why it's not. Castling is. You can also castle out of check in Pokemon Chess. Well, there is no check, so I guess it makes sense. I kind of like chess better that way. No checks. It's up to you to realize your king is, you know, in danger. I actually prefer chess that way. It only checks really only matter, I would say, for not being able to castle out of check or put your king or yeah, where you don't like lose the game. 
Like, if you miss check, like being in check, castling out of check should be allowed, and castling through check should be allowed in chess. Very silly that it's not, in my opinion. <clears throat> I guess I could see castling through check, because, like, the opponent's piece could, like, logically capture your king mid movement. But, like, out of check? I don't see why not. Time to update chess rules. They're a little outdated. I think it's time to update them. Hey, Cardboardius. I am fishing for a loach. On February 24th. Well, at least that's what I'm currently fishing for. It will be a shiny loach once I find it. And I am excited to find it. By the way, this is the third attempt at this challenge. I've reset once because... I don't remember why. I reset a second time because my memory card got corrupted. But more importantly, I reset... I don't know about more importantly. That was the most important reason. I also reset... Uh, I was thinking about resetting anyways because I had caught a sea bass and a jellyfish one day uh, further along than, like, I caught it on the second possible day instead of the first due to a un, a bug I didn't I hadn't discovered yet, where you can actually catch sea bass and jellyfish six days before they appear in season, as opposed to five like every other fish. Well, aside from barred knife jaw, which is three days. For whatever reason. But once I catch the loach, I'll effectively be back to where I was last time. That's cool. Alright, two more tiny fish, then we're moving along here. We're going to reset try again. One. The fun thing is, though, is once we do find a loach, we'll be in business for one, two, three, four more fish. But we gotta get the loach first. Once we get the loach, then we can go to 4 a.m. when the cherry salmon will be out, the rainbow trout will be out, and the large char. And then we can go to the 26th for the barred knife jaw, which I'm not looking forward to. Well, they all sound challenging. But I at least need to get the, the roll first. I need to get that one in six. No, this is funny. My taskbar on my computer normally tells me, like, news about the weather. Temperatures rising, temperatures lowering. I think Windows 10 does that. I think we all know what we're talking... We all know about this, maybe. Anyways, this time it just says sunset coming. <laughs> so ominous. Normally, normally it's like, you know, thunderstorm warning. Rain at night. The sunset's coming. Danger. Careful. Be aware. There's a, there's going to be a sunset soon. You don't want to be around when the sunset happens. 
I haven't ever seen it say that. Sunset is imminent. Exactly. All right, let's do some more random hype matchup trivia. Give me a type matchup, and I'll try to tell you um, whether it's super effective, not very effective, neutral, or resistant entirely. Give me some obscure ones. Like, don't just say water and fire, you know. Or that you think are obscure. Water is not very effective against dragon. Dragon is neutral against water. Fire and psychic are both neutral towards each other. Get some more. What else we got? Those are easy. Ghost uh, is neutral against fighting. Fighting does, uh, or yeah, fighting does nothing against ghost. Dark is super effective against ghost. Ghost is not very effective against dark. Psychic and Bug are neutral towards you. Oh, no. Psychic is neutral towards Bug. Bug is super effective against Psychic. These are good ones. What else you got? Almost. What do you mean almost? Oh, you almost got me. I got you. Bug and ground. Bug is neutral against ground. Ground is not very effective against bug. Is that right? Bronze and gold are not types in Pokemon. Almost got me with that one. Gold is more valuable than bronze. <laughs> bronze breaks more easily than gold. Bronze is not an element, but rather a combination of elements. Gold is <laughs> a pure element. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Are there any other tricky ones? Fire and fairy. <laughs> fairy is neutral against fire. Oh, no, no. Fairy is not very effective against fire. Wait, actually, wait, I already forgot. Oh, no. Fairy is not very effective against fire. Fire is neutral against fairy. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I think that's good enough good enough practice for now.
Dragon is super effective against Dragon. Dragon is super effective against Dragon. <laughs> Good one. I mean, I'll mean sincere. That was actually a, that's a good one. Good one to know. <laughs> Whoa. That fish darted after the bait. Alright, one more tiny fish, then we reset again. There's a tiny fish. Dragons don't even trust dragons. Very true. Okay, how about this? What types are super effective against itself? Well, we got dragon. Uh... Is that it? No, there's gotta be one more. Ghost? Yeah, I think ghost. Is there anything else? Not ice, right? No, no, not ice. Ice is resistant to itself. Yeah, I think it's just dragon and ghost. Okay, yeah. Cool. What types are resistant to, to itself? Fire to fire. Water to water. Grass to grass. Electricity to electricity. Rock to rock. I think. Is it? Um, dark to dark. I don't have to say dark. I, don't, I can just say dark. Poison. I think that's right, yeah. What else? I mean wrong. Oh, I need the exclamation mark. Wrong. <laughs> rock to rock is normal. Good to know, actually. It's neutral. It's actually very good to know. I think I probably knew that. If I was, like, in the middle of a Pokemon battle. About to use Rock Slide against Corsola. Oh yeah, Steel to Steel. <clears throat> I think that's it. I think we got them all. They should have made normal super effective against fairy. Could have actually made normal super effective against something. I feel like that's actually somewhat logical as well. Maybe. Missed opportunity. They can do it in Gen 10. Does it de defeat the purpose of normal? Because normal is weak to fighting. And it can't even hit ghost. It might as well have something it's super effective against. To balance that out, you know? That's true. Ghosts and normal are immune to each other. That is, that is a good point. Still, though. That, I feel like that cancels out. It should have one weakness and one thing it's super effective against. And then the the uh, immunity, uh, you know, that cancels, that cancels each other out.
I'm sure someone somewhere in the Pokemon industry calculated this or thought about this. How many resets have I done for this loach so far? I feel like I'm getting bad luck here as well. That's true. Rossetti is not happy with me at the moment. Shiny Rossetti odds. <laughs> we should make that a mod. Full odds, shiny Rossetti. He can be shiny on Groundhog's Day. But during his normal working hours, he's, uh, you know, 1 in 8,192. Be shiny. And shiny Dawn. Oh my goodness. Dawn is a once per player character uh, event. Imagine going for shiny Dawn percent. I think this is a bitterling. We'll see, though. Yeah. Thank you. 
Oh. I'm so looking forward to the March strat. I have a really good March strat and a pretty good April strat as well. It's going to be super fast to test March and April. Well, it'll be super fast to test March. You'll see. One day, maybe. Two more tiny fish. And then we try again. One. Yeah, we've we've seen Dawn already. Dawn is come and gone. Dawn is gone. Once you've seen Dawn once, you never see him again. Not with that player, at least. Yeah, they should have made it so, like, at least... Well, let's see. Is there a... You might actually be able to see him again. I'm trying to remember. No, you can't. I was going to say, maybe after 255 resets, Resetti's dialogue returns to its first one, but I don't, I don't believe that's true. I don't know why I thought that for a moment. That's a bitterling. You can see him more than once if you start a new character. But only once per character. New Leaf has so many cool mechanics. Reset center. Well, not mechanics, but like, uh... I don't know. Things in the game. Oops. Thank you. 
Two more tiny fish, then we'll reset yet again. That is the opposite of a tiny fish. Try to get snow. That sounds fun. We can do that by doing this. We can get a good view of the blue puffy vest. <laughs> yes, boss. Oh my goodness. Ah, I forgot the exclamation mark. Yes, boss. <laughs> Didn't get snow. Dang. I don't know if I'm just, like, getting the worst luck ever, or if I'm messing something up. I don't know. I want to say I'm just getting the worst luck ever. But I'm not so sure. If I find a loach, I'm going to feel a whole lot better. 
Because then I'll know the strat works. I was just getting really bad luck. I don't know how much longer I'm going to go without catching a loach, though. Until I give up and go back a year. Three more tiny fish, and then I'll reset. That's like string fish number seven, I think. A lot of string fish. Or number eight, if you include the one I caught in November. If I can get through this dialogue before the uh, minute has passed, I might be able to go see KK Slider. Well, I will. I have to get up to Acre A3 before the first minute. Oh yeah, I'll get there, I think. Aha! Hello, KK Slider. We'll say hi. Later. Bitterling. Fine with me. Or goldfish.
Alright, three more tiny fish. Oh, wait, actually, I want to try to get snow again. Goldfish. It's been a while since we've seen a goldfish. Oops. 
Hey, Arcade Zone. Thank you. I am getting tired. But, I'm not gonna give up. Another goldfish. Last time I caught two goldfish in one session, I got a pond smelt. Uh, when I, you know, in November. So. Good sign. And you've passed out and, and awoken from your deep slumber in the last three hours and seven minutes. Impressive. This is a pretty sleepy challenge. Very chill. That is wild. Almost as wild as the fact I haven't found a loach yet. Oh my goodness! I found it! <laughs> that was just insanely bad luck! Let's go! I found it! <laughs> the double goldfish! The prophecy was foretold. <laughs> Let's go! I found the loach! It really was just insanely bad luck. Let's go! And I got my goldfish. I saved it. Look at that golden loach. Look at that golden loach. That's a good looking golden loach right there. Yes! It only took two hours. Roughly. Is that right, CRQ? That's awesome. Perfect timing. Okay, so the strat works. It was just, I was just very unlucky. Alright, sweet. We got ourselves the loach. Let's get ourselves the cherry salmon, rainbow trout, and large char, shall we? It's very cool to catch these march fish in the snow while there's snow on the ground. 404 error not found. Alright, we're going to 4 a.m. The fish term index value will not change now. And we are going to catch ourselves a cherry salmon, rainbow trout, and large char. I'm gonna start with the large char. Get out of the way. Yo, Dabutsu Engage. Nice name. Welcome. Now you've watched me on Twitch as well as YouTube. Very cool. Alright, so large char is a waterfall fish, as we're all aware. Bell is currently sleeping, that's good. I guess. Where is the best place to fish for this waterfall fish? I think down here. So we have saved, which means that even if I uh, even if I, like, you know, save and quit, or reset, doesn't really matter, the fish term index will remain the same. So we are looking for large fish at the waterfall. Large fish at the waterfall. Large char are normally 10%. It's actually pretty good odds. Now they're about... 1.3%. Not so good odds. But at least it's not like 1 in 600. That's pretty cool, Dabutsu. Engage. Well, glad you found me.
Well, you know what, CRQ? You have more opportunities to be a prophet. For example, you could say, like, in the next 30 seconds, you will find a large char. Just an example. I also be rolling that one and six multiple times over. Oh, you know what? I just have a really cool strat. This could be a good opportunity to use the net strat. Where if a fish is too far away to scare it all off by running. I can use a net. Alright, this is not a large char, but I'm going to catch it anyways. We got ourselves a carp. You can go right there. Carps are year-round. So... Um, they're not shiny. So see this fish, how I can't scare it away? I got this strat. Boom, scared. The net strat, everyone. What, you're not a prophet, CRQ? I don't believe it. Net strat, scared. This is actually a really good waterfall. Especially with the net strat. Oh, I suppose I could catch small fish and medium fish while I'm doing this. I guess I could. There's not really, really any reason not to, I suppose. Except for the net strat. That's the only reason. I might as well. You know what? I might as well. Net strat's good, but I still have several other fish to catch. Like, for example, a large bass. Oh, I don't know if this is a large bass. No. Yeah, it kind of makes sense to catch fish with the net. Like, you could. Oh my goodness. As soon as I... <laughs> as soon as I re-equip the fishing rod, the fish spawns in such a way I can't immediately scare it off. Classic. Classic. Alright, let me pull up the odds for all these fish. Large char is actually 11.1% under normal circumstances. So it's actually 2%. Oh! This it could be the 2% large char. Alright, let's see if I can catch it. I got it. Oh, I got teeth. The Barbel Steed. That was, in, that was a perfect large char positioning. Alright, well, whatever. Mark it off the list. Anyways, large char is normally 11% chance. So, it's closer to, like, 1.8 Eight, 1.9% at the moment. We're also going for the cherry salmon, which is normally 12.5%. So now it's closer to 2%. Same with the rainbow trout. So these percentages actually aren't terrible. Compared to, you know, 1 in 600. Alright. 
Alright, we got ourselves the dace. Getting a lot of these common year-round fish out of the way. And I'm going to be donating all these fish to the museum. So, I will catch five more fish, and then I will go donate them. Contenders for other fish that I may catch along the way include koi, bass, all the small fish. We're talking crucian carp, small bass, freshwater goby. Uh, I guess that's it, actually. Oh wait, I also need to mark off the goldfish. I actually did catch that and saved it. Yes. Come on, fish. Alright, sure. We also need large bass and koi, so might as well go for them. Now's a good time to go for koi. Large char, strong large, large char possibility here, everyone. Don't want to mess this up. Got it. Let's go! Shiny large char! <laughs> Look at that fish right there. That is one charred fish. <laughs> nice. Sweet. It's working. That was a cool one. I'm so excited to donate these all to the museum and see what they look like swimming around. It's going to be so cool. All right. Sweet. So now... Let's see. What do we have left? One, one two, three... Yeah, alright. I'm just going to catch large fish. We'll go for the koi. Need to get it out of the way. I think I should get it now. The only other time I'm going to be catching large fish will be for the catfish. And there's a decent chance I'll catch the catfish before I catch a koi when the time comes. So We're going to go for the koi. Uh, we're going to go for small fish, but I'm going to intentionally... Only try to get... Well, only try to get the cherry salmon. I'm going to try to avoid other small fish if I can help it. So, we have officially caught a large char while there is snow on the ground. How cool is that? Pretty cool, in my opinion. Oh? Cherry salmon? No. I think it's a freshwater goby. I don't even want it. We'll get, we'll get plenty of those later.
The cherry salmon is super picky. So when I see a small fish and the fish just goes after the bait a mile away, I know we're good. Wait, this one actually has a possibility. Oh, no. Oh, I caught it. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm going to release small fish that are not the cherry salmon. I will catch many more of them later. Let me see what the distance is for cherry salmon. Oh, they actually have a range. They have a, a seek range of 40, which is standard. They have a really small range. So I shouldn't be so quick to decline fish that come a mile from a mile away. Freshwater goby, huh? Nah, I'll get plenty of those later. Large bass? Large bass. All right, we're also looking for a rainbow trout. Also roughly 2%. Yo, let's go! We got our rainbow trout. Yes. Look at that. One shiny, literal rainbow rainbow trout. Nice. All right, we just need a cherry salmon now. I can scare off medium fish. I'm also going to still go for the koi, which I somehow have yet to have found. Oops, that, that was a small fish, my bad. It's fine, it's whatever. What's my YouTube upload schedule? <laughs> good, good question. As if, I, as if I'm a full-time YouTuber with a schedule. Oh, yeah, right, okay. I do not have one. Whenever the video's ready. That's the schedule. Yeah, what's your YouTube schedule? Upload schedule? No. Nah. Whenever the video's ready. That's about all I can tell you. Right, come on, Koi. And cherry salmon. Koi is actually more rare than the cherry salmon right now. Which is kind of crazy to, to think about. Maybe. No. It was a freshwater goby vision. Hey, banana. Found my Twitch channel through my Billion Bells video. Loved it. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that video. There is a lot of detailed information about this game. That I can only share so much of it at a time. Glad you enjoyed it. Now we're fishing in a detailed manner. Ah, we might. This is either a freshwater goby or a cherry salmon, I think. Oh, I think we got it. I think. No, it was a freshwater goby. Dang. It was close. It was acting like it. At first. When should we expect the next video to come out? The oh, when should we expect the next Animal Crossing game to come out? I don't know. I don't think there's any news about Nintendo making working on another Animal Crossing game. If I had to guess, it's probably when Nintendo decides to make a new console, whenever that is. Four years is a little optimistic, in my opinion. Probably more like Seth.
Four years would be pretty cool, though. I'd be down. For a world where that was true. Alright, we're gonna do further away range strats here. Oh! We have a decent chance for a cherry salmon. No. Freshwater goby. Okay. Alright, cherry salmon's roughly 2% at the moment. We'll get it. This koi RNG, though, is insane. I've caught over a dozen large fish. Should have gotten at least one koi by now. Probably, yeah. 15 to 20, maybe. I'm not even going for a fish that's especially rare at the moment. Though, I still need the cherry salmon, so it's whatever, but, you know. Still. Where's this koi? Alright, I don't know about this one quite yet. No, I don't even want it. I agree, Cart. The original Animal Crossing is the best of them all. So peaceful. Chill. Alright, either a freshwater goby, cherry salmon. Ah. Freshwater goby. Mm, large bass? No. Animal Crossing games ranked. Number one, GameCube. Two, New Horizons. Three, City Folk. No, I don't want this. Uh, four, New Leaf. Five, Wild World. Six, uh, Pocket Camp. There you go. That's my ranking. I do have a bias towards console, or uh, towards uh, big screen Animal Crossing games. Forewarning. An Animal Crossing fact I may not know. Sure. Try me. If it's related to uh, any other Animal Crossing game besides this one, there's a decent chance I won't know it. But if it's a fact related to GameCube, I would be shocked if I didn't know it. Anyways, fire away. Well, I don't know about shock. Like, if you said something like, what is the... What is the astrological sign for Biff? Yeah, that one I might not know off the top of my head. Or if you ask what's the catchphrase for a villager. I guess if it's really like random, very specific detailed questions. Yeah, you could actually... Actually, there's probably a lot of trivia. I'd, not trivia, but just random information I don't have memorized. But I, I do know a, bit, a fair bit of information off the top of my head for this game. And if I don't know it, I know where to find it. KK's eyes are asymmetrical. Hmm. Guess I never really thought about it. But yeah, now that I'm the mental image of K.K. Slider's eyes. I, I guess you're right. Is that right? Is it because Totaka's eyes are also like that? Really? That I did not know. Cool.
Whoa, got the glitch. Fish randomly doesn't spawn. Ah, they're more pronounced in the future games. That makes more sense. I think this is a large bass. I don't know if I want it. Yeah. That is a fun fact. I haven't seen a string fish in a while. Now that I think about it. Alright, we have a chance here. No, it's a freshwater goby. Dang. Let's see if we got ourselves a koi. It'd be nice to get that out of the way, too. Nope. Not yet. For some reason, my left leg hurts now. I'm trying to, like, position it differently. It's like getting cramped. It's been in the same spot for too long. Streamer issues. <laughs> I think it's a large bass, we'll just ignore it. Come on, Koi. I know you're a one percent, but still. I'm probably gonna find like a bunch of these when I'm going for the catfish. I just know it. Oh, okay, thank you, CRQ. I appreciate that. New prophecy. Next large fish is a koi. Got it. Dang. It's a good shot. Good try. 
How many salt water fish are there? Uh, six? Unless you include the salmon. Or no, five. Oh, I think we got it. Sorry, I was focusing on this fish. I think we got the cherry salmon. Oh, wait, maybe not. Dang, we'll see. Dang it. Got my hopes up. That was probably the cherry salmon I just scared off right there. Probably a koi I just scared off right there. There we go. There's our koi. You were close, CRQ. Koi. All right, just the cherry salmon remains. Just small fish now. Two percent. Really, not that bad of odds. Surprise! It's taking this long to find. Then again, though, I haven't even seen a string fish since I started uh, 4 a.m. fishing. Yeah, that's right, CRQ. You're so close to being an accurate prophet. Hey, Fricks, welcome back. Yeah, I got the loach. And I got the large char, and I've gotten the uh, rainbow trout. Now I'm working on the cherry salmon. Uh, this is not a cherry salmon, but I guess I'm accidentally catching it. And then some other random fish. Carp, barbel seed, koi. Not important. Well, koi is important. I feel like this is the best time to find a koi. So might as well just get it out of the way. Anyways, just need the cherry salmon. With snow on the ground. No big deal. There it is. Let's go! Yes! Cherry salmon. Shiny cherry salmon. Looks like a koi, kind of. Nice! There it is. Yes. There it is. It only took 30 minutes. Alright, we've got everything we need right now. I am going to go donate all this stuff. It is time for the first donation session. Oh, blathers. One. Hello, blathers. Good evening. It is time to donate our first batch of fish. Red Snapper. Cool. The challenge is coming along. Sea bass. And look, you can see their models there as I donate them to Blathers. They're also shiny. Welcome back, Kyler. I caught the March fish in February. 
Yes, I got the large char, rainbow, trout, and cherry salmon. As well as the koi. And, uh, and the loach. Another random fish. Yes, it is coming along. You missed a lot of shinies, but you can look at them as I donate them to Blathers. Now that's no run-of-the-mill common fish you're holding right there, Blathers. That is a shiny pond smelt. You think that's a common fish? There we go. That is an extremely rare fish. I caught it within seven minutes of it existing on November 26th. You're cooking chili? That sounds delicious. Even though I just had pizza, I'm quite hungry. Oh, here's a goldfish. Yep. Caught and saved a goldfish. Once again, I caught two goldfish before I caught the loach in this session. Kind of crazy odds, again. And we got ourselves a golden loach. Now this is you are unrefined blathers. You are Tyler's right. You don't recognize the value of some of these fish I'm handing to you. You don't know how much effort, how much trouble I went to catch these things. Alright, here we go. Common fish. Yeah, alright. You're you're right about this one. This one is a common, run-of-the-mill fish. You're right, Kyler, we should have added dialogue for the shinies. We were so focused on just the palettes, we didn't even think about dialogue. That's fine. Days do not actually disappear from time to time, unless you mean from morning to night. Now here is a cool fish. A charred large jar. What a large and charming fish. Indeed. Followed by a large bass. And we have ourselves a rainbow rainbow trout. Now you're right, this is one that mysteriously disappears from time to time, unlike the dace. And the koi. Finally, the Cherry Cherry Sand. And yes, you're right, Blathers. This also disappears from time to time randomly. But here we are. Snow on the ground. Late February. Found them anyways. Let's go! Alright, time to set this up again. I only have to do this two more times, thankfully. Yeah.
Shiny fishing entails catching fish out of season as early as possible. Some fish are so rare they're 1 in 600. That is the most unlikely odds for any of these fish. These are normal game mechanics. Okay, so we are done with February 24th. Bard Knife Jaw theoretically should be possible to find on February 24th, but they're not. Next up is going to be a fun one. Next up will be Coelacanth. I'm looking forward to showing off this Coelacanth uh, mechanic. Or the, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. So, Coelacanth only come out when it rains. Now, it cannot rain when there's snow on the ground. But as soon as... February 25th rolls around, it can rain. Now I'm going to show off something that almost no one in the entire world knows about. You'll see. I'll see if I can pull it off. There is a 20% chance for rain on February 25th. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to 11.59 p.m. on February 24th. We're not even changing the day. And what we're looking for is rain as soon as the clock strikes midnight on February 25th. We are looking for rain. There's a 20% chance. And we'll try to get a coelacanth. And you know what? I know I just spent a whole bunch of time doing this. But I'm actually going to undo it. You'll see why soon. That's probably good. Once the clock strikes midnight, see if it rains. If not, we'll try again. Give it a second. Takes about three seconds for the weather to update. No. We did not get the 20% chance for rain, so we'll try again. So we are now going for the coelacanth. Some of you who are actively paying attention to the stream may guess what's going to happen. Maybe. May have an idea of what I'm trying to do here. Well, we need rain. But what other fun thing is going to happen? We got to get the 20% chance for rain, though. My hands are still kind of greasy from the pizza, and it's uh, not a pleasant gaming experience. I'm going to go wash my hands. Be right back. I am back. The clock's striking midnight now. No rain. So coelacanth aren't technically seasonal. They kind of are. Like, you can always, uh... Well, I mean... I would say they're more seasonal than... They're sort of like pseudo-seasonal, alright? 
Like, technically, coelacanths can appear any time of the year as long as it's raining. But without glitches, or not even glitches, without uh, hacking the game with action replay, there's no way to get rain to spawn in January or, de or December or January. So I think the next, or the next best thing I thought of is to get it as early as possible without any, like, without spawning rain through an action replay. Which would be February 25th. So the earliest possible time to get a coelacanth under normal gameplay mechanics is February 25th. So in that way, it's kind of a seasonal fish, and I'm including it in the run. I guess we can check message boards. Mess around a little bit. Here, we can go hang out in the lake. How's that sound? That sounds like a nice spot to hang out. That's true. It is more seasonal than sea bass. <laughs> that is a factual statement in a way. Does this work? I just realized. This should work. Now I'm not sure if this works. Just, the weather might already be predetermined. I'm pretty sure this works. Now, now I'm not 100% sure. I'm second-guessing myself if this works. I might have to go back to different years. I know that works. But I don't want to do that, because then I'll lose the... Uh, the fish roll. Hey, Celestial Nintendog. Welcome. Thank you for the good luck. Making good progress. Further, I am further along than I was before my town got corrupted last time. I find it suspicious that it's not snowing. Coelacanth is actually not a pain compared to most fish for this run. It's actually one it's actually the most common fish, ironically. I think. No, it's not the most common. Sea bass are technically more common during their most uncommon time. Rain? No. Oh, and jellyfish are more common as well, when they're out. And if you include the pond fish, then crawfish for sure. Oh, there we, yeah, okay, there we go. The weather can change. I'm just not getting the 20% yet. So can we get the snow to turn into rain at midnight? That would also be really cool to see. Yes, Fricks, welcome back. The clock has struck midnight. 
We are looking for rain. No luck yet. We are looking for February rain. And we have a very cool thing to show off that not many people in this world know about. A very rare event. Some of you may have an idea. Some of you may guess what the event is. Do not reveal to chat, though. It'll be a fun surprise. But yes, we are looking for rain. It's a 20% chance for rain. The coelacanth itself will be trivial. But uh, the rain is going to take the most time. But don't you worry, there is a shiny version of the coelacan. Alright, we got snow again, nice. Right, let's go hang out at the lake. As we wait. I mean, I guess I might as well catch fish. Considering I save... Sure, why not? Let's catch fish while we're waiting. Eh. Too much effort. I just want to wait around. Change my mind. Alright. Clock has struck midnight. Will we get rain? No. No, I didn't check off the fish that I tossed back into the water. However, I might as well catch them now while I wait for it to rain. Might as well. One less thing to worry about later. Hmm. Alright, we got rain- we got snow again. I feel like I discovered something on accident. Maybe. The weather becomes predictable once it starts... Uh, like, once you get a weather... Type of weather, it starts becoming predictable. Alright. Trucian Carp, check. Another Trucian Carp. All right. Farewell, snow. Hello. Nothing. Ugh. Come on, it's just twenty percent. No big deal. Yeah, I'll go for Gobi before switching to the next month. Though I assure you, I will be catching plenty of Gobies at when I'm going for the angelfish. Oh, there is no snow this time. Okay, cool. Or 
works for me. Oh, we did it. We got rain. Let's go. And look at this rare event. We have rain while there is snow on the ground. How cool is that? This is the only way to get this to happen. Normally, um, at, on February 25th, the snow is completely gone. But there is a, uh, it, there is a, 20% chance for rain, of course, as I mentioned. Whoops, I'm lost. Um, but the snow on the ground will stay until you enter and exit a building or reload the map in some way. Then all the snow will instantly disappear. But until then, the, sto the snow stays on the ground. And But the weather will update without, without having to change the map. So in this situation, you can actually get it to rain while there is snow on the ground. And that was my clever idea to get a coelacanth to spawn while there's snow on the ground. Pretty cool, huh? Very rare situation. Pretty clever if I do say so myself. So, we can now get the coelacanth. It is standard odds. 8%, which is very good odds. And we'll see if we can find it soon. However, I'm actually going to go for more than just a coelacanth. I'm going to go for a tire as well. I'm going to go for the 101% for fishing. The golden rod plus. The shiny rod plus. So. You would think the coelacanth are super rare right now. But they're not. Just getting bad luck. So we're going for the tire as well. There's our first coelacanth. We got it. Let's go. Shiny coelacanth. Or, yeah, there it is. Nice. The purple shiny coelacanth. Gotta love it. There it is. But we're not done. We need to get the tire. This is the best opportunity to catch a tire. Highest odds for large fish. And I just did all that bell bag management, so I don't have a lot of fish in my inventory as is. So now's a great opportunity to do a little bit of coelacanth farming while it's raining and there's snow on the ground. It is a 5% chance for a fish to be trash, I think. 5%? Or is it 10%? I should know this. E plus odds mess me up. I used to know it off the top of my head. I used to know with confidence it was either 5 or what, one, one or the other. But E plus messed me up. So now I can't remember if it's 10% or 5%. Anyways... It might take a while to get a tire, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I'm also getting really bad coelacanth luck at the moment. Hopefully that will change here soon. We're going for the shiny rod plus. I can't help myself. We're having fun here. Nice, you got a clip of it, Arcade Zone. Perfect. Isn't it fascinating? I agree. I'm glad you think so, too. 
It is fascinating. There we go. All right, come on, tire. Darn. We'll just get more purple coelacanths. I know exactly where I'm going to release these extra coelacanths as well. I'm sure you can guess if you were paying attention to um, other bodies of water in my town earlier. It will be a pond, yes, but it won't just be any pond. It will be a special pond. The smallest pond in the game, which I happen to have in my town. There we go. See, coelacanths aren't that rare right now. Darn, I caught it. What? Where's the fish at? Huh, I think I got the... The, uh, the glitch baker. Here we are. There's another, another tire tension. Darn. Alright, fine. Let's take this seriously. We'll put away more of the money bags. Here, we'll put that there. That looks nice and even. Yeah, I don't know why the programmers decided at midnight is when weather changes. Maybe because they thought the transition was awkward. So they wanted to put it at, like, I don't know, a time that programmatically made sense, but also wasn't, like, super obvious. Trash is 10%. Okay, that's what I was thinking, too. I'm pretty sure... That is, that is correct. Yeah, for some reason, well, not everything else changes changes at 6 a.m. Like the the snow on the ground will be grass as soon as I reload my town. So seasonal events and weather events change at midnight, but like daily events change at 6 a.m. Oh, do they have code to change the weather hourly? But they only choose midnight? Huh. That is weird. Interesting. Maybe they were trying to be... Like, they had grand plans to be super fancy at some point. But they ultimately didn't go any further than just midnight. Anyways, that's Coelacanth number five. With rain and snow combo. Pretty cool. Nothing like Coelacanth farming with snow on the ground. And no glitches as well. Unless you consider this a glitch. Which I would not. I would consider this just a normal game mechanic. All right, there's another coelacanth, maybe tire. Gonna be a tough catch, maybe. Or I just w straight up, oh, got it. Dang it, I caught it. Yo, 5% on the rel for decomp? That's exciting. Good work, Kyler. Will it be a shiny tire, though? Excellent question. I thought about it. No, it's not going to be a shiny tire. It should be, though. You're right. Make it gold or something. What color is a shiny tire? 
or white. Yeah, that's true. That could be an option. Hey, Orson. Yes, shiny fishing. Right now, I'm kind of just going off on a little uh, random tangent with trying to catch a tire. But uh, other than that, yes, we are shiny fishing. You may see it once I catch a coelacanth that is shiny. Alright, there's another coelacanth. Trying to get it in a better spot to catch. That should be good. Dang. Alright, there's our sh our shiny purple coelacanth. Number seven. Yes, number seven. I might as well just prepare more bell bags. I'll just put them all away. It was a 50-50 chance I would have caught a tire by this point. Roughly. My luck with fishing today, there's only been, not even today, this whole challenge, there's only been one lucky moment, and that was getting the quick 1 in 600 string fish. That has been the only time I've been lucky, this whole time, in my opinion. That's number eight. All right, quick number nine. Whoa, okay. He just went into the dock for a second. Cool, cool little glitch. Yeah, I'm so lucky I've seen KK Slider in so many different circumstances. Whether that was seeing him play his guitar in front of the train station at midnight, or not at midnight. Well, it actually is at midnight. Um, you know, starting brand new towns, he can greet us in the new towns. Uh, corrupted memory card, you know, e-reader card, all very cool situations. All very fun. A cool dog. Cool cat, excuse me. Come on, tire. That is coelacanth number 10. The tire is a 1 in 10. So... Just more bad RNG. That's true. Trash does take longer to pull. That is true. I could do that strat. I don't really want to, though. That is that is a true statement, though. I'm impressed you knew that. Yes, I've seen that, Fricks. That can also happen to fish at the at the uh, train, or at the river start acre. Yeah, it's a fun situation that can occur. You know, CRQ, you might be onto something. Maybe I should do that. Not like it really matters.
Yeah, as soon as it, as soon as it, uh, you hook the, the fish, and it's gonna determine if it's trash. It will swap to the trash AI. Otherwise, it has the AI and like everything about the regular fish. Yep. Nothing like Brian spending 20 plus minutes looking for a tire while it's raining in the snow. Helicanth number 11. I'll do the trick for the last Helicanth. Like on the last inventory spot. I'll try to go for the longer uh, time to catch. Because that trick will work really well for the Helicanth. That is true. Wait, is there AI for the... Is there AI, or what is the uh, bite time for trash? I know it's, m I know it's at least sea, li or sea bass time. Probably more. Hey, Awkward Squirrel, thank you very much for the kind words. Glad you're enjoying the content. And, um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the stream. I don't know if that's actually true, Kyler. I'm pretty sure the moment, like, it bites the bait, it switches. It, it The time to catch it increases. I'm pretty sure CRQ is correct, because I also think that's true. Because I experienced that at one point. Or, when I was doing the sea bass strat and I was testing it out, and I didn't have full pockets. Almost without fail, whenever I thought I was going to catch a sea bass, uh, it was a boot. Like, it happened a lot of the times. Well, I mean, it's good to... It, I think it's good to have a combination of both reading the code and, like, applying it to the game. I think both are very valuable to do. So, no worries, Kyler. It's all good. That's what we're here for. To help test a lot of these things in practice. For a while, we were reading assembly. Fun times. But now it is um, compiled-ish. At least with Ghidra. So it's been a while since we've actually had to mess with assembly alone, thankfully. Alright, what are we at? We got three more coelacanth, or three more inventory spots. Oh my goodness, RNG does not like me today. No, it's not Power PC Assembly. It's MIPS, right? MIPS Assembly? Is that right? Or is it... I don't think it's Power PC. Oh, it is Power PC? Okay. Well, that's good then, I guess. GameCube wasn't MIPS, but MIPS was used for the Nintendo 64. 
Uh, I thought this game was programmed based off of Nintendo 64 stuff. Or am I completely... Or am I just confused? Oh, they ported it. They ported it, so it's not in MIPS. It is in PowerPC Assembly. Oh, okay. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I was confused. It's all good. Graphics and sound are emulated in Nintendo 64. Gotcha. Alright, cool. That makes sense. Alright, anyways. Let's see what we got here. All right, I guess we're going to go for the delay catch strat. See if that works for catching a tire. Guess we're going to try something bold and and brave today for the rest of the stream, maybe. Or hopefully not. Bold and brash. More like needs to catch trash. Sorry. What do I, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> why do I do these things to myself? I subject myself to unnecessary, ridiculous things. Trying to keep, catch a piece of trash while it's snowing and raining. Or trying to catch a tire specifically. Mole, this mole cricket's not helping. All right, we're gonna delay catching it. See if, see if it, uh, see if this works. Nope. Well, that was not a tire. That's for sure. Still have one space available, which means I can still catch trash. We're gonna learn if this strat actually works to catch a tire. Well, we may learn. exist. All 
All right. Oh, I think we got it. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. We actually caught it. Uh. <laughs> Alright, you go away. Just go, go away. You know what? Fine. Let's actually just get a full inventory of coelacanth. Why not? We'll catch this stupid crucian carp later. Get a full inventory of coelacanth. We're already this far. We might as well. Full inventory of coelacanth. With rain plus snow. At this point, might as well. Cool. I'm going to laugh so hard if the last thing I catch is a tire, because then it will not be a full inventory of coelacanth. Oh, it's quite the highlighted message. Fascinating. Kind of cool. I'd go hang out there. All right, here we go. Is the last coelacanth going to be a tire, as predicted? Nope. 15 coelacanth. A full inventory of coelacanth. All caught in the rain and snow. Very cool. Somehow have yet to have caught a tire. RNG is not happy with me. Apparently. You probably go crazy living in the HRA Animal Crossing house. Alright, let's see. Delay strats. Okay, well, we'll see if this works. Did they have the Gracie car in the amusement park as well to drive you around? That'd be cool. Wondering if I'm scaring off fish in that brief moment I run along the shoreline. Maybe. Why should we not? Oh, don't make the multiplayer mod because Nintendo hates it. I think Nintendo only hates. Multiplayer mods, if it's a game that's, like, related to a game that's about to be released. Like, they're cool with OOT multiplayer. Yeah. Four point, bro. Understandable, Kyler. Understandable. Oh my goodness, coelacanth. Well, not coelacanth, but tire.
The shiny coelacanth. I have already caught like 17 of them. It is purple. Or 16. That's ridiculous. They DMCA'd an open source GitHub project. That are that is most likely legal. That is that's just not right. True, nowadays there seems to be more glitches on uh, first releases of games than ever. There we go. Oops, I accidentally caught it. There we go, there, that answers your question. It's purple. Alright, there we go. There's another one. That was intentional. Trying to get a tire. Alright, there we go. Let's see if this strat works. I, too, miss the good old days when games were finished upon release because they had thorough bug testers run through the game with a fine-tooth comb beforehand. There we go! Let's go! I got the tire! The strat worked! I delayed pressing A, and it worked. The strat does, in fact, work. Boom. Let's go. Shiny tire, get. Alright, we're gonna catch one more. We wanna have that full inventory of uh, coelacanths upon, uh, upon leaving here. We're actually gonna go to Blathers, and I'll show you why. Well, you'll, you'll see why very soon, why we're gonna go to Blathers. Hello. I do not have 15 coelacanth to donate to Blathers, but you'll see why very soon. Alright, there we go. We have regained a full inventory of coelacanth. Hot in the rain plus snow. Very fun. Next up, we're gonna go donate one. Ready? Ready? We're gonna go donate our coelacanth. Here we go. Yes, if you want to find a list of all the seasonal fish, I posted it in my Discord under my AC documents. You can find a link to my Discord in the Twitch, my Twitch description. Alright, we have donated the coelacanth. We cannot donate more than one. And just like that, the snow is gone. No more snow. It is now time to enter phase two of the challenge, which is spring fishing, which means we need a new shirt, a red puffy vest. It is springtime. It is time to change shirts. There is our red puffy vest looking nice and pink like a salmon. And now it is time to release all these coelacan. This looks like a good spot. <laughs> Into the tiny pond you go. Into the tiny pond with you. You can all live happily right here together. One big school of fish. Enjoy. Throw them away at various angles. We 
We don't want all these coelacanth clogging up our inventory. Is this actually the smallest pond? Is it? As far as, like, the amount of water... We'd have to do a measurement. There might be one other pond that is a contender. That is an actual, like, full oval. Anyways. We have one more piece of garbage to catch tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and catch the last one to can. While I look for the various small fish as well. Oops, that was a small fish. Not bad. Oops. Water's going the other way, Brian. Alright, we got our Crucian cart back. We got another one. Yeah, the, the shirt does look a little chocolatey, doesn't it? It's true. All right, we got our freshwater goby, unless it's a cherry salmon. That'd be crazy. All right, cool. Get the small bass, we'll call it. Call it good. I would like to get a can while I still have an inventory clear of stuff. Oh, I might as well get the bass. Or maybe, well, nah, never mind. Bass is actually kind of rare right now, surprisingly. Yeah, it's like a 16% chance if it's a medium fish. And since it can't be a can, which is the last piece of trash that I need, I'm not even going to bother. Honestly, I should probably just catch any fish I find. Any tiny fish. Small bass isn't exactly super common at the moment either. It's somewhat common, but I don't know. Spending a lot of time on something that I really don't need to be spending a lot of time at. Alright, fine. I'm just going to catch any tiny fish. We'll get a small bass later. Going for the can. Not a can. Hey, look, we got another loach. <laughs> we got another shiny. However, it's... It's uh, February 25th, so the odds are higher for an out-of-season loach. Yes, we got the can. Let's go. We got all the garbage. Easy. And you know what? I have a fun idea. Let's go drop off this loach in our house. We'll put it right here. There's our shiny loach. Yeah, I'll put it over here. One shiny loach. Very fun. Should I put all the garbage down? Nah, I'll keep it in the inventory. It's fine. Alright! I have one final thing that I want to do in February. Well, I don't want to, but I, I need to. And that is the Bard Knife Jaw. Oh boy, Bard Knife Jaw time. Our favorite. Last time this fish caused a lot of headache because it's glitched and you can't catch it five days or even four days before it's supposed to spawn. 
For some reason, this fish alone is three days before it spawns normally. However, because of that, the odds of finding it are better than five days ahead, uh, beforehand. So maybe it won't be too bad. February 26th. I'm actually not going to pick any more weeds that I find. Because... Um, I want... I could leave enough weeds out to maybe find Wisp in the future. That'd be fun. Anyways. Ah, uh, this one's going to bother me. I have to pick this one. Anyways, let's go look for Bard Knife Jaws. Oh, right. Let me do this. Definitely don't want to fill our inventory with nonsense fish or any more garbage. There we go, that wasn't so bad. Bard knife jaw time. Shiny bard knife jaw. Hopefully I can get in the next 10 minutes, because it's almost my bedtime. I'd like to be done with February by the end of the stream, that would be nice. Alright, come on, bard knife jaw. Oh, we're for sure gonna get it. I think it's gonna be like a 5% chance, maybe 4%, 1 in 20 to 1 in 30, somewhere in that range. I believe. I think this is a sea bass. That was a sea bass range. We'll see, though. Oh my goodness! Never mind, we did it! Bard knife jaw! Let's go! Easy bard knife jaw, wow. I thought for sure that was going to be a sea bass as well. Easy every time. Wow. A legit shiny bard knife jaw. It's about time. Does look pretty cool, doesn't he? Alright, uh, I'm lost. Alright, that is excellent timing for me. Call it a stream there. We got our... Oh, we found Wisp! <laughs> well, let's have a little fun. Hello, Wisp. Good evening. Hello, Wisp. Hello. The Yeah, the RNG is finally coming together right at the end of the stream. Looky there. Where are you going, Wisp? You're on a journey. Gonna cross the bridge. That is awesome. Let's go find a spirit. So, here's a little foreshadow to the next set of fish. The pond. Yes, this pond. I kind of want to destroy these tulips. They're kind of in the way for what I need to test later. I'm not going to do it now, though. Let's go find a spirit. This weed also is kind of ugly. I'm just going to pick it. There's a spirit. Very fun. That's awesome. We did find a wisp in this run after all. <laughs> Very cool. Alright, watch this. Spirit stays there, yeah? Spirit's still there. Hold on. Go. Go. Somewhere more visible, please. Can't even push it. You just have to wait for it. Okay, now we can see it. Alright, still there. St still there. Really? There we go. Poof. All gone. Like a bug or a fish, it will despawn. And it will go somewhere else in town now.
Yeah, when you have the HD game capture, you really notice some some things uh, that are different than when you don't have HD. Anyways, looks like we got a handful of villagers hanging out, enjoying the uh, the late night shenanigans, just like I am. All right, I would say that is an excellent conclusion to today's stream. Should we, uh, should we capture all the spirits? You know what? Sure. I, I got like five more minutes anyways. That was a quick barred knife jaw grab. Let's get all the spirits for fun. Yeah, there's so many weeds in town, I need to clean them up. We need to find all these spirits. We'll do one bonus, one fun little, uh, conclusion to today's stream since I got a little bit of extra time. Let's find ourselves five spirits around town. This will be a very simple search, because they're guaranteed to spawn. Just run around town like so. Check out the full acre. Yeah, you can have... You can have plenty of weeds in town and not affect the fish spawn. It's when you have, like, uh, it's when your town rating gets below a certain value. I don't know exactly what that value is, but it's it's fairly low. I also think garbage automatically fails the town rating. I think that affects fish spawn instantly, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Kyler can tell us here very soon. He's he's doing decomp on that, on that exact question. At this very moment. How convenient. That was a super lucky bard knife jaw grab. And to think I spent three hours unable to find it last time. Crazy. Craziness. Well, it's because it was impossible. That's why. All right, this is probably the highest surface area in this acre. Yeah. What do you guys think? Should should we have Wisp repaint my roof? Or should we get a random reward? Oh, we also have Sahara. What? And look, I have just enough money. Well, shoot! We got more things to do. Hold on. Hold the phone. Let's go get ourselves um, the carpet from indoors. I was really annoyed that Nook wasn't selling me a cool carpet. How perfect. Suddenly, I have things I want to do in this fishing challenge that have nothing to do with fishing. It's just, it's just how I play Animal Crossing. Just who I am. I can't help myself. I see fun. I go to the fun. <laughs> I also have only found two spirits. Alright, I need to hurry this up. I need to book it. Spirit? Spirit? Spirit check? Nope. Okay. Get ourselves that carpet. Get ourselves a brand new carpet for this library wall. Paint the roof. I've, I agree. We're going to paint the roof. Paint the roof is going to be the reward from Wisp. Which is pretty neat because there's no other way or no other convenient way for me to repaint my roof. I would have to go to a lot of trouble to do it. Well, I could get a villager to do it, but that even that's a lot of trouble. Alright. I'd have to go through the whole birthday dialogue. 
That's kind of a pain as well. There's a spirit. Alright, Sahara. What you got? Basement floor? Mm, nah. You make me sad, Sahara. Alright, what else we got? Mossy carpet. That doesn't fit the library wall very well. Go for a music room floor. Or a classroom floor. A daisy meadow. Ancient library. We can go for the uh, the ancient. Whoops. All right. You know what? That's that's what you get. Regal carpet's not a Sahara carpet though. So we won't be getting that from Sahara. Not a no. Stop. Stop at the basement for him. All right. Come on, Sahara. Show me a cool carpet. One that goes with the library wall. Ancient tile. You know what? Sure. Tyler predicted it. He called it. The ancient library. Good jade. Alright, we did it. We got ourselves an ancient carpet. <laughs> and I had enough money. I just realized I won't have enough money when I do when I donate more fish to blathers. At least to clean up fill up my inventory. I could use my garbage that I caught. Also, I didn't actually check the saker. I well wait, yes I did. I remember the shining spot. Well not I have. Alright, we need to find two more spirits. I've been messing around long enough. Still messing around. Wisp will paint it a random color. Aha, there's four. Number four. One to go. Where have I not looked? I'm gonna go back up. I'm feeling like it's gonna be up here. I'm feeling up here. That's where I'm feeling. Hello, Portia. Portia, where's the spirit at? Have you seen it? Have you seen it around? There it is! We're waiting. It'll float over here. One day. <clears throat> I believe. Wrong way. We're in D3. No, you're going the wrong way. Float this way. There's no bridge nearby. Oh, oh, it's floating over here. No. I think I might have to... I think I might have to give up on this particular spirit. I'm pretty sure once it picks a spot, it, like, floats around a certain radius area. I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I think I might be out of luck. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold the phone. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Got my hopes up. I think it reached the max radius. All right, we're, we're done. We're done with this. Okay. We gotta find it again. Rip. Where are we at? D2? Alright. Yeah, we just gotta run around the entire town again. No big deal. Where do I wanna go first? I wanna go... Oh! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> Easy every time. 
Number five. Hello again, Sahara. A wisp. I did it. You're welcome, Wisp. I want you to paint my roof, please. Oh, you! Oh, I gotta pick a color. Right, it's not random. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna do a random number between 1 and 10. Or whatever that number is. 1 to 10. Oh, it already, uh... Alright, we're gonna click generate. There's only 10, right? How many colors are there? No, there's 12. No, wait. 9? It goes up to OXA? I think there's 10. We're just gonna do 10, whatever. I'm not gonna overthink it. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. I rolled a 6. So whatever number 6 is. So red, 1, 2, 3. Another color. Sky blue. I like it. That is number 6. We got ourselves a nice sky blue roof now. Thank you, Wisp. Very fun. Let's go put down our carpet. There's our roof color. And that's cool. It's not one of the default ones. I like it. That's perfect. I love blue. And how perfect that I'm now wearing the red puppy vest. Let's put down our carpet. There we go. That's kind of cool, actually. Library wall, ancient tile. We got our shiny loach. We got a painting. Yes. What what a nice house. And then we'll do this. And that. And there we are. Perfect. Having a lot of fun with this challenge. Up next will be March. And I've got a really good strat to see if I've got fish to spawn in March. I'm looking forward to it. Super simple strat for March. April also has a pretty good strat. So tomorrow we're going to do March. That one I'll probably knock out without too much effort. But April will be afterwards. That one's going to be a doozy. That's going to be the first of two insane fish to find. The angel fish. Time to fish. So last time we finished off with the bard knife jaw. This time we're going to get a crawfish. So the earliest possible day... <clears throat> will be March 27th. Earliest possible day for April fish will be March 27th, April 1st, March 31st, 30th, 29th, 28th, 27th. Yes. Five days before April 1st. So we got to roll that one in six. But I have a really cool strategy for April fish. The crawfish is a pond exclusive fish and there are no other fish that can spawn in the pond at the moment and if a fish can spawn in an acre it will assuming your town rating uh yeah assuming your town rating is good enough fish will always spawn so if even if the crawfish is six times rarer than normal if nothing else will spawn in the pond it's actually still 100 percent but the killifish can also spawn in the pond, so it's actually 92%, 8% killifish. Either way, if anything spawns in the pond, it means we got the 1 in 6. So this will not take long at all. <clears throat> all we do is you, we run over to a pond. We check if there's a fish in the pond. If there's not, we reset and try again. We repeat until we get a fish in the pond, and we know we got it. So here we go. Nice net. <laughs> Ready to fish. So the nearest pond would be over here. Right here. I do not see a fish. We reset. And it might be fast enough where I don't have to set the clock. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> but what with Mr. Rossetti, we will. 
So, this shouldn't take too long at all to get the one in six for April. Or I guess we're, we'll be in March, but for the April fish. Just gotta get through Rossetti. Almost got away with it. <laughs> Anyways, how's everyone doing today? Have you enjoyed your Thursday? Mine was okay. Mostly thinking about fishing tonight. I'll be curious to see what our viewership is tonight, because this is like Tears of the Kingdom night of the... or Eve of Tears of the Kingdom. So people are probably getting ready to go get early pickup. We'll see. <laughs> Reset equals bad. There it is. I have two cats on the desk right now. That is a lot of cats on the desk. There we go. Now we have one. <clears throat> no fish. <clears throat> Didn't roll the one in six. <clears throat> this is the fastest check. For a 1 in 6, though. It's so nice. <clears throat> April fish bring Mayfish. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think that's how it goes. Coughing. I don't know why I'm coughing. <clears throat> Anyways, <clears throat> moving along. Let's see what we got. Hello, it's Casey. Hello, Casey. Welcome. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, Arcade Zone. Hey, Luna. Welcome. Hope everyone is doing well tonight. <clears throat> <clears throat> I went to GameStop to pre-order Tears of the Kingdom for my girlfriend's birthday. Um, she'll be playing it. <clears throat> I'll be watching. That's fine with me. Um, it. I wish there was a, a free way to get Tears of the Kingdom, but... Alas, gotta make sure my girlfriend's birthday present arrives on time. And uh, it was just a line of people. All pre-ordering Tears of the Kingdom. <clears throat> Bones were also all. Hey, there we go. There we go. We got the one in six. Guaranteed crawfish right here. Let's go ahead and get it. <clears throat> all right. Crawfish is 180 degree vision. And shiny crawfish. Let's go. <clears throat> We got it. Yes. That's... That is fantastic. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and get the killfish as well. Won't take long. There it is. As you can see, fish are 100% guaranteed to spawn, even though it is a 1-6 odds compared to normal. It's actually not, because there's nothing else in the pond. And there is our shiny killifish. Very cool. Just like that. Two more fish. Two more shiny fish. Knock off the list. Let's go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Cool, cool. So, moving along here. We are now going to grind for a guppy. One in 600. <clears throat> we shall see how this goes. And I'll be catching a lot of tiny fish. So, this could take a while. This could take the entire stream. <clears throat> but at least we got the one in six. So we are guaranteed to know it's possible to get guppies. Fish first, or it's day fish. Guppy is a daytime fish, so the earliest it could appear is at 9 a.m. So, <clears throat> here we go. This will be interesting. This is the first time we fish during the day. For the entire stream, actually. Right? <clears throat> yeah, it is. And fun... No, it's not a fun fact. There will be another daytime stream later as well. <clears throat> Alright. Here we go. Let's see what happens. March 27th. 9am, bright and early. We're looking for a 1 in 600 guppy. <clears throat> what do you guys think? How long do you think it's going to take? That is a loach. I do not want it. I have already caught a loach in February. <clears throat> I can tell it's a loach because of the distance it uh, traveled towards the bait. So loaches have a longer vision radius, or a vision distance, I should say. <clears throat> So, they also have a wider angle. So, we'll probably be catching a lot of loaches. <clears throat> we shall see. It's a 1 in 3 chance to get a tiny fish at the moment. And loaches are currently... Well, they're currently 35%. <clears throat> If it's a tiny fish, it's over a 90% chance to be a loach. Oh? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. I'll, I'll just stop. Yeah, the, the loaches have incredible range. They do. So, um, the plan is to cast far away... And and if it starts going after the bait far away, or if its uh, range, like its angle, is also uh, pretty wide, it's probably a loach. We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> an hour tops would be amazing for the guppy. If this takes less than an hour, that'd be incredible luck. <clears throat> Anyways, get cozy. Could be a long grind. <clears throat> I think it's a loach. Oh, yeah, I was a loach. Ah, <clears throat> uh, that's a loach. <clears throat> Ouch. <clears throat> Stream in the New Horizons category. But this game is not New Horizons. That would be lying. <clears throat> we don't want to do that. However, 
Not a bad idea. This is the only thing that's modded about this are the palettes for the fish, the fish colors that are quote unquote shiny. Everything else about this is normal game mechanics. A simple palette swap <clears throat> for the shiny fish. All right, all right. My uh, my ability to distinguish loaches from other fish is pretty good. So we got ourselves a not loach, a pop-eyed goldfish, <clears throat> which I needed. Very good. There was a one in twelve chance that was a guppy. Nice. <clears throat> <clears throat> Are all fish shiny, you ask? No. Only seasonal fish are shiny. No, I guess we're catching this. Probably loach. Yeah. Yes, all fish have different AI. Oh, I didn't... Uh, yeah. So that includes... What is going on? Oh. <clears throat> My chair is falling apart. <clears throat> sea bass or seasonal? <laughs> No, fish that can spawn year-round are not seasonal, and those do not have a shiny palette. Maybe some water would help. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, sea bass are not around for one month. Therefore, they are seasonal. This is probably a loach. Well, very high odds. <clears throat> Plushies in the background. Well, we got Rosie. We got Goldie. We got... <clears throat> see who else we got. Oops. We got Bo. Haskell. And... Pikachu. <clears throat> I think Rosie's up there. Oh yeah, there's Rosie. Oh yeah, front and center. a minute. Might as well just catch this thing at this point. Okay, well, we got our info right there. Don't turn around. Okay, that's that's fine. It's gonna turn around, yep. Don't want it. <clears throat> Alright, well, we're just gonna catch this, I guess. Alright, let's do a cool thing. We're gonna catch a fish <clears throat> from a different acre. Watch this. Well, it's a loach, but we'll catch it anyways. <clears throat> Ooh, I got an idea. A lifesaver. 
These things always help me. However, this lifesaver doesn't have the hole in it. The hole's been filled. Yet it's still the lifesaver brand. What a, isn't the whole point of a lifesaver to have a hole in it so that your life is saved if you choke on it? <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> What's the biggest problem so far? Um, actually, the biggest problem so far has been the sea bass, believe it or not. <laughs> That's actually been the biggest problem. It was over two hours of fishing to get that stupid sea bass. <clears throat> but it didn't really have anything to do with the sea bass, per se. It had more to do with the, uh, rolling the one in six. <clears throat> to even get a, even make it possible to get the sea bass. For some reason, it took around 20 tries to roll a 1 in 6. It's pretty bad. <clears throat> but I did eventually get the 1 in 6. And we've been, we've been doing fine ever since. Yeah, see, I get it's named after the nautical lifesavers, the flotation ring. I guess. But those things don't, like, if, if those things had a covered up center, <laughs> they wouldn't be very effective now, would they? <clears throat> you could crawl on top of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's I'm sure that that's just as effective as their intentional design. <laughs> <clears throat> then you got to balance. Anyways, at least this lifesaver is delicious. <clears throat> I think it's helping. I think this is a loach. Well, my odds are very good that it's a loach. <clears throat> if we find the guppy in less than, like, 45 minutes, I'd be pretty happy about that. Because the loach is, or the guppy, I should say, I think it's going to be the third biggest issue the third most unlikely fish to find or i guess so the third longest fish on average to find is going to be the guppy <clears throat> so it'd be pretty awesome to knock this incredibly rare fish out Yeah, I didn't really catch anything. It's just more of... I don't know. Every now and then, for some reason... <clears throat> I don't know why. Oh? I'm not sure. I'm gonna catch it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Another pop-eyed goldfish. Another 1 in 12 for a guppy. All right. <clears throat> I think it's one in twelve. <clears throat> yeah, one in twelve for sure. Haven't found the regular goldfish yet. Or haven't I haven't caught one, I should say. <clears throat> I'm 
My allergies mostly, or not allergies, but I usually get like a, a cough around allergy season, like when there's pollen out, or when the weather changes dramatically from fall to winter, <clears throat> or, uh, or winter to spring. March is the absolute worst for me. And I'm still recovering from March <laughs> for allergies. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Rox? Thanks for the nickel. I appreciate that. There is no shiny goldfish. It is a... It is a year-round fish. You can catch it any time. <clears throat> What are we doing, you ask? We are shiny fishing. Yes, we are. Looking for some shiny fish. There's one now. No, I'm just kidding. It was only, uh, I I'm catching fish out of season on the earliest possible day. Some fish are as rare as 1 in 600. The one I'm going for right now is a 1 in 600. <clears throat> And it has the same size as the super common loach right here. <laughs> hey, but you know how fitting for Tears of the Kingdom coming out, considering the loach has a Zelda reference. <clears throat> the Hylian loach. How fitting. How nice. <clears throat> Oh. Oh, another pop at goldfish. Another one in 12. <clears throat> Three so far. Three pop eyed goldfish so far. <clears throat> Wait, let me test this one again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, just catch it. Yeah, there's a lot of detail to this game. It is very fun to learn new things all the time about it. There's a lot to learn about it. Oh, this is not a loach. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. That was a loach. Dang. <clears throat> it was right at the very edge of its vision that it didn't quite see before it turned around. That was a tricky one. Nice. That's awesome, Casey. I'm happy to hear that. Well, these... Uh, streams and challenge runs are very good ways to expand detailed game knowledge. Even for myself. I'm always learning something new when I do these challenges. <clears throat> Some new detail. It's a lot of fun. Alright, this thing's gonna... Oh, it darted up. Darted that way, huh? <clears throat> yeah, same. I love the GameCube model, or the GameCube uh, fish models and sprites. They're actually 3D. The inventory icons are 2D, of course. <clears throat> but no, they're actually 3D models. They're just very um, triangular. Lots of or not a lot of polygons. Rather, not a lot of polygons. <clears throat> Pretty sure this is a loach. Like, 99, yeah.
Yeah, they are pretty realistic in New Horizons. There's something about low-res models. That's fun. Alright, it darted away, so I'm not sure, but we're gonna catch this thing. Okay. <clears throat> I like low I like a uh, medium res. Too low res. Like really old school games. They're fun for the game quality, but um, I do like somewhere in the middle. That's my preference. However, I am a f I, I am a fan of high quality or like a high definition models in newer games. I I guess it depends on the game. For Animal Crossing, I really like the lower or medium res stuff. For VR, which I love to play, um, the higher the res, the better. Easier on the eyes. When the when your screen when the screens are literally inches away from your face, it is nicer to have higher resolution. <clears throat> Yeah, VR Animal Crossing would be pretty cool. Maybe one day. If you're getting into VR for the first... Oh, I didn't want to catch this. If you're getting into VR for the first time, um, I don't recommend playing OOT VR. It, I would say it's for not a seasoned vet, but for someone who has at least uh, gotten their gotten used to VR motion sickness or has overcome it. <laughs> yeah, you need a little bit of a little bit of VR experience to truly enjoy OOT VR, in my opinion. You can definitely play it, but you'll probably not enjoy it without a little bit of experience in other higher resolution games. But yes, once you get your VR legs, highly recommend some OOT VR. And then, hopefully, Majora's Mask VR, one day, uh, there have been some complications with it. I've even, tried, I've even tried hiring someone to finish it for me, because, unfortunately, while we got a solution, I figured out a solution for the Nintendo, Nintendo 64, it doesn't work in, uh, in the GameCube port for Majora's Mask. So, there's some work to be done, unfortunately. That has yet to be resolved. It's so close. But, uh, that project's still in the works. It's just run into some complications. Probably similar complications as to the Majora's Mask devs when they ported it over to the Collector's Edition. They probably encountered some of these same complications that they had to rewrite some of the game code to get to work. Which is interesting to, uh, you know, sort of walk in the shoes of the devs. But it is frustrating to try to get out uh, this project fully functional. Anyways, Majora's Mask VR Beta is still an option. And it is still really fun, in my opinion. But I'm not going to publicly release that, because... Oh man, my Discord would go... Would be ridiculous with the amount of... Like, hate. <laughs> and frustration. Because uh, there's a lot of things you have to remember to do in the beta version in order to not softlock your game. And it can be frustrating for the average person who's just trying to get Majora's Mask VR played, or in, downloaded, installed, and played, and having to deal with these random complications that shouldn't exist, not for the average consumer. So, average person's not equipped for it. That's why it's Patreon only at the moment. Only reason why. Some way to filter out the average 
person. Anyways. Hopefully one day soon. Hopefully... Hopefully in like a month or two. That'd be awesome. We'll see. But Tears of the Kingdom should occupy most people's Zelda gaming needs. <laughs> or wants. For, for a while. Yeah, we take a lot of things for granted with ROM hacks, or not even ROM hacks, but with, like, games in general. And, uh, and trying to, like, get, get this working for hundreds of people with different computer setups, different levels of experience with setting stuff up on their computer, different hardware for, for me specifically, different hardware for VR, different operating systems as well. Yep. Yeah, there's so many different possible configurations. It is very challenging to get it all functional for everyone. Even if you get it functional for 90% of the population, you're you're going to get a very vocal 10%. <laughs> that will still be overwhelming if if your game is popular enough. I have encountered that and it's all good. I think for the most part I've got a lot of people happy. Getting OTVR working for them. Those who are interested in such projects. Oh, oh no, it's a loach. Just right outside its angle. I'll catch it anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> The OT VR release was hectic. You are correct. That was very hectic. I had to do some last minute changes to get it working. Even after I released it publicly, there was like an issue very close to be to the beginning of the game that I thought I had fixed, but somewhere along the line, um, another issue. Whoa, that was a loach. Another issue came up and I had to like fix something very quickly. And it caused a lot of chaos at the very beginning of the release. But after that, uh, we got it all addressed. I think it's I think it's fine now. I don't think it caused too much pain. But yeah, it's ideally everything works perfectly for everyone it, uh, right out the box. Day one, version 1.0. Perfect. No issues. But... For, uh, for these kinds of projects, it's not always the reality. You release something when it was it with that with debug stuff. Oh, oh, and it's the loach day. That is, uh, yeah, well, it happens. <laughs> it happens if you're trying to rush out a uh, project not even rush it out even if you're taking your time and being careful it's an easy thing to accidentally do <clears throat> oh that's a loach Even these old Nintendo 64 games and GameCube games that that had months of of uh, play testing before they're released, they all have their glitches. Back when play testing was a major thing, so that way there weren't there wasn't just like patches ready to go or ready to uh, work on after the game's initial release. You sell a physical copy of a game, that's it. 
well, I guess no, not, not physical copy, but if you if you sell a physical copy without online capabilities, that's it. <laughs> that's what you gotta. That's what you're releasing to the public. There's no changes on day one. Without unless you catch it super quickly and stop producing version 1.0. Even then, though. Then you'll have console differences, which we see in most games. <clears throat> yeah, nowadays you don't have to spend as much money on playtesters. Because if there's an issue, you have millions of playtesters, and you can just browse the internet to see where the issues are, and then uh, patch, them, patch them up real quick. <clears throat> it may hurt sales a little bit, but you don't have to spend as much money on people playtesting it for months. And you can get production out quicker. So unfortunately, that is the way the gaming industry works at the moment. I'm going to be very curious to see how Tears of the Kingdom, uh, how it falls, how like, not it falls, but like, how glitchy it is on day one, if it is at all. I'll be very curious. What about Breath of the Wild on day one? Anyone remember? Was it glitchy? I know there's been several patches, but was it... Was it, like, super glitchy? I don't remember. That was a while ago. There. Some weird tree launches. I remember those tree launches. They must not be a thing anymore. I thought those were fun. They were in the speedruns. I remember that. That's true, it is entirely programmed for the Switch. That could be helpful for less bugs. That's a good point. All right, well, let's catch yourself another loach. should be a loach. I'm going to catch it anyways. Good to confirm these things. See, what they're, see if you actually know how far away the fish will bite. Or we'll go for the bait. Confirm that is the loach. Yeah, you're right. If I catch enough loaches, well, I keep throwing the loaches back in the water. So, you know. I have to throw them elsewhere. Yeah, I know. See? Going right back. Just catching the same thing over and over again. Same loach. Pretty sure this is a loach. Let's just confirm. Yep. Oh, the guppy's gonna feel so good to finally catch 
Hopefully it happens tonight. It would be nice to, uh, you know, not spend four hours looking for this thing. You know what? I'm gonna catch it. Yeah, it's a loach. I would honestly, even if I, all I caught was the guppy and I made it to April, I would I would be happy. That would be that would be a, a win in my book for tonight. <clears throat> what do you guys prefer? Should I catch every small every tiny fish I find or should I uh, or should I keep doing what I'm doing and intentionally not catching them if, if it uh, takes too long for them to bite? Oh, wait a second. What do we have here? I think a loach would have gone for that. Oh, no, it's a loach. Okay, never mind. We have a loach. That's all, that's all we got. Sounds good. I think if, an, if some people say they want to just see me catch every fish, I think after a while they'll probably agree. Okay, we've caught enough loaches. We can. We don't need to do this all day. Because <laughs> about no, oops, that's a small fish. About ninety-five percent of these tiny fish. Actually, what is what is uh, thirty-five over thirty-seven? Whatever that is, those are the approximate odds of tiny fish being loaches right now. So, the vast majority of these fish are going to be these uh, Hylian loaches. There we go, 94.5%. About 19 and 20 tiny fish are loaches. On average. Like, I know that's a loach. Ah. We'll see. That's a loach for sure. Well, you have to also factor in the guppy, which is a 1 in 600. So if you want to get really specific... Oh, hey, we got a goldfish. If you want to get really specific, it's probably closer to 94.5%. Probably like 94 point five five percent <laughs> yep now we've caught every possible tiny fish but the guppy much better You know what, though? I should catch all the tiny fish. Well, that's not true. I, I guess I should say every time I, cut, I catch two goldfish, it doesn't take long until I get the fish I'm looking for. So two goldfish, then we're, uh, then we're golden. Either way, though, we're chilling. Having a good time. We get a fish during the day. That's nice. Nice change of pace. A little daytime fishing. Gotta enjoy that. That's right. Different music.
Oh, I'll catch it. There, I caught it. Yeah, same for me. Even though I've played this game my entire life, didn't really have time to, like, you know, stop playing this game and then have nostalgia for it, since I've always played it. I still have nostalgia for this music. Even though I've never stopped playing it. It is... Very high-quality music, for sure. Peaceful times. Right, even if I take a month break, that'll be enough time for nostalgia to set in. Yeah, we've had texture modding for quite a while now. If you go back to my YouTube, you'll find a video from 2017 of texture and palette modding. Mostly thanks to Kyler. However, one fun fact you can do, you can take a screenshot of an emulator, for example, like a, like let's say those, those red tulips right there, on an emulator, you can take a screenshot of it, go to Microsoft Paint, and you can extract the RGB values. If you convert it to RGB 5A3, which is not a simple process if you don't know the conversion, like, the tools for it aren't, like, readily available. But if you can convert it to the RGB 5A3, which is what Animal Crossing uses, and you, uh, you know, change its Indianness depending on how you're searching for it, whether it's through uh, in RAM or if you're searching through the, uh, the ROM itself, or not the ROM, but the, uh, the ISO, you can actually find the palette for that specific flower if you try enough combinations and then that is one way you could find where the tulip palette is in the game's code even using um, power pc assembly compressed well no you have to decompress it yeah zero encryption uh, but once you decompress you can find it and then you could change it and so, for example, I've made blue tulips before using that method without needing any any other tools. Just needed to decompress the ISO, extract it, uh, find the palette for the red tulip, and then uh, change those values. The blue. And it worked. 
Alternatively, instead of screenshotting the emulator, you could also um, uh, dump the textures using Dolphin, and then you can get the exact colors through that method as well. Yeah, it's very tedious. There's a reason why tools exist to speed up these processes. But there are ways to do it, even without robust tools. It just requires a little bit of clever thinking and using whatever rudimentary tools you have available to you. Nice, Casey. Yeah, it is It is satisfying to find things in RAM because it feels like you're searching through... Well, because you are. You're searching through millions and millions of bytes that all mean nothing unless you know exactly what you're looking for out of all that information. And to find it, it is pretty rewarding. Hey, CRQ, welcome. You didn't get a notification... Like through Discord or through Twitter or through Twitch, not Twitter. Anyways, glad you made it. Zenith, thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate that alone a lot. And uh, hello. Four months, thank you. And thank you for the good luck. Appreciate it. Yes, the shiny fishing. We are. This is the hardest fish yet. It will not be the hardest fish for the entire challenge, but this is the hardest fish so far that I'm going for at the moment. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, it's a goldfish. Now, other people should appreciate when other people sub as well, because the more subs, the more motivation I have to stream. Otherwise, I'd just do this challenge alone without streaming it. But with enough people watching and hanging out, it gives me motivation to stream. Otherwise, I'd just sit in my room alone quietly fishing and then make a YouTube video out of it or something. Zenith with the gifted sub too. The hobo fire. Thank you very much, Zenith. Appreciate that. That that will help me stay motivated for another uh, 30 minutes. Thank you, Zenith. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I do appreciate it a lot. Hopefully this peaceful fishing brightens your evening a little bit. Nice, chill fishing. I have already pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom, uh, but for my girlfriend for her birthday. So she'll be playing it. I'll be watching. I'll probably play some OT randomizers while she plays Tears of the Kingdom. I think that's my play. Ooh, that's cool, Casey. That sounds like quite an ambitious project, especially since um, Harvest Moon doesn't really have a whole lot of, like, uh, I don't know, tools to make ROM hacks out of it. That would be really fun, though. And yeah, I mean, even if you didn't finish the project, sounds like you got a good learning experience out of it. That is valuable as well. Yeah, that is incredibly ambitious. But, I mean, that's, that's fine. Like, that's how you learn. You start with really awesome ideas, and then you learn what is reasonable. 
and what is doable, and then you, you know, you work from there. And it's just the nature of working on projects. Always keep that ambitious goal in the back of your mind, though. Never lose that dream if you can help it. Maybe 10 years down the line, when more people are interested in Harvest Moon uh, ROM hacks, or if someone takes on decomp, then you can work in the native code, which is so much easier. Maybe you'll uh, you'll be more equipped to complete that project, or even start a new one similar to it. Whatever makes you happy, and is, you know, doable, really all that matters. I think it's the loach. I don't even want it. Fishing has been going well, CRQ. Yes, it has. I got the one in six after about... After... Not about... I think it was exactly four attempts in March. And I know I got it because I found the crawfish. So we got ourselves a shiny crawfish. Shiny killifish. By the way, I should also be able to find killifish in the river as well. Uh, one in 600 also. That would be very sad if I found a shiny killifish in the river before the shiny guppy, because they're the same odds. And that means I basically would have lost a 50-50. That would be, oh, that'd be so sad. I didn't even think about that as a possibility. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's it's a 50-50. If that happens, if that situation happens. You know what else just came out that's ex really exciting, at least for me? Uh, Dokapon Kingdom for the, uh, the remake for the Switch. However, they picked a very poor time to release that game because of Tears of the Kingdom completely overshadowing it. Yeah, it's out as of like two days ago. So, they've yeah, that was very poor timing on their part. But I'm excited to play Dokapon Kingdom for the Switch. I looked at it, it looks almost like the original. But they must have changed a few things. Or they must have added a few things. They had to. There's no way they would just remake the game exactly like the original. Like, I watched, uh, watched a, a preview of it. Not a whole lot of footage. But just a little bit. And it, I was like, this is, this is exactly like the original. They better have changed some things. I'm not even going to probably mess around with Dokapon Kingdom for the Switch for a while. But uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool that someone that they're actually working on. D-O-K-A-P-O-N. Or... No, wait. No, they're all O's. No. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Arcade Zone got it. All right, cool. Thank you. I think it's D-O-K-A. Maybe, maybe it's D-O-K-O. Okay, yeah, D-O-K-A. Yeah, you'll find it. <laughs> hey, I, I spelled it right when I was, uh, when I was saying it aloud the first time. I was right. It was Arcade Zone that was wrong. It wasn't me. Anyways, very fun game. My friends and I have had have had great fun with it. And uh and I'm looking forward to some more fun in the future. Yeah, you do that, Arcade Zone, that's a good idea.
I would say the most underrated part of Dokkaban Kingdom is some of the versus modes. I personally like the uh, uh, the item collection versus mode. I forget what it's called. I think it's just like sh a shopping list of items. I forget what the what the exact mode is, but it's basically you get you need to get a shopping list of items. First person to bring all those items back to the castle wins. That is my favorite mode. It brings in a lot of fun because you can steal items from other players. It really encourages you to interact with all the different like with with everyone in order to like prevent them from getting all the items or you can even like form pairs to team up against others. Uh I don't know. I that's my favorite one. If you have friends that also like Dokkan Kingdom, I highly recommend trying out the the shopping mode. That one's the best one. But they're all fun. Right, I should have explained Dokkan Kingdom. Yeah, it's basically Mario Party, but with uh there aren't stars, but it's it's money and uh, or gold, I guess they call it. And you can like interact with the players on the board. And there's like there aren't really mini games. There's events and whatnot, but there but the goal is to go around defeating monsters. It's it's also an RPG. So it's an RPG element, at least in the sense of leveling up. And you, there's different versus modes. Some can basically be endless. 999 weeks. It goes each each turn is like a day. 999 weeks, unlimited, basically unlimited mode. That's that's fun. <laughs> and yeah, however, you can be mean to your to each other. Or you can be nice to each other. It really just depends on how you want to play. You could all sort of agree to not just, like, go attack each other as soon as you get a broken weapon and you're suddenly overpowered. You know. Or you can, or you can. You can play however way you want. Oh, there's one more thing for Dope Fun Kingdom that I highly recommend doing. I thought of a fun, like, way... There's a... Okay, well, let me back up. There's an item space on the board that's a red treasure box. Basically, it has, like, one or two awesome rewards, and the rest of them are negative rewards. So, like, you know, you take damage, you lose a bunch of money, you lose items, etc. But if you do, and it, it randomly picks one, but if you get lucky and you get one of the good rewards, you can get, like, an insanely broken weapon early on and just completely crush the rest of the game, assuming you don't lose that weapon. Or like a magic spell, or a shield, or something. Tons of fun. Um, but most people avoid it because it's such a gamble. Like, why would you risk dying when you're so far into the game? Well, don't worry. Don't think about it too much any longer. Because here's a here's a fun uh, mode I came up with. The mode is. When you roll, when you spin the spinner and you you can move around, you can press Y to see where your available spaces are that you can go to. You can go to. Um, if and then the the mode that I came up with is if you can land on a red space, you must land on a red space. So that way, it's not even a question of if I should. It's you have to. And it is so fun to play that way. It is chaos mode. Yes. It is so fun. We've had a lot of fun playing with that mode. And surprisingly, you can actually live for quite a while if all you do is land on red. It's actually pretty impressive how long you can survive if you have to land on red. And you end up getting like ridiculous combinations of weapons and swords and magic and, uh, and items as well. It's a ton of fun. Highly recommend playing it. <laughs> You can land on red, you must land on red. Oh, and if you have items that allow you, like, there's uh, crystals that allow you to choose how many spaces you can go. You could either 
force players to use the crystals. Like if a red space is two away and you have a two crystal, which allows you to move exactly two spaces, you can make a house rule where you, you can either try playing with, you must use the two crystal if you can, or you could try without it. After a lot of testing, I found it was more fun to not force players to use crystals if they are able to land on a red space. So, but if you if you want to add that extra element of chaos, then uh, that is an option. Anyways, try it out next time you play Dokuban Kingdom, whether it's the original or the uh, or the Switch version. I think it's fun. Kirby Air Ride, also a great game. Played a lot of Kirby Air Ride as well with friends. Love going for the Hydra or the... Uh, what was the other one? There are two, there are two uh, ships that... Or whatever they are. Dragoon, Dragoon, yeah, yeah. Dragoon and Hydra, yeah. How could I forget? Those were so much fun to try to get. Those, that was my favorite part. Oh, what do we have here? Ah, oh, goldfish. All right, we have found three pop-eyed goldfish, three regular goldfish. That is actually the same odds as finding one guppy. Dang. We have officially reached the bad luck mode. We've officially reached bad luck. It's taken about an hour to reach bad luck. So, that's pretty good info. On average, it should take about an hour to get a guppy at 1 in 600. If uh, if that logic makes sense. Okay. Okay. About 1 in 600 uh, are the odds, and about an hour to get it on average. Hmm. That's actually not as bad as I was thinking. I was thinking on average it would take like 3 to 4 hours. But I guess with this tech to... Uh, filter out tiny fish before you even catch it. That that time does add up pretty quickly. Cool. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? I did it! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Yes! Yes, I did it! <laughs> One in 600 guppy! Whoa! There it is! Just like that! Wow! Wow, we're moving along! We're moving into May, or I guess April, but May fish! Whoa! <laughs> Let's go! You, that's insane! Well, it, it all worked out, didn't it? Took about an hour. It all worked out. Wow. Well, now I'm now I'm ecstatic. Now I'm hype. We're moving into uh, moving into uh, uh, Mayfish. So we'll be going to April twenty sixth. That's crazy. Yes. All right. April twenty sixth. We will have three fish to catch. At this time. Yeah, it took an hour. Nice. April 26th. Go back a year. So, we will start with looking for a frog. That will be the new first fish we're going to go for. The frog comes out in May. And the earliest we can catch it is April 26th. So, that's what we're going for now. There are two other fish we will be catching at this time. One of them is going to be the second hardest fish, which is the angelfish. In addition to that, we'll also be catching a catfish. These flowers are kind of in the way, not gonna lie. So, frog. The strat for the frog is we're looking for tiny fish. The frog is normally a 33% chance, I think. So it's actually closer to like one in eight. So 
we'll go for like 15 fish or so. And every tiny fish we find, we'll cast the bait on it. And frogs have a 180 degree vision for both sides. So effectively a 360 degree vision, which means they will go after the bait even if they're not looking at it. And they also have a very long distance to go after the bait. So you can cast this rod basically anywhere in the pond and it will uh, it will go for it. So one more tiny fish and we'll reset because we are still looking for that one in six roll. The other tiny fish we see currently are killer fish, which are 12 for sins. So we're looking high odds there. We did not get the one in six. One more tiny fish. No big deal. Shouldn't take too long to find ourselves the frog, and then we'll move on to angelfish catching. Cool. Not bad. We'll go back to exactly midnight each time for the heck of it. Cool. All right. We are now we are now officially about halfway through this challenge, I would say. It's all going to come down to the angelfish and arowana. They're going to be interesting fish to go for. I'm so glad I didn't find a shiny killifish before a shiny guppy. I would have been a little sad. That was great. Worked out. So, anyways, yes, we got the guppy in March 27th. 1 in 600. Absolute crazy find. Took me an average amount of time to find it. And, um, yeah. Very happy about that. The frog does have a sound effect in this game. That is that is true, actually. However, it doesn't always instantly croak when you enter the acre. So, uh, it's best to not, uh, you know, rely on that strat. But you are correct. That is a strat you can do. I'm actually tempted to go down... Yeah, I'm actually going to change which pond I'm going to for the frog. Because of all the flowers around that pond, I don't really feel like scaring them off. Or it's carrying off the flowers. Um, destroying the flowers. So what I can do is... This pond's actually possibly faster anyways. Yeah, this pond's good. So this will be the frog pond. Oh! Oh, we did it! We got the frog! Let's go! That was easy. Look at that poison dart frog. Look at it. That is a poison dart frog. Shiny frog right there. Look at these shiny fish. They're so cool. <laughs> No, do not kiss the poisonous frog. Wow, we got the frog. Okay, so here's the game plan now. Now we save. Now we save and continue because um, we want to save this fish value, this fish term value. In case, I don't know, power goes out, something tragic happens. We got the, we got the five. We rolled the five. It only took two tries. RNG is more favorable to me today, that's for sure. And we will only be fishing at midnight, so we are at the current time we want to be at. April 26th, 12 a.m. Bright and early. Well, it's not bright. Very early. And now it's time for catfish and angelfish. Catfish are large, angelfish are small. Catfish are going to be like... 1 in 100, maybe? 1 in 150? One I'm going to look up the AI for the catfish and see if there's any good way to tell if I uh, found it. 
Any good way to distinguish it, I should say, from the other large fish. And small fish, we're looking for, not this, but I do need a small bass. So I'm going to catch it, I guess, anyways. Catfish actually have a... No, there, there's no good way to tell if I got found a catfish. They have the same bite range. Well, that's not a catfish, so... They have the same range as Barbel Steed and, uh, and Carp. But we can use similar strategies to distinguish the angelfish from the other small fish. Like we did with the loach. I'm going to confirm that. Yeah, that's correct. Angelfish are going to have the same properties as freshwater gobies. But... I can tell them apart from... Oh, what do we have here? Freshwater goby? Yeah. I can tell them apart from... Uh, crucian carps and small bass. And cherry salmons, I guess. So there we go. That's the plan now. It'll be nice to get the catfish out of the way as well. Because then we'd only need to focus on the angelfish afterwards. I don't think this is a catfish, but I'm going to catch it anyways. No. Oh wait, do Barbel Steed not have 50, 50 um, AI? Oh, they don't. Oh, wait, what about carps? Carps also don't. Oh my goodness, I could actually tell catfish apart. Oh, this could be a catfish. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Yo! We got we found the catfish like it was nothing. Let's go. We're zooming. Alright, I'm gonna save. Like I as soon as I figured out what the uh the properties of the catfish were, and how I could tell it apart from the other fish, I found it. <laughs> I didn't even need to know. I just... I would have caught that normally anyways. Wow. We're getting super lucky. Nice shiny catfish. These strats are working. Yes, they are. Incredible RNG. Alright. Angelfish time. Well, it's going to have a similar strat as the loach. So, uh, but we will have more small fish. Oh, we got the, we got a fish over here, don't we? Yeah, we do. We have, um, we have the freshwater goby, which has the same properties or the same AI as the angelfish. So keep that in mind. We'll be finding a good amount of freshwater gobies. Surprised I haven't found a small bass yet. Anyways, you don't want to miss the angelfish find. I promise you the angelfish is super cool. The shiny version of it. You do not want to miss it. But it's a 1 in 600. So we'll see how that goes. Could take, I mean, it could take all stream, or I could get it really soon. Either way is fine with me. Somehow have yet to find a small bass. Now I'm sure I'll find them soon enough. Somehow found a catfish. The one in like 75 catfish before I found a small bass. Small bass do- yeah, of course small bass exist. Oh, it's because- because we're in April, so the Crucian Carp is actually- I'm gonna pull up the statistics. 9 p.m. yeah, okay. Crucian Carp um, is four times more likely than the small bass right now. 
But that's it. We found like seven Crucian Carps at this point. There we go. There's our there's our small bass. All right. Now we can start implementing the strat. That is not an angelfish, but let me confirm it. Yeah. <clears throat> So, we're working with 20% chance for Crucian Carps. Um, 5% chance for Small Bass. 3% chance for Freshwater Goby. And a 1 in 600 chance for an Angelfish. <laughs> Fun. So this is almost the exact same statistics as the guppy. The only difference is we're going to be finding a few more freshwater gobies than we will goldfish plus Popeye goldfish combined. But actually not too much different. This is only slightly less likely or slightly longer on average to find than the guppy. Only slightly on average. So, it's still the second hardest fish to find, but only a little harder than the guppy. And we found the guppy today. So, we do know this is doable. Oh? Freshwater guppy. Okay. And... Wait, are there no cherry salmon in April? A sworn. Oh, duh. <laughs> there are, but not at midnight. We're good. Duh, of course. So we don't have to deal with cherry salmon. Because it is midnight, not 4 a.m. Cherry salmon are not out between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. Very convenient for us. So, on average, we're going to be finding about seven or eight freshwater gobies. Wait, no. Is that right? Is that it? Let me, hold on, let me do the math. So, if it's a three divided by 36 is a one in 12. 600. Oh, well, I guess then I should say, um, multiply by 18. Okay, never mind. We'll be finding on average about 18 freshwater gobies. I think. Is that right? I don't know. I'm not going to think about it too much. It's very good to know the odds. Because then you sort of know what to work with what kind of like time commitment you're you're thinking about for a, a challenge it's very good to know these odds and to be able to calculate them without too much effort but anyways thank you does come into does come into in handy yes expectations are is very valuable for commitment time that is correct All right. Oh, actually, I'm not sure yet. Wait, no, my math was right. On average, is was my math right, or is it one in nine? Nine freshwater gobies per angelfish, or eighteen freshwater gobies per angelfish on average. It's 18. Okay. Yeah, 18. Okay, okay, yeah. I think I actually got insane insane luck with the guppy. I actually think I got better luck than I thought I did. Eight 
Eight on average, eighteen freshwater gobies per angelfish. I've caught two so far. Wait, hold on. Actually, the guppy may be harder to find than the angelfish, slightly. Because small fish are going to be 20 plus 5 plus 3. Wait, yeah! The guppy's actually harder than the angelfish. Because I had to filter through more tiny fish for the guppy. While for the angelfish, I don't have to filter through as many small fish. Because on average, I'll be finding 28 small fish per 100 fish. As opposed to the guppy, which was 37 tiny fish before uh, per 100 fish. So actually, this should take, on average, less time than the guppy. The angelfish just feels like such a massive hurdle in, like, goldenrod speedruns. It, 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 I'm a little biased towards it. But if you run the math... This, uh, depend well, since I caught the, since I was going for the guppy when I was, when I was dealing with the loaches, the angelfish is actually going to take less time on average to find. Cool. So we really got the second hardest fish out of the way already. This is the third hardest fish. And there are strats with the arowana that... May even make the guppy the hardest fish. At least the one that takes the most time to catch on average. We'll see. We, we, we gotta get to the angelfish first. Gotta focus on the angelfish. But it's possible we already got the hardest fish out of the way. Oh yeah, Golden Run, it's all about the route and the strats in order to get a, a fast time. That's that's everything. Um, the newest route that Drewpag worked on and then I optimized, he pretty much, he, he got really close to getting a perfect route in my opinion, uh, but I, I optimized it a little bit. That route was, in my opinion, revolutionary for getting all these really fast goldenrod times that people have been getting lately. Because it, it, it reduces so much RNG in the route. Specifically with June at, like, uh, 3 a.m. or whenever. Anytime between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. Being able to get 1 in 15 odds for both the angelfish and the piranha. Such a huge route improvement. Honestly, that but that all came into play that we even knew that was possible thanks to Kyler getting information about like very detailed information about all the fish. We were able to get a a more optimized route for getting the angelfish and piranha. Yeah, but yeah, strats come into play for sure in Goldenrod. All the different um bite, like, uh, angles, especially when it comes to 360-degree vision. Frog, crawfish, and piranha. But yeah. Route and strats are everything for Goldenrod. Then it's just rolling the dice enough until you get lucky. And also, you know, catching fish. Not missing fish. Also important... I don't know. I don't know what this fish is. I'm just going to catch it. Okay. Now I know. I'm still a fan of my goldenrod route, even though no one runs my route, despite it being the fastest time. Um... I like the October strats. 
no one else seems to like it. I don't think anyone else really fully appreciates the October strats. Memory card sizes, it's not that they're safer than others, it's some are faster than others. The larger the memory card block, the faster it'll save and load the game. So it'll it adds up to quite a bit of time throughout the run, depending on how many times you save and quit. That's all. They're just simply listed on the leaderboards in case, I mean, for whatever reason. I don't know why they're listed on the leaderboards, to be honest. Alright. Freshwater Gobi number three. Oh, the corruption. Yeah, I mean, the larger blocks are more prone to corruption. That is true. Hey, what's up, Bong? Uh, so yeah, the larger memory cards are more prone to corruption, but they also have faster save and load time. Those two pieces of information probably go hand in hand. So if you're planning on committing to a long-term Animal Crossing town, I highly recommend using a 59 block memory card. Much less prone to corruption. Uh, it will take longer to save and load, but if you're just casually playing, that shouldn't really matter. Yeah, don't use your speedrunning memory card for challenges or casual gameplays unless speed is a factor. Like an important factor. And just know there's always a risk for corruption with large 1019 block memory cards. Even 251 block memory cards um, are prone to corruption as well. I don't know the exact you know, whether 1019 block memory cards are more than 251, but I do know that 59 block memory cards, I've never personally had one corrupt on me. But I've had, I've had a 251 block memory card corrupt on me, not for Animal Crossing, but just in general. And I've had three or four 1019 block memory cards now corrupt. So, there we go. Get the cheaper memory card. It'll be worth it for your casual gameplay. Oh, I didn't want to catch this. Whatever. What am I catching the pale chub, by the way? Oh, that's a year-round fish. Um, right. I guess I can catch that anytime. <laughs> Same with the uh, the brook trout and the bluegill. Dang. Next, um, I guess I'll just catch them when I get the giant snakehead. I just got to remember to do that. Not a big deal, I just gotta remember that. Otherwise, we'll just go to a random day and catch them. Not a big deal. So, if I catch the bass right now, um, and then the angelfish, I'll have 12 fish, which I can donate to Blathers. That's probably a dace. Yeah. Which I can donate to Blathers. And then um, I will only have 12 fish left after that. Oh, wait. Never mind. I'm, I'm overthinking it. It's not a big deal.
It's whatever. No need to overthink. Just catch an angelfish. All good. Alright, I really need to start implementing the strat I was using to catch the guppy. I don't know why I'm not doing that. Time to implement Operation Filterfish. Alright, well, let's just confirm this is not a freshwater goby or angelfish. Alright, we're good. Filterfish. It's time to filterfish. Guppy strats. Well, now they're angelfish strats. Okay, that was not filterfish strat. It's too close. Well, too far away, not sure, probably not, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about small fish that are slightly different than tiny fish that make it feel weird to, to implement fish filter strats. I don't know why. At least for angelfish. Piranha strat, of course. Easy. That's there's no way it's a freshwater goby or an angelfish. Cool. I'm working on the strats. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, not sure. Let's see. Okay, well, now I Hello, sandbag. You made it. Welcome. Happy normal day to you. Yeah, this is weird. There, There's something different about filtering out small fish versus tiny fish. At least for me. Feels different. Nope. Okay, I filtered that one. I got that. I got that one figured out. All right. Let's just confirm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's probably because their size contributes towards like how far away. They'll go towards the bait, and it just feels different. I think it's I think it's just that. Like, it's the center of the fish that goes, like, the distance from the center of the fish, maybe? I guess I'm not 100% sure about that. It feels different than the tiny fish, that's for sure. I mean, it's not bad to catch every fish, I find. Yeah, I mean, it's slow. I mean, it is. It's slow. But, I mean, I'm catching the fish, so... An angel fish? Oh, at least I didn't scare it off, right? Okay, I think I'm figuring it out, though. Just have to recalibrate. Okay. I think I got it.
Well, I don't think this is a good fish. What do we have here? Oh, this is either a freshwater goby or an angelfish. A 1 in 18 chance it's an angelfish. Pretty sure. Oh my goodness! Let's go! I did it! <laughs> Let's go! There's our shiny angelfish right there. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Oops. Do you like the uh, shiny angelfish, everyone? Wow. What a find. That's insane. Alright, RNG is completely turned around today. Look at that. Let's just look at it one more time. <laughs> look at our shiny fish that we've caught recently. That's crazy. Dang. That is so lucky. Oh my goodness. Alright. We're cruising. Next up is May 27th. We'll be going to 12 a.m. for this batch of fish. Yes, 12 a.m. The strat, I think, is to look for eels at 12 a.m. I think that's going to be the strat. But that took less than... That took 30 minutes to find an angelfish and a catfish. That's crazy. May 27th, 2010. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, yes. Wow. We're flying through these 1 in 600s like they're nothing. So let me pull up the odds for an eel now. Um, June odds, of course. Because this, it, it's not going to be easy to find the 1 in 6 now. Well, I mean, it could be easy, but it's not going to be as easy to determine. So, June from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Eels are 17.6% chance. Normally. Um, so, they're actually going to turn into 2% chances. Well, 3% chances. I'm almost tempted to do a giant catfish check. Because if my best odds are 3% chances, there are... Uh, let's see, how many? 1, 2, 3. There are 3 fish I could currently find at the moment. Uh, that are seasonal, of course. And they are eel, giant catfish, and piranha. At least at midnight. Piranha. That'd be silly to try to figure out if I got the one in six base off of piranha. It's either giant catfish, which become a 1.7%. But at least I know if I find a giant catfish. Because it'll be large. Or I have to fish for eels. Filter through these medium fish. And if we're looking for a 3% chance. And if it's a medium fish, it's a 
10% chance? Yeah. I should, I should search for, like, I don't know. Quite a few fish until I can determine if I got the one in six or not. This will be the hardest one in six to determine, I think, for the rest of the run. Actually, no, even throughout the entire run, this is the hardest one in six to, to get. This is the most time consuming on average. Because in June, we'll have sweet fish. And that will be... That will be fast. Here, let's do a piranha check. That would have been something. <laughs> we'll catch three more medium fish, or check three more medium fish, and then we'll try again. I'm not even going to bother with small fish, because the odds it's a piranha are 1 in 600. But the odds it's an, an eel are 1 in 30. Roughly. If it's a medium fish. So, I can do the strat here. I can do a, an angle check. Or this is probably a bass. Wait a second. No way this is an eel. No, there's no way. This is just a troll bass. It happens. There's no way this is an eel. Yeah, that's a bass. I'll catch it, though. Yeah, okay, cool. Two more medium fish, then we'll reset. One more. Got a roll of one and six. No big deal. I guess it's not much different than the uh, loach, but that did take a while. I can't believe I got a guppy and an angelfish in less than two hours today, as well as a catfish. You know, crawfish, killfish, frog. Crazy. Yeah, this completely makes up for all the bad RNG throughout the rest of this run. Completely makes up for it. All of it. Oops. Dang it, I got the uh, fish over here. Mm 
I think 10 medium fish is pretty good to test. Yeah, we'll go 10 medium fish. And we'll do 12. We'll do 12. Three. Four. Five. I guess once you get a strat down, it's not too bad. Oh wait, who am I kidding? The hardest one in six check was the sea bass, of course. Right. Three hours sea bass. Crazy. Sea bass really was the boss of this challenge. That's that is so funny. I don't know, I haven't got... I, I, yeah, I shouldn't speak too soon. Oops, I don't want this. Haven't got the arowana or the piranha. Or the giant snakehead, giant catfish, eel. Etc. Oh, what do we have here? This is either a troll bass right outside the vision range, or it's an eel. Ah, it's a troll bass right outside the vision range. It's fine. No, I caught all the trash as well. I got the can, boot, and tire. They're currently chilling in my letters. So I got those out of the way. <laughs> the tire strat worked for the coelacanth. medium fish and we'll call that a good enough check. Oh, the Arowan is going to actually for sure be the toughest because Dace are super common right now. Dace and Arowana have the same vision. So Arowana basically just catch every fish I find. Every medium. Not quite, but close. Yeah, Arowana is going to be an insanely... Tough fish. I'm gonna just need to get some, some just some good, good old RNG, which the angelfish surprisingly was not an issue. Gonna need that for the arowana as well. Once we're through the arowana, though, um, that's pretty much the last big hurdle. The rest of the challenge won't take, on average, a very long time. We'll have to roll the 1 and 6 three more times after this one. So four more 1 and 6s. Yeah, it's pretty cool how the camera's pulled like that, isn't it? I agree. I'm trying to think what else does that. Um, yeah, like, with, like I think the intro when you're getting your house from Nook pulls a camera like that. Not quite the same way. 
But like, a straight up right in your face like that? I think that's, other than saving, yeah, I think that's the only time. In fact, that camera perspective is probably going to be very useful for future Animal Crossing VR. So we can we can use that camera perspective. Get first person. Probably. We'll see. One day. Well, the thing is, CRQ, is you're correct. Things do look tilted, because things are already tilted. Because it to make it look not tilted from your top-down camera. But we're going to have to rework a lot of things for VR, because most of the things around the overworld are 2D. Like, these flowers are 2D, the trees are 2D. So we'll have to implement actual 3D models of it. And, uh, and so that will just end up reworking a lot of these things around town anyways. But yeah, you're right. But we're we're going to have workarounds. Uh, they won't be easy, but we'll implement workarounds. <clears throat> At least that's the plan. <clears throat> All right, not a daze, that's good. Oh, it was a bass. Dang, that re I really thought that was an eel. It really felt like an eel. But it was just outside the... Uh, the range. Multiple times. This is not an eel. I did not expect to be... I did not expect to make it to May today. Alright. Not a dace. Prob probably a bass, but we'll see. Yeah, it's a bass. Um, I really should reset. We'll do one more medium. I think I've gone through enough medium fish by this point. Kind of zoned out for a second. Stop counting. Okay. Nintendo. I think it's possible to shake trees during this particular Resetti interaction. And you could find bees, potentially. So you could have bees chase you.
during this interaction. Oh, I said this last time. I have tested having bees face me while I'm um, talking to Nook at the... Or not talking to Nook, but like getting my house for the first time. And it works. It's really funny. This is not an eel, most likely. Who needs the corner acre? This acre's great. All the fish are spawning here. Wow. Lots of bass. All right, to the corner acre. Okay, or or not? Not yet. Oops. Now another bass. Another bass. It's actually a lot of bass in a row, considering how common dace are at the moment. Another bass? Six in a row? Yeah. Don't know, don't care, it's not an eel. Seven medium fish. Oops. Alright, it's whatever. Eight. Yeah, rest in peace. That was for sure an eel, yep. Rip. Alright, I'm not counting that towards the 12 medium fish I'm, I go for. Nine, or is that eight? This will be nine. We'll just say this is nine. Oh, don't want it. Not Neil. Alright, three more. Two more. Ah, that was a little far away. Probably not the most efficient. Ah, that's a bass. One more. Yeah, the point of resetting is to re-roll the fish term index. There is a value between 0 and 6. Well, it uh, it's it's never going to be 6. So effectively 0, 1, 2, 3, or 5. And you need to roll a 5 for this to be possible. I found a strat where resetting after changing the term um, will allow you to re-roll the term index each time. As opposed to going to a different term and then 
Oh, did I not say four? One, two, three, four, or five. And then, um... It will, uh... Instead of going to a different term and then going back to the one you're interested in, instead you can simply go from one term to another one, and as long as you don't save in the new term, then you can reroll the term index every time you change acres. But you, all you have to do is go through resetting. So it saves about a minute. And the only way to know if you rolled a 5 is to catch fish and see if you have caught seasonal fish or out of season fish. And once you do, then you can save and that fish term index will be saved in your save file. So you don't have to re-roll it until you change terms, if that makes sense. I think I'm getting better at explaining it. It's It was kind of confusing to explain at first. But I think I've improved. I just have to remember uh, the, the number 4 as well. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. <laughs> right, 2. Once you've saved your term value, the term index value, um, then it will it will save the save file, so you don't have to roll it again within the same term. There are two terms per month. Uh, the first or the first 15 days of the month, and then day 16 to the end of the month is the second term. As long as you stay within one of those terms, you don't have to reroll the fish term index after you save. So, which is why I was able to get, once I found a term index of 5 for February, I was able to catch the uh, the March fish, the loach, cherry salmon, rainbow trout, on February 24th. And then the barred knife jaw should, should have been possible to catch on the 24th as well, but there appears to be some glitch with the barred knife jaw, where you can only catch it on the earliest on the 26th. But this, the term index uh, value was saved from the 24th to the 26th since I stayed within that uh, February term. So I was able to keep the term index value of 5 over the course of multiple days within the same term. Oh, I don't. That's a large fish. But, as far as I'm aware, that's the only situation where that's going to really come into play. So, if it comes into play at uh, other times, that's, that means we, have, we will have encountered a problem. <laughs> Alright, well, this is probably a bass. Yeah, it's a bass, but I'll catch it anyways. Correct. I, I don't actually have to go back to midnight when I reset. It's actually not necessary. The only reason why I go back to midnight is because it's fun to fish right at the very first moment the seasonal fish can come out. It's actually slower to do that. But I'm adding on the extra time for fun. Alright, I don't think this is a daze. It's a good start. That's bass. Yeah, this game has great music. We're really, uh, we're really uh, getting a, a good taste of the midnight music for this challenge. We're spending... What is that noise? You guys hear that? What is that? It's in the game. Has it always been? Has that noise always been that way? Have we always heard that? I, it's, I mean, no, it... Was that just the water noise that for some reason... I latched onto? <laughs> After nine hours, <laughs> found a different. I 
I guess. I guess that's all it was. Huh. That's so weird. I think it's louder than it normally is right now. No, it's for sure louder than it normally is. I don't think we're crazy. That's that's weird. What a weird realization. Well, whatever. We're resetting it. Really, CRQ? That is weird. That is really weird. Do you have any more details to see if it's possible to repeat? I've never encountered that before. Was it raining the previous day? Oh, this is Wild World. Okay, never mind. I don't know much about Wild World or its glitches. Still cool, though. You know what? I'm wondering if that was a mole cricket we heard. I'm wondering if we actually heard a mole cricket in the distance. No, I hear the water now. Never mind. That's for sure water. It's just noticeable for some reason. Well, now we can't unhear it. <laughs> nice, Casey. That's pretty cool. You're hearing you're hearing a bell ringing sound. Shouldn't be hearing a bell ringing sound. Oh, unless it's a mole cricket. No, I don't want this. <laughs> mole crickets. Wait, are they still out? May mole crickets. Yeah, I think they are. I think that's what you're hearing. Oh my goodness, what is this? Probably a bass. Definitely not a dace. Oh? Is this just another troll bass? I'm still not sure. Yeah, it's just a troll bass. Bass. Uh, 
you were confused about the 2030 limit? Yeah, it is kind of weird. I mean, it is kind of weird they set that as a limit. There's really no reason they needed to do that. Like, the GameCube clock can go up to 2100. Um, I think the only reason why they did that is because they were too lazy to program Harvest Moon uh, Festival for 100 years. I guess? That's really the only reason why I could think they would do that. Because those are all hard-coded dates. Since there's no mathematical equation to determine when the full moon nearest the fall equinox occurs. At least as far as I'm aware. So they have hard-coded dates for the Harvest Moon Festival. And that's it. That's the only reason why I can think of they would go up to 2030 and not, not beyond. Maybe they are also like, all right, 2030, it's time to play other games. <laughs> Maybe. Nah, save data doesn't swell up. The save data file size remains the same if you played for one day or one century. That's not an issue. Because all the memory is pre-allocated. So it's not that. I think it's really just the hard-coded dates for the Harvest Moon Festival. Who, yeah, who would own a GameCube in 2030? Now, the save data, it doesn't, like, it's kind of fancy in the sense that it doesn't, like, keep track of, I don't know, yearly, like, what occurred on year one or year two or year three. They actually programmed it in such a way that um, that's not a, it's not an issue. The only, there's another possible factor, and it could have to do with time, because villagers keep track of how many weeks it's been since you've greeted them. I'm trying to think of if time is would be an or would be a factor because it goes up to an integer a 32-bit integer and it keeps track of time that way i think that goes up for thousands of years so i, I don't think that's an issue either oh i was going to shake a tree that one. And, like, when you write information in the diary, it actually uh, only keeps track of one year. So, like, let's say you write an entry in March of 2004. That entry is going to still be there in March of 2005. It is kind of sad. When I discovered that back in the day, I was actually kind of sad about that as well. And it only keeps track of uh, time you've played within one year. Oh, wait. Wait, no, hold on. Is this... I forget, is this capital or, capitalized or not? Okay. It was... It's like all the keys that keep track of when you've played. Those are only good for the previous year. It only keeps track of one year worth of data, really, for the diary. You know, now that I think about it, I don't actually have every single Rossetti, uh, like, phrase 
that he tells you to say. I don't I don't have them all memorized. I don't know what they all are. I'm pretty sure I've seen and typed all of them. But I, I actually can't be sure. I have not confirmed that. Now I kind of want to confirm that. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Lexi. We only have seven more years of Animal Crossing time. Beyond that, you have to keep your GameCube on non-stop. The game clock will still run up to 2100, I think. But as soon as you turn off your GameCube and you reload your town after the year 2030, it will always revert back to the year 2030. So if you manage to keep your game running into 2033 and you finally save and quit and you reload your town, it will be the year 2030. But if you can keep your GameCube or Wii or whatever running non-stop without losing power beyond 2030, then uh, you'll be able to play indefinitely, or at least till 2100. I'm not sure what happens after that, to be real honest. When the time comes, I'm kind of thinking about trying to do that. See how long I can leave an Animal Crossing game running. I have backup batteries as well. So even if my power goes out, I've got about 30 minutes worth of backup batteries. Like, no surges are going to turn off the GameCube. <laughs> I'm thinking about trying it. See if I can have the last remaining Animal Crossing game file beyond 2030 without mods and whatnot. Seven years from now. Got lots of time to think about it and plan. The year is 2057. <laughs> this Animal Crossing GameCube game file is, has still been running this entire time. Humanity seems lost. <laughs> After the uh, AI apocalypse. And yet, there's one shining, shining beacon of hope. <laughs> Animal Cross. Yeah, you could definitely test beyond 2100 without too much trouble. I just haven't personally done it yet. Interestingly enough, though, when I got a GameCube from Kyler, the GameCube clock was set to beyond 2100. I don't know how that happened. It was like 2130 something. It was very weird, because if you try to manually change it, you can only go up to 2099. So I don't, I don't know how that happened. Um, I thought about just, like, not messing with it. And just like, alright, well, cool GameCube, and somehow beyond the allotted amount of years, don't know how that happened, I'll just leave it that way. But I wanted to use it, so it's no longer that way. But it was. And I'm sure it's not terribly complicated to get that to happen again, if it can just randomly happen. Nothing, I did try running Animal Crossing with that GameCube year. And I just, it was just 2030. Same as if you try running it beyond 2030 for the GameCube clock normally. It was odd though. So maybe you can even go beyond 2100. Who knows? You just can't manually set your GameCube clock beyond that. You know what? Maybe. Maybe, just maybe, this GameCube was set to the year 2099. Oh, you know, that would have been 20 years ago. I don't know how, I don't know how it happened. But if you set your GameCube clock to 2099, it will still count up <laughs> beyond 2099. Or I don't know how long. Maybe something like that happened. I don't know.
I'm having a real hard time getting this one in six. This eel. I would have rather taken longer to get the frog or crawfish for the one in six than the eel. But whatever. Alright, two more medium fish, then we'll reset. One. Yeah, I think the Nintendo 64 version had to do some weird hack to get the uh, time element to work. But I'll be honest, I don't know exactly how it works for the Nintendo 64 version. Oh wow, I spent eight minutes catching medium fish. Not bad. Well, I know for sure there's no eel. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a battery in the cartridge. That's right. That's right. Because the GameCube has a battery. However, the battery is only necessary to keep the clock running when your GameCube is off. This GameCube I'm running on actually doesn't have a functioning battery. But as long as the game's on, then it works. To keep it for time to pass, normally. And, it, and the game will just um, start off at whatever the time was before. The odds for the eel are uh, 3% for any fish. Specifically for a medium fish, it's like 10%. So I'm catching about 15, or I'm catching like 12 to 15 medium fish per, uh, per, per attempt. Oh, this is not a bass, oh, it's an, or it's not a dace, it, it's a bass. Right. Yeah, the battery not working is actually convenient for some of these challenges. I agree. That's why I'm not, like, super bummed about it. Got a brand new GameCube from... Uh wherever but the people didn't care to replace the battery however it's kind of convenient for me for these animal crossing challenges whenever i choose to do a casual playthrough of the game again i'll definitely want to get the battery fixed Resetting knows how many times you've reset because it actually saves data to your memory card um, if you don't save the game. It actually has a check for that. Oops. So, like, basically, if uh, it checks if you had saved the game, and then when you load your town, it'll check if that value is set to 1. And if it wasn't set to 1, it assumes you reset. And then it'll increment another value, which is how many times Rossetti has talked to you, or how many times you've reset. And then after a while, it will loop back, because um, it will reset, or it will repeat the Rossetti dialogue. It doesn't ever increment inf infinitely. It will, if it, once it reaches like a value of, I think like 10, it'll reset to 8. So it, it'll always loop, and go through those same three dialogues once you've reached the quote-unquote end of the Rossetti Dialogues. But yeah, whenever you save the game, it'll set a value to your save file. And if that value isn't set upon loading your town again, then it will know you've reset. Oh, what do we have here? Probably a troll bass, but yeah, it's a troll bass. We'll catch it anyways. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, and then it, it'll obviously set that value to zero 
after you load your town. And then it saves that value uh, without having to save your game. I think that's how it works. I asked Kyler about it once, and I think that's what he told me when you looked at the game code. <clears throat> yeah, when I was a kid and the power went out during a thunderstorm once and Rossetti showed up, I'm like, no, Rossetti, you don't understand. There's another world outside this one that powers this world and it in the the power went out in that world so it's i didn't reset it was not intentional i swear how do i explain this to you <laughs> like a likely story <laughs> i was the same way like no resetti no you don't understand I, for one, like Mr. Rossetti. It encourages you to try to play the game without resetting. Which, from a casual perspective, is, uh, is a good way to play. From a challenge perspective, I, I could care less. <laughs> but yeah, he was a little brutal at times. He does call you an idiot after a while. It's not just a one-off thing. He calls you an... I, I said you couldn't care less. It was the noise filter thing that cut off the end of it. Um, anyways. He does call you an idiot after a while. And, uh, and a bunch. So. Does he compliment your eyes? Oh yeah, I guess he does, doesn't he? I like Rossetti, personally. I was never offended by him as a kid. I mean, I was sad whenever my power went out and I had to talk to him, and I couldn't tell him that the power simply went out. But I never got, like, offended or was or cried over it. I wouldn't blame you if you did. I just personally never did. But, I mean, yeah, I get it. If you're, if, if you're a literal five-year-old and a video game character that's rated E for everyone is calling you an idiot at the age of five... Yeah, it's not... It's not good. <laughs> it's uh, it's understandable. Only as a kid. Alright, one more medium fish right here. Then we reset. Oh yeah, reset equals death. <laughs> equals skull. That, that's a fun one. I spent seven minutes? Dang. Where's this one and six at? Come on, this is like attempt eight. All that good RNG is going away. One of my GameCubes, the laser, stopped reading discs as well. It happens. But the nice thing about Animal Crossing is once you've loaded up your game, you can actually take out the disc entirely. You can even take out the memory card. It's only when you need to, when when it's time to save the game, do you need to put all that stuff back in. So, when the year 2030 comes and I get Animal Crossing going, I can immediately take out the disc and memory card as soon as I load up town.
Oh yeah, that's right. And if you take out the disc during the title screen, you get to hear the entire theme. It doesn't loop. And there is more to listen to than what you'd normally hear if you leave the disc in. Which is pretty cool in my opinion. A little fun Easter egg. I'm not going to go catch another guppy. <laughs> You know what? I'll go back and catch a kill a fish in the river. We'll do that. Basically catching a guppy. Well, there's more song because I imagine they completed the song, but for the sake of the demo, title screen, they needed to loop it. So they just looped it at some point. Which was not at, not at the end. Because it actually just, like, ends. Uh, like, it, it fades out, you know. The music slowly fades out, is what I'm trying to say. I guess it just didn't work well with the demo screen fading out, I guess. They could have composed it in such a way that, that it worked, or they could have changed the demo screen so that it faded out with the music, but they probably made a decision the demo screen was lasting too long. And they wanted to cycle through the demo screen characters quicker than the song cycled through. Yeah, I don't know if it's longer on Dubutsu no Mori. Not sure about that. Alright, I'm ready to start. I'm ready to start getting these, uh... These one and sixes any moment now. I'm ready to find an eel, and therefore a giant catfish. Uh, and an arowana and a piranha. No, I don't want this. Probably a bass. Nah, I'm not a huge fan of fourth wall dialogues. Rossetti kind of is a fourth wall in a way. Not a deal. Oh, the New Horizons villagers hearing the music. I don't know. I think... I think, uh, infrequently, they're kind of fun. Oh, it depends on the situation. Ugh. New Horizons was great. I enjoyed my thousand hours I put into that game. And getting all the Nook Mile achievements. But I'm always going to be coming back to this game. I feel like this game has a lot of good replayability.
I think the only reason why I'd replay New Horizons is with all the cooking recipes that weren't originally there for the first year and a half. Other than that, though, there's just so much in the game and so much region locked stuff as well. I'm not a huge fan of region locked stuff. As long as, unless you, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess I get it, but I like games that you can just complete without needing to go online and find someone from Korea or something and exchange items with. I'd rather just have it all accessible. Either within the game or within one region. At the very least. Just a personal preference. Like, it was fun to go over to... Um, I already forgot the guy's name. Uh, the guy in Chile. That I went over to his town a lot to uh, get seasonal fish on the southern hemisphere. That was fun, but that was another example of like, I don't know, them like pseudo region lock. It was a lot of fun, but for replayability, I don't want to go through all that trouble again. And whenever the Nintendo Switch server online servers are down, you can't even complete the game anymore unless you use a fan-made server, which you can, you know, you never know if that's going to actually happen. And whenever the apocalypse occurs and you want 100% your favorite Animal Crossing game, New Horizons, if that is your favorite one, you can't do it. it can't be done. This game, though, you can still do it. I didn't mind tools breaking, but I did mind golden tools breaking. Completely defeated the purpose of golden tools. Yeah, golden tools breaking was such a dumb thing to do. Like, what's what's even the point? Gold, gold, um ore is so rare, you're not going to waste a gold ore every time you want to rebuild a golden tool. They have a lot of uses, sure, but they're still going to eventually break. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if Minecraft did it. That's probably why they did it, because they were, they got, they just basically took Minecraft mechanics and implement in New Horizons since Minecraft is popular. So I knew it was not a real argument. I knew you were messing around, but you're probably right, though. That's probably why they did it. And it's a dumb reason. So, uh, that's, that's my, that's one of my biggest gripes. Golden tools breaking. Dumb. Golden ore. I only kept gold ore around for um, golden, like, things that I need to craft with gold. Which there were a lot of, so you had to get a lot of gold ore if you wanted to craft everything. I love the island design. However, I actually wouldn't want it for GameCube. Like, all the terraforming. I really like for GameCube that your town is unique to you and no one can like look at your town and say I want that and go and terraform it to their liking to fit your town. I, I know every town, or every island is unique with like the rocks along the shoreline and which way the river faces, but like you can basically just copy someone else's town 
with a few very minor differences. And I don't know. There's something special about having a town that is completely yours, unique. No one else can take it unless they, like, hacked it in or they literally spent hundreds of hours resetting towns to get yours. At which point, you know, that's just commendable. But... I don't know. I really like the unique town factor of GameCube as a from a replayability perspective. Or as even from a community perspective. Sharing your cool, unique town layout with your friends and whatnot. But I still really love the terraforming aspect a lot. So I don't know. I like it for New Horizons. I don't think I'd like it for game. Oh yeah, and the fact you can't have more than one island per Nintendo Switch console? Awful. Very frustrating. My girlfriend is frustrated by that too. Because she loves her town, or her island, but she wants to make a new one, but she can't unless she goes and drops several hundred dollars on another Switch, which we have considered doing just to have a second island start over so yeah that is also very frustrating and the online time to get to go to someone else's island or someone to go to yours way too long way too long very frustrating how long it takes if they if it didn't take so long i'd play online a lot more But there is a lot of really cool things about New Horizons I really like. One thing I want to implement in GameCube is like a external system of doing Nook Mile Plus achievements for GameCube. So you would manually like mark them off when you complete them on an external program that you could run on your computer. And then you could like accumulate points which you could spin towards uh, buying Nook codes to get that you could type in for items in the game. That was a fun idea I had for a way to replay GameCube casually, but with a twist. Something I, I think it'd be fun to make a program for. So I really, really like the new, uh, the Nook Mile Plus uh, system for New Horizons. I thought it was great. That'd be cool to implement that in GameCube for sure. I would love that. I'm a fan of long-term achievements, so even something along the lines of Nook Miles for GameCube would be cool. But that's just my... that's my personal preference. And, um... Yeah. That was one idea I had. Other things I really liked about New Horizons... Um... I guess the crafting system, you know, I could take it or leave it. It was cool. It's cool. It's a cool concept. I think they did a decent job at implementing it. I really like the cooking aspect, though. That aspect I love. I wish cooking was in GameCube. I really love... A hybrid flowers. I wish that was in GameCube. Um, but that's not New Horizons exclusive, of course. I really, I really like deep sea diving. I thought that was, I thought that was really fun. I had a lot of fun with that. But that's also not New Horizons specific. Oh. oh, wait, this could be a troll bass. I hope it's not. Oh, it's a troll bass. Dang. It's it's time to get an eel. It's it's just time. 
This is the sea bass all over again. I knew we were having too good of a time getting the guppy and the air and the angelfish like it was nothing. It was too easy. No, I don't want this. Two more medium fish for this session. Happy 10 hours and 6 minutes. I'm feeling this time. Oh, that's a medium fish, my bad. Feeling an eel this time. Oh, I'm not this, not this. That is a bass. This session. I feel like I got, I got the one in six. Mostly just, I want to believe. Not an eel. I'm ready to spend a lot of time looking for a shiny arowana. I'm ready. My confidence is at an all-time high with the guppy and angelfish find. I'm ready for the arowana. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. I'm right. We got it. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. We got the eel. All right, we need to catch it. But if I miss it, it's fine. We'll find another one. Let's go. I was, my intuition was right. Yes. There it is. Look at that shiny eel right there. Yes. Let's go. That is an electric eel. Yes. All right. Let's go save. Yeah, these are these fish really are shiny. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, we got it. We finally got the one in six. All right. So we are now looking for the giant catfish and piranha. We'll start with the giant catfish. Lake right here. All right. So I've mentioned it before. This is not the greatest lake. This is probably going to be one of the weaker parts about this uh, about this this town is this lake, but we're gonna work with it as best as we can. Oh, I might as well go for the brook trout since I'm here. That that's a brook trout, likely, or it's a dace. Okay, cool. we got the brook trout. Sweet. Yeah, it's a pallet mod that I work that I made, and then uh, or that Kyler and I made. But I made all these shiny fish. These are all my pallet ideas. All right. So giant catfish is going to be a one in sixty-five, roughly one in sixty-six. However, I can't see every fish in this lake. So... Yeah. The fa My favorite shiny alt I made, I've made, I haven't caught it yet. I'm not going to tell you which fish, but I have not, I've yet to catch it. You might be able to guess based off of that information. My second favorite is the angelfish, though. Oh, we're going to do the net strat. One net. There we go. No, oh, net doesn't work over there. Giant catfish. One in 67, roughly, is the closer approximation. Oh, I see the fish now. Not a giant catfish. Come on, be scared. There we are. Yeah, it's 1 in 67, but feels like half the time I can't even see the fish in the acre. So really more like 1 in 130. 140. But at least we know when we find it. Normally it's 10%. Divide that by six, and those are the odds we're working with. Well, I guess if it's normally 10%, that's 1 in 10. So it's actually 1 in 60. Right. That's how math works.
It's not horrible. Definitely could be worse. There are times when the giant catfish is 5%. So at least we got better odds than that. That's not it. Come on. The piranha is going to be potentially a challenge as well. I'm on any second now. Any second we'll find this giant catfish. That's right. I'd rather gi the giant catfish be more of a troll than the arowana. Because 1 in 60 versus 1 in 600. Kind of a big difference. Same with the piranha. Oh man, I only have an hour and a half left of fishing tonight. I don't want to stop having such a good time. Alright, we'll enjoy this last hour and a half. Every moment of it. It has been good vibes, and it will remain good vibes for the next hour and a half. <laughs> Alright, but I would like this giant catfish. Wouldn't mind moving on to the arowana search. Or I guess we gotta get through a piranha first, which is also a 1 in 600. Can't forget that little detail. I'll get it for the next fish. Oh, okay. Thanks, CRQ. I'm sure you're right, and I appreciate it. Oh, that's not it. Come on. Be scared. I don't feel like running all the way down. Nice. Look at that second time save.
I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of ready to move on from Midnight music. After hearing it for, like, the majority of this challenge run. It's gonna be nice to move on to 4 a.m. music for the Arowana. There's a reason why the the music changes every hour. Got it. To be I well, I scared it off. And by it, I mean that random medium-sized fish. I think this side of the lake is the way to go. I'm thinking about trying the other side, but... I'm, uh, I'm finding more fish on this side. That I might not even be able to see on the other side. But the other side may be faster. To, uh, cycle through fish. Maybe. I don't know. I was hoping to get the giant catfish by now. Alright, I'm going to go to the other side, test it out. You know what? This side actually seems pretty good. This side, oh, you know what? I like this side more. I can see almost the entire lake as opposed as compared to the other side where I could only see like, I don't know, 70% of the lake. I think the other side is better for goldenrod runs, but here, oh, I can see, I can see like 90, I can see like 95% of the lake. It's only that top left corner I can't see. Oh yeah, no, this side's way better for the for the challenge. For Goldenrod, the other side's faster. Because I typically have access to the fish more easily, more readily available. But this side, since I'm looking for a rare fish in particular, I have access to being able to see everything just about in this lake. Alright, cool. Yeah, no, this lake's actually great. I just needed to realize... This side's the way to go. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, this this side's great. I'm a fan. Time to improve efficiency by a slight amount. Actually, not even slight. This is a pretty good efficiency boost. Meanwhile, Bell is just taking a nap. Yes, efficient. Exactly. Oh, come on. 
Come on, get within the net scaring range. Please, I don't feel like running. All the way... Yeah, well, whatever. Run around the orange tree. That's... That'll work. Where's the fish at? Oh, there it is. Oops. It was definitely within the my vision. I just, for some reason, didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you need a rock-throwing mechanic. <laughs> Very true. Around the orange tree. Nice. Eh, whatever. Where's the fish? It must be in that Oh, I see it. It was in the lily pads. Not a giant catfish. That's all that matters. This is very bad luck. But it's alright. We're having a good time. Alright, I think it's time to consult the chart. June. June, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. at the lake. Giant catfish is 10%. Alright, I've consulted the chart. I've consul consulted the data. The data is still correct. This is 1 in 60. I just have gotten bad luck so far. Why is this fish not going away? Go away. <laughs> Thank you. Now that I have consulted the data, the giant catfish should spawn. I think that's how that works. Like any moment now. From past experience, that seems to work pretty well. It is May 27th, right? Yeah. Where's the fish? I don't even see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that, there's Porsche on the other side of the lake. I thought I saw something on the other side of the lake. Do 
You can tell by the polar fleece that she wears. Where's the fish? Oh, there it is. What is that? Not what we want. Got it. This is crazy. This is crazy, RNG. This giant catfish is acting like a 1 in 600. But it's not. Unless there is a there is a possibility the giant catfish is like the barred knife jaw in the sense that it's glitched. That is possible. That is in fact possible. I'm not going to assume that for a while. But it it is possible because the barred knife jaw we discovered was glitched. This is the first seasonal pond fish that I've gone for. So, there is a possibility the giant catfish and giant snakehead are both glitched. If it's glitched, it means that it can't spawn on this day. So, for example, the barred knife jaw could not spawn five days prior to it exist when it should exist. But for some reason, it could spawn three days prior. Unknown reason why the only fish so far that seems to have this property. It's random... I don't know. Think about it. No, I didn't code anything. This is all... All this stuff we're doing right now is um, standard game mechanics. The only thing that's modded are the pal is the palette. So now you can do all this stuff in standard gameplay. I didn't change anything about that. That would defeat the point of the challenge, in my opinion. So no, this is these are all just standard vanilla mechanics. Nothing modded about it. So the barred knife jaw I found was impossible to get five days beforehand. And it's the only fish that... Even the, like the sea bass didn't have that problem. And I know the jellyfish doesn't have that problem, nor the salmon. I don't know about other games. Other games have different mechanics. I know there are seasonal fish and out-of-season fish that you can catch in other games. I don't, I don't know how it works. But yeah, all the fish I'm catching that are seasonal, I'm catching um, five days before the month they're supposed to spawn. Or the term they're supposed to spawn, to be precise. But the barred knife jaw couldn't be caught five days prior, but it could be caught three days prior. And I'm starting to think the giant catfish has a similar glitched property. Because these this is incredibly unlikely that it has yet to spawn. We're talking like maybe one or two percent odds at the moment. Which, you know, I've had that happen plenty of times. So, I'm not 100% sure. But, this is this is extremely unlikely. I'm hope I, I hope it's just really bad RNG. And I hope I find it soon. That'd be cool. But, I don't know how long it'll take until I'm convinced that I need to check this or test it. Oh, I know. Crazy RNG happens. It certainly does. It's happened to me plenty of times. I've gotten, you know, 1 in 4,000, 1 in 10,000, etc., etc., several times in this game. And it could be happening right now. That'd be that'd be fine if it was. I just it would be good to know if I'm just getting really bad RNG or if it actually is impossible. There's a difference. Cuz I'm it's the difference between doing something that's literally impossible or doing something um, that will eventually work. 
And if I'm doing something that's literally impossible, kind of silly to spend time doing it. So we'll see. I'll give it another 30 minutes. Which seems like an excessive amount of time. But I'll feel pretty convinced after like 30 more minutes. Maybe 45. I hate to say it, but I guess we're going to find out. Well, no, that's not true. If I If I move one day ahead and I catch it, I'm not going to know for sure. That could just be crazy RNG. There needs to be a 0% chance that it's possible to catch right now before I do something like that. I'll test on emulator before I test in this save file. And unfortunately, there's no other fish I can... No other pond fish, or lake fish, I mean. There's no other lake fish I can test this with. Now, this wasn't an issue with the pond fish, but I had, I had tested that previously. It also was not an issue with the waterfall fish, the large char. So... Who knows? Hard to say. Hard to say, uh, still. But yeah, this is... Kind of crazy RNG. If if it is possible. If I don't catch it in the next 30 minutes or so, I mean, what I could do is I could move on to just catching the piranha. And I could come back for the giant catfish once I've confirmed if it is possible or not. Unfortunately, though, to confirm if it's possible or not, I'll basically just be doing this exact same thing, but on the emulator. And, but I can I can check to see what the, act, the current fish value is in the acre. I think the best way to test this... No. I was going to say the best way to test it would be to just hack in a bunch of lake acres in one town and run through them rapidly but that could you never know if like having multiple lakes would affect it you know so one lake would be the strat it's the standard town but like it took me about an hour to conclude not more than an hour it took me several hours to conclude that it was impossible to get barred knife jaws on the fifth day. But at least there were several acres that Bard Knife Shot could spawn. Wait! There it is! Let's go! There it is! It was just the most insane RNG ever! I'll take it! Oh my goodness! Oh, Now we wait. Yes! It is possible. It was just less than 1% odds of that situation happening. Yes! Alright, well now we gotta get it. At least we know it's... It can be... At least we know it exists. But even if I miss it, which... I'm not going to, because it's... Giant catfish is one of the easiest fish to catch. Um... Even if I do, I, at least I know it exists. Yes! Oh, it almost swam all the way down quickly. It's fine. Any second now. There it is. Come on. Come here. That should be good. No, not yet. You know what? No need to beat no need to rush this. We've waited 30 minutes just about. We can wait a little longer for it to get into a really good spot to catch. There we go. That's what I was waiting for it to do. Alright, there we go. That's good. 
Let's go! Let's go! Yes, giant catfish. It only took ten times longer than it should have. There it is. Yes. Yes. Alright, let's go save. And then we need to get the piranha. Alright, so it is possible. It's all good. Took more than ten times longer than the regular catfish. Took like... Oh, well, we might as well do a piranha check. That'd be insane. Okay, we checked. I was like a hundred times longer than the normal catfish. Ten times longer than it should have taken. Save. How reasonable is it to look into the code to see why the barred knife jaw wouldn't spawn five days in advance? We don't know. Tyler's looked into the code. He's, he doesn't think that it... He doesn't think that it, that that's an issue. Well, he... I, he only thinks it's an issue because I told him it was. According to the code, there shouldn't be an issue for the barred knife jaw. There shouldn't be any rhyme or reason why it doesn't spawn. There could be explanations for it, but he hasn't found them. Alright, we're looking for a piranha now. Piranha has unique AI compared to other small fish. Um, it is a 1 in 600, so this could take forever, or it could, or I could get it instantly. It has 360 degree vision, so I can cast the rod on top of the fish, and then it'll turn around, and it'll go for the bait, no matter how close, um, it, or no matter how far away the fish, like, darts off. It also has extremely far away vision as well. So as soon as we find a fish that turns around to go for the bait, we've got ourselves a piranha. The so 1 in 600 chance. We'll do this for every small fish. So it's not quite as bad as the guppy or the angelfish, but, you know, it's a 1 in 600. Still going to take forever, probably. However, I'd be very happy if it didn't, because the giant catfish certainly did take forever. Oops. And if at any time Tyler or anyone really discovers the barred knife jaw can in fact be caught more than earlier than three days in advance, somehow, maybe there was like some other thing that has to occur for that to happen, who knows, I'll come back and catch it operating under the new information. We shall see if that happens, but for now, I am 99.9% .9 sure the Bard Knife Jaw cannot be caught. Actually, more, more sure than that. 99.99% .99 sure it cannot be caught beyond three days in advance without some other unknown factor contributing towards it not spawning. Nope, I don't want to catch... Ah, well, that was a piranha rip. Probably wasn't. I was going to retest it, but it went for the bait. My cat has a collar that jingles, which I thought would be annoying at first, but now I like it because I know where he is. And uh, he's just jingling over there. <laughs> he's done jingling now. He also is a troublemaker. So if I hear him jingling a lot, I know he's probably causing trouble. And I can go intercept the trouble. <laughs> he likes jumping on top of furniture. 
He likes chasing Jade. I don't know. He likes uh, zooming around the house, jumping off the walls sometimes. And I hear when he's doing it. And then I can go and stop him if he's causing too much trouble. Great. And if I'm trying to find him. He doesn't usually hide. But if there's like a thunderstorm or fireworks, that scares him. So he'll go hide under the bed. Usually. And we can hear him jingle off. <laughs> Come on, 1 in 600. What's taking so long? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's a trouble stopper. Exactly. Yeah, the odds are really bad, um, as expected, but it doesn't take long to filter through all these fish. That is correct. That's why I wasn't, like, going on about how challenging the piranha is going to be. Because we know when we'll find it. You know what, I should check the AI of the prawn to see how long it stays on the bait. I feel like it stays on the bait for a while. But I'll be honest, I'm actually not 100% sure. Where is it? Yeah, it has, it has a really good... Um, it stays on the bait for a while. It's not as good as... Like the max time, which is a jellyfish or a giant catfish. But it stays on the bait for like 3 to 15 frames, is what it says. So, it's kind of hard to miss catching once it once it bites down. You just can't try to reel in the bait too... Or you can't try to reel in uh, the rod too... Like, before it bites. Doesn't take too much reflexes. It doesn't take a lot of, like, you know, really fast reflexes to catch the piranha, which is good to know. It can be a little chilled when you catch it. The sea bass will actually unhook itself faster than the piranha will. So, you have quite a bit of time to reel in the piranha. I mean, it makes sense. Piranha is, you know, vicious. Uh, it's a predator. That, so, you know, it will bite down really long. Hungry Piranha. Exactly. So once we do find a Piranha, I don't have to stress too much about catching the thing. I'm excited for the shiny Piranha, though. And I know what it looks like. Because I made it.
<laughs> Not fair. <laughs> I've actually, I thought about like, oh, wait, wait, what do we have here? Did it just randomly turn around? Okay, it just turned around. Yeah, we're good. We're good. That happens. Uh, I thought about asking someone if they were willing to make shiny pallets for all these fish, but it was too complicated to get to get it working for uh, for Kyler to implement. Like you had to convert all the values to RGB five A three. You had to figure out a good system to determine which colors needed to be swapped with which colors. So I used like a uh, a color palette tool online to optimize the process. So I even if someone like drew or not drew, but even if someone designed all of the palettes all the colors for the fish for me. I wasn't I didn't I wouldn't want to subject Kyler to figuring out which colors needed to be swapped with which colors. So it was just up to me to really do it. So I kind of wanted it to be a surprise, but at the same time, I knew it was going to be too complicated for someone who doesn't know what they're, you know, doesn't know Animal Crossing modding at all. It'd be too complicated for them. So yes, it would be fun for it to be a surprise for me as well, because I could have genuine reactions when I find them, I'm like, whoa, so cool. Which it is so cool. But like, awing over the shiny color palette. With the same level of anticipation as all of you. That would be cool, but it just wasn't feasible. I guess I could have provided a streamline. I, like, I could have made the tool myself. Which I did. I did make a tool myself. And then provided it to someone. I guess I could have done that. But I would still have to ask someone to design all the palettes. Which you oops, which you not only had to design palettes for the fish that you catch, but you also had to design the palettes for the inventory icons. So I had to design palettes for the fish not just once, not just twice, but actually three times because the models... There are multiple models between the museum and the uh, fish model that you that you have when you catch it. So I had to design the shiny palettes several times per fish. It was a real pain. And I wouldn't want to put someone through that if they're not really like super into the project. No, and the house model is also different as well. However, the house model and the museum model share the same palette, I think. Or it's the... Some of the models share the same palette. So the house model actually will be affected by the palette changes as well. But they do have different models. I think that's how that works. I think, yeah, I think that's, I think that's how it works. It's kind of weird how they designed it, or how the de how the developers implemented these palettes. But it's cool to learn some more details about the inner workings of the game. So, for example, the loach that's in my house right now. The keen observer would notice that the ground, like the sand that the loach is, uh, the, the tank that the loach is in, the sand is not normally yellow. Or like the rocks or the pebbles or whatever. It's actually normally like brownish or something like that. But in my house, it's yellow. That's because the palette that I designed for the loach, um, I changed one of the brown colors to yellow because it's, you know, it's golden, if you recall. And so that changed the pebbles to yellow as well. Mm -hmm. 
So the palette was shared with one of the models. I forget which one. Anyways, all that to say, it would have just been too much effort for me to ask someone to do that out of the kindness of their heart. So I just did it myself. And I kind of had visions for what all these... Hold on. Can we... Can we not... I'm getting billions of texts right now. Just put that over there. Um, I didn't... Uh, I also kind of had a vision for what I wanted the shiny fish to look like. So, like, I wanted the angel fish to look like an, you know, uh, ethereal look white and blue or whatever. So, I had visions for that. I also was like, I wanted the cherry salmon to actually be like red for a cherry. Rainbow trout to be rainbow. And so I, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted the fish shiny versions to look like. And if they didn't meet what I had envisioned, you know, I'd be like, well... What if we changed it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the shiny fish are not... There, There's not actually shiny fish in the game. That is a mod. The, the rarity of these fish I'm finding, though, that is in the game, is only a palette swap that is different. It was just a fun idea I had. I was going to do this challenge regardless. I thought it'd be fun to also include um, a shiny mod for it. Because it was a simple enough mod. At least simple enough with what we're able to do uh, to the, at this moment in time. And I thought it'd be a fun addition to this really tedious challenge. To get excited for finding shiny versions of fish that we've never seen before. And since I'm catching them in the most insane, rare way possible, it makes sense for them to be shiny. But yeah, these are all vanilla mechanics. These 1 in 600s, this is how the game is programmed. You don't... You can just boot up your Animal Crossing disc and, uh... and get these same odds without any mods. This is not an odds mod. This is a, uh... The pallet mod. That's all. Anyways, come on, Piranha, where are you at? That's a tiny fish. Oh, I don't know what this is. Well, we're gonna catch it. Okay, it's Cruise Corp. Anyway, so yeah, we caught a fish. It's been so long. Oh come on, I not I'm not convinced yet. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure if I'd like to see official shiny fish in the game, but I do want to see more rare events. I think that'd be cool. Like like, super rare events, but not ones that are required to 100% the game. Just fun events that are just really rare. They give you bragging rights. Ones that, like, you can take a screenshot of. People can understand you found a rare event without having to, like, explain it. Like, for example, there are rare events in Animal Crossing. Like, if you find uh, two shovels back-to-back -back in the Lost and Found... The odds of that are 1 in 10,000. But, like, that doesn't really... You don't really have bragging rights. You know, there's not, like, something really cool to show off. You're just like, alright, cool, there's two shovels in the lost and found. You could have faked that. So, something really cool, like, I don't know, 
there's rainbows in this game. Maybe a double rainbow would be a rare event, for example. They have double, like, that's a rare event in New Horizons. I don't know if it's absurdly rare, but I've seen it. Or I've had it in my island. Pretty cool. Yeah, Stardew Valley has those rare events. However, I don't think the latest versions have those events aren't as rare. Like, I remember spending about 40 hours of my life trying to get the secret capsule or the, the rare owl statue in my in my Stardew Valley town. And I had great fun just saving and quitting uh, for, like, I don't know, 50 plus years. Trying to get those events to occur naturally. But now they're, like, really common. Like, I was talking to a friend. I haven't played version 1.5. I was talking to a friend that does, and I was telling him about the secret capsule event. They're like, oh, I have that. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, I have it. I'm like, no way. So I looked into it. Now all the secret capsules super, like, it's not, it's rare. It's not, like, super rare. It's not super common, but it, you know, you're going to encounter it without too much trouble nowadays. So Stardew Valley got rid of a lot of those really super rare things. I remember I spent um, 300 hours of my life trying to fish up work boots in a treasure chest in Stardew Valley. Yeah, I did. I did that back in 2017. 300 hours. I'm not exaggerating. I never found it. The odds were 1 in 22,500. And they're just random boots that really serve no like purpose they're just for some reason super rare and at the time you could only get them by fishing them up in a treasure chest and it was a one in ten thousand drop those boots were one in a thousand and there were ten different boots you could catch work boots were one in were one of them so it was one in ten thousand and even with max profession for like getting treasure chests to spawn a lot the best odds were every time you cast a fishing rod is one in 22,500 to find work boots. And I spent 300 hours of my life, maybe 400. 300 was like a low ball estimate. Uh, I never found them. But I do have, I, I saved videos of all the crazy catches I found in Stardew Valley. Um, I did have an even more rare catch than that. I caught a broken trident which is a fishing exclusive item. I caught the Neptune's Glade. I think that's what it's called. Also a fishing exclusive item. As well as a treasure chest, which is fishing exclusive. I caught all three of those in one treasure chest. One, one find. The odds I calculated were one in 60 million, something like that. Um, absolutely insane. I have a video of it. I still have a video of it. I could I could load it up right now and uh, and show you guys if I wanted to. Hey Becca, welcome. Doing well. Anyways, I never found those work boots, but now you can get those stupid work boots on like the twentieth floor of the mines, or not the twentieth, something like maybe the twentieth. One of the floors of the mines, you can just find them in a treasure chest, and they're not rare. You just you can just get them, and it's no big deal. So, Stardew Valley got rid of all the rare events. I think the rarest thing you can find now is, like, a green slime hat. And it's not even that rare. Like, that doesn't even take you that long to find it. Comparatively. And same with the owl statue. So, Stardew Valley got rid of all the super rare events. And it's a shame. I agree. So yeah, we need we need some uh, we need some modern games that have some of these insanely rare events. It doesn't have to be like literally one in sixty four million. Like I, don't, I think one in ten thousand, one in twenty thousand, as long as you can grind through the as long as you can grind through the checks relatively quickly. I think that's fine to have in modern games. It gives you a little fun thing to look for, keep an eye out for, appreciate, as long as it's not required to 100% the game, or even complete the game, I guess. 
I think it's fun. I think it's fine. I don't know. Anyways, good times in Stardew Valley, though. So, fishing for a 1 in 600 piranha? Nothing. No big deal. Done it before. Worse odds. I also owe Stardew Valley another playthrough for the latest version. I was working on a perfect 100% completion as well. As in, literally every possible item was stored in a treasure chest. Including every different uh, value for... Or every single quality for every single fruit, vegetable, fish, etc. I was almost there. I just needed work boots. And then uh, the secret capsule and the owl statue. Which, between the three of those things, or between everything, I put 1,100 or 1,200 hours into, according to Steam. But I also did some speedruns of Stardew Valley, as well as several challenges back in the day. So, you know, that's a factor. But yeah, I would say for that one town alone, where I was trying to do a perfect, insane 100% completion, I would say that was a good 700 hours out of that 1,200 hours. Over half of it was trying to find one item. <laughs> Been ever found. Oh no, it's 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? Well, it'd be nice to get a change of pace for the music. The passage of time, no! Anything but that. <laughs> the guppy took over an hour to find. However, I have spent I spent over half of uh, the time in today's session looking for the giant catfish. So. This piranha is causing some issues. I, I know it's a 1 in 600, but it's not playing quite as nicely as the angelfish. But the angelfish was insanely lucky. Yeah, the guppy took a little over an hour. But I had to check things more... Like, I had to check things at a slower rate. I think the guppy ended up being actually pretty lucky as well. So I can't really complain. But yeah, May has not been favorable. It took forever to find the eel to get the one and six. Well once we found the once we found the uh, the meat once we got the one and six, the eel came very quickly. But yeah, even that took forever. Giant catfish took 10 times longer than it should have. Piranha. Still too early to say if it's bad RNG. But it's definitely not great RNG. Anyways. It's all good. We're having a good time here. Unfortunately, though, I only have 40 minutes left of fishing today. Not enough time. I want 40 hours left of fishing. I like 1 a.m. It's not my favorite. But I, I like it. It's a nice change of pace from midnight. It's fairly repetitive. 
1 a.m. is. Like, just a few notes, and then it repeats. I'm so glad this is not the midnight soundtrack. I would not play at midnight for this challenge if this was the midnight track. It would get old very quickly. But it's it's nice for now. We wouldn't be doing midnight strats. We'd be doing 1 a.m. strats if midnight and 1 a.m. music was switched. <laughs> do, 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 do. This is the music that the game's trying to tell you to stop playing and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't like, it was not even 10 seconds. If it wasn't a literal three second loop, it'd be great. Yeah, it's so simple. You can make this your town tune. <laughs> the rarest tracks? It's actually a good question. I would say the most infrequent tracks would probably would be um, um, Jingle, I think. Right? No, it would be it would be um, Auld Lang Syne for New Year's Eve. It only plays after the New Year's countdown, and it only plays for one hour. One hour, one hour out of the year is the Auld Lang Syne track. There we go. But the thing is, is you can get chased by bees any time of the year. I wouldn't say that one's that rare. We have the ability to go back to midnight without affecting the fish term index value. Or the fish, yeah, the, yeah. So, you know, if we want to go back to midnight, that is a possibility. Just let me know. Yeah, there's a tune for um, catching the fish, for catching all the fish while holding the catch. It's the same tune as paying off your debts. That celebratory tune. Yeah, these 1 in 600s have actually been treating me very well this challenge. The stringfish, the guppy, the angelfish. What other 1 in 1? One? 1 in one 600s are, have there been? I guess I can pull up the list. I'm kind of curious. Have there been any other 1 in 600s? Uh, no, there haven't. All three 1-600s I've been going for so far actually treated me really nicely. This is the fourth one. And it's too early to say if it's treated me nicely. Just think about it. If you like, I like that giant catfish was probably a one percent chance of taking that long to find. If we got those odds for a one in six hundred, we'd be looking at like seven plus hours of fishing.
so I'm fine if my really bad RNG is for a 1 in 60. That was definitely the worst RNG out of all the fish so far. Aside, unless you include rolling the 1 in 6, then that would go to the sea bats. Oh! Oh, you've got to be kidding me! No! It was a troll! It turned around! Ah, oh, bummer! Ah, oh, bummer! It was a troll! That looked so much like piranha behavior. Well, rip. It just hit the ledge perfectly and noticed the bait at such a perfect angle that it just looked like a piranha. I'm sure if I replayed it in slow motion, you could tell it wasn't a piranha. But in the moment, it's, it sure looked like a piranha. Dang, getting my hopes up. Hey, you know what? At least I know I can catch it under pressure, right? But that was a good test. That was good, good practice. I'm feeling the prawn is going to spawn in the next three minutes. That's a pretty bold statement to make, wow. I'm feeling the RNG, though. I got it right with the eel. Come on, piranha. Try this one again. Probably not. Okay. music's your jam. You know, I guess if you listen to it long enough, you start going crazy and you like it. So you know what? I, I, I see it. I see it. Thank you. 
Yeah, I believe Koji Kondo did all these soundtracks. All this music. Shoutouts to Koji Kondo. Nah. You don't think so? I thought he did. He wants to... He wants to look that up. Oh, not Koji Kondo. Totaka. Of course. That's that's what I meant to say. I, I uh... I just had a moment of, uh... Confusion. Yeah, obviously Totaka. I mean, KK Slider. Yeah, that's who I meant. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah, Tota. I think Totaka did all this stuff. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, I have the other big Nintendo composer in my mind. Yes. Yes, Totaka, of course. Ah, so there were more. It wasn't just Totaka. Cool. Good to know. I'm sure it's somewhere in the Animal Crossing credits. Oh, okay. Nice. That is... That is very good to know. Well, shout outs to uh, that guy for the hourly music. Anyways, my prediction is wrong. I have not found the piranha within three minutes. It's all good. Who wants this challenge to end anyways? It's such a fun, chill challenge. Next big challenge. We'll probably be doing this, but with the bugs. However, I don't know if I'll do that immediately. I'll probably go back to Golden Net and Rod speedruns after this challenge. Because I need to reclaim first place in that category. And uh, I don't know what's after that. I'll figure it out. Maybe a smaller challenge. Who knows? We'll see. Shiny bugs will be crazy. And I'm trying to think if there are any bugs that aren't seasonal. I guess ants. And is that it? Are cockroaches? No, no, cockroaches are seasonal. It would be ants, right? And bees, right, and bees. Can you find cockroaches on candy um, during winter? I don't know. I'll look into that later. Regardless, the majority of the bugs will be shiny. Because the majority of the bugs are seasonal. Oh, and pill bugs are not seasonal. Let's see what else. Bees, pill bugs, um, ants, maybe cockroaches. So we're looking at 36 or 37 shiny bugs. That's going to be a lot of pallets to to uh, change. No, there's no fleas in this game. are okay. I personally find it kind of weird 
when villagers around town say they have fleas? I don't know. Because, like, they're supposed to be anapomorphic. Humans don't really get fleas. I guess. I don't know. It makes sense. It's not that weird, I guess. Yeah, we have other things that we can get. That is fair, but it, I mean, you don't just get lice, like, once a month and then deal with it, you know. I've, I don't even know anyone who's ever gotten lice. Kind of, it's kind of gross to even say that word or even think about it. But it's not like it's a regular occurrence. <laughs> Unlike in Animal Crossing games where villagers get fleas, like, semi-regularly. Anyways, please or whatever. Uh, but they're not in this game, so I don't have to worry about them. But yep, there will be more fishing. More fishing fun after this challenge with Golden Net and Rod. Oh, is that how that works? If they have fleas and they ask you to change... Oh, I don't think this is a piranha. No, it, it would have... No, it's not. We'll catch it anyways. Um, anyways. I, I guess I've never played the other Animal Crossing games enough for that situation to occur. It's funny. I'm a fan of tarantulas and scorpions, actually. I actually, I actually like those bugs. I think they're fun. Just don't run around with a net. They won't bother you. At least in New Horizons. I like those bugs, personally. Though it is a little freaky running away from a tarantula or a scorpion. That's fair. If you have arachnophobia, tarantulas chasing you is pretty terrifying. I get that. Even if it's not like extreme arachnophobia, even just like a little fear of spiders. Yeah. Or even a, even a disgust of looking at a spider. You don't have to be scared of it. Just don't like it. Yeah, I, I see that. You know what's weird? I'm not scared of bees, but I I am scared of wasps. So like when bees chase me in this game, I'm not scared of it. But when a wasp chases me in New Horizons, I don't know. I'm a little more bothered by it. I think it's because I've been stung by wasps and it hurts. And I've been stung by bees and it doesn't hurt as bad. And wasps, they'll just sting you for the heck of it. Bees, they're like, they at least have a reason, typically. Yeah, I had a bad experience with a mud dauber. Oh, hello. Let's go! Yes! Shiny piranha, I found it! There it is! Our shiny 1 in 600 piranha. Yes! Yes! 
there it is. Look at all these wonderful fish. Yes! Let's, uh, let's go save immediately. And I'm going to go donate them. Do you guys like the shiny palette for the piranha? Yeah, I'm going to go donate them. Seven, eight, nine. Only nine fish remain. You liked all the shinies so far? Thank you. Alright, so nine fish remain. I am gonna go donate all of them. Let's go do that. Why not? Sure, yeah. Let's go donate them all. Oops, I'm lost. Uh, okay. Over here. So, I have yet to get a bass. I'll get that with the arowana. That's pretty obvious. And Pale Chub Blue Gill I'll get with the Giant Snake Head. The Sweet Fish and the Arapaimo will be together next month. And then after that, it'll be the Jellyfish and the Salmon. This challenge is coming along. Two more 1 in 600s remain. The Arowana and the Arapaima. The Arapaima will be similar. I just heard a weird noise. Um, Air Pima will be similar to the Stringfish. I'll definitely be able to see when I find it. Hello, Jade. Next up is a realistic palette for a crawfish. I think. I can't see all the fun Blathers dialogue. Next up, we got a pink and blue killifish. Looks a little more purple and blue from this lighting. <laughs> and now, a standard Popeye goldfish. It's not shiny because Popeye goldfish can be caught year-round, but only during the day. And next... Next, we got a very rare guppy. Cyan? Blue and red, or pink. We got ourselves a poison dart frog. This, by the way, remind me to tell you a complication with the frog in the museum that took forever to figure out how to fit or how to get resolved. But Kyler and I figured it out. Uh, remind me to tell you about that later when we check out all the fish in the museum at the end. Alright, we got ourselves a purple catfish. Looks a little more purple in the inventory, but the lighting. Still very cool, still very purple. Small bass. That is fascinating, Virtuoso. Um, I do not ever want to deal with yellow jackets or mud daubers or any wasps of any kind ever again in my entire life. <laughs> and now we have the angelfish, my second favorite palette change. Look at that cool fish. 
next we got the electric eel. I actually am a fan of this eel. This this has grown on me. Yeah, it looked good in that lighting, didn't it? And now we got our brook trout, not shiny. But I knocked this one. Got it out of the way. Knock it off the list. And finally, the stupid giant catfish. But I'm a fan of the of the shiny version of it. I think it ended up looking pretty cool. Yep. The hardest to find shiny, given its odds. Could have found ten of them. And here is the red piranha. <laughs> Very cool. The shiny piranha. It looks so adorable in that lighting. <laughs> nice. Alright. Next up is the arowana. I don't have a whole lot of time left today. But my plan for the rest of the day is the arowana. I don't have to reroll the 1 and 6. But the arowana comes out at 4 a.m. So, we will catch that thing at 4 a.m. For now, though, I need to refill my inventory with bell bags. The only problem is, is I spent 3,000 bells on Sahara, so I am short 300 bells. Well, 203 to be exact, but 300 bells worth of bell bags to fill up the rest of my inventory. So, I'm gonna go shake a few trees. Let's look for some bells in some trees. There's one. There's two. Will we find a bell bag, furniture, furniture, or bees for our next thing we find. Oh no, I shook an orange tree. You know, I got a solution to this problem. We need a tasty little snack. Sorry, orange tree, my bad. Just hungry. I'll, oh, yeah, I can go over the frog complication. Basically, the frog was, uh, had a separate texture entirely for the museum model for some reason. And it required finding that model. And it was not only difficult to find, but it also was difficult to figure out how to, um, um, like, it changed the palette for. It was a texture, so we had to actually change the texture entirely, which required swizzling, which is a fancy method of not encrypting the texture, but, like, I don't know, encoding it so it's more optimized. Tyler could explain it better. It required swizzling. <laughs> and it required finding a separate texture entirely, separate from all the other fish palettes. Oh no, I found bees! If you guessed bees, you were correct. Got it. Thank you. So, next prediction. Will I find bells? Furniture or more bees? <laughs> Come on, bells are not rare. Let's just... I mean, it's, it's whatever. There we go. There we are. Inventory is refilled. Fishing rod is in hand. Let's... Uh, I don't know. Let's go see what's in the dump. That sounds fun. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm just going to call it a stream there. We'll do the arowana next time. But, oh, you know what? I'll go to 4 a.m. at the very least. We'll go to 4 a.m. just to get the time ready. And then we'll we'll call it a stream there. 
It's basically my bedtime anyways. You know what? No, I got it. We'll fish for... We'll fish um, a few medium-sized fish. We'll get the bass. That sounds good. And if I happen to find the piranha, cool. Or piranha. Arowana. If I happen to find the arowana, that'd be insane. Um, otherwise... We'll get the bass. We'll do... We'll do... Um, We'll do three medium fish. We'll go to 4 a.m., catch three medium fish, or until I find the bass. And then we'll call it a stream there. That sounds good. We'll get we'll get the time ready. 4 a.m. Same day. Just the earliest arowana come out. Very first possible moment to get a shiny arowana. So the, uh, somehow I've yet to catch a bass, or, well, I've caught bass, but have yet to save the bass. We'll catch ourselves a bass, and, uh, we'll get a, we'll get a feel for the 4 a.m. fishing. A sneak peek, you could say. Also, eels are still possible to get. That'll be fun. Alright, we got our bass. <laughs> Two more medium fish, and we'll call it a stream there. That's a bass. Arowana have the same properties as Dace, so we'll uh, we'll be I'll be able to know if it's going to be a. Arowana or a Dace pretty quickly. So I think this is a bass, or it could... I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it's okay, that's a bass. Alright. Let's call it a stream there. We have our fish term value of 6 saved. We got ourselves the bass. We have 8 fish remaining now. Arowana is going to be the last major challenge. Very successful stream today. I got way more than I was expecting. I was not expecting to get the piranha today. Angelfish was going to be a stretch to get today, the way I saw it. We got it, though. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, Kittles. Good to see you. Hope it's going well. So, last off... <clears throat> it was 4.01 when I got the bass and saved. So we'll start at 4.02 a.m., of course. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll, of course, we sell the 1 and 6. Now, if it does end up taking more than 2 hours, I'm going to go back to this time. Because at 6 a.m., it will be a new Animal Crossing day, and I would rather avoid that situation. <clears throat> so as you can see, we have room for a bunch of fish. And we don't need all these weeds. And plenty of room for arowana. So, let the fun, chill fishing begin. We... Don't need anything except for medium fish. This is a medium fish, right? <clears throat> it is. Alright. So. There is a way to tell the difference between bass and arowana. And it is challenging. Jade, I, I can't see my TV screen. <clears throat> Arowana have the same um, fishing AI as Dace, and they can see the bait from further away than bass can. So, this is probably a bass. <clears throat> oh wait, or it's an eel. Jade, I can't... It was a bass, though. We're good. <clears throat> oh, also, eels will be in the mix, even though I caught one at four. 
they are a possibility as well. They're going to, of course, be very rare. But um, they will still be a very real possibility of finding. So we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> I'm excited to show you what the arowana, the shiny arowana looks like. Oh, yeah, let's confirm. It is May 27th. Yeah, okay. I am excited to show the shiny arowana. It is very cool, in my opinion. And for those asking what my my favorite shiny fish that I made is, and I said I haven't caught it yet, I will go ahead and reveal my favorite shiny fish that I created is the arowana. Angelfish was second. <clears throat> So, it will be very exciting to hopefully eventually catch this Arowana. Lots of dace. Which are the same, have the same uh, AI as the Arowana. So, we will be catching a lot of medium-sized fish. This could take forever. <clears throat> But it's going to be nice and chill. Very easy to do something else in the background while I'm doing this. Yeah, place your guesses. What color do you think the shiny arowana is going to be? I think this is a bass. Oh! Oh! Rainbow trout are also a very real possibility. <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot it's still May. <laughs> yeah, okay. The arowana is... There are so many other medium fish. This actually is the only time of the year... Actually, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the most likely time to catch a medium fish out of any time of the year. At this very moment. Dace, bass, rainbow trout... Eel, Arowana. That has a lot of potential medium-sized fish. How many medium-sized fish are there? I guess the jellyfish is a medium-sized fish. Is that everything but the jellyfish? Wow. Every single medium-sized fish but the jellyfish can be caught at this very moment. Yeah, because a brook trout as well if you go to the lake. That's cool. I ne I've never thought about that. And the jellyfish is an ocean fish. So, you know, oh, that's a bass. So, I mean, it kind of counts, but not fully. It's not... Every single uh, medium-sized river fish can be caught at this very moment. Wow. Neato. <clears throat> We'll see how this goes. It could be a very long time till we get an arowana. We shall see. Or I can get it in five minutes. Either way is cool with me. My favorite default fish. I think, the, yeah, I'd say the arowana. Arowana is my favorite fish. Shiny or no shiny. What about you? Favorite fish? That is not an arowana. <clears throat> I mean, arowana is just the best, so it makes sense that it's 
also pretty much your favorite. Yeah, Piranha's cool. Angelfish is also pretty neat. Because it's so differently shaped than all the other fish. <clears throat> and is rare. Oh, that's not an arowana. That is a bass. Another rainbow trout, which is perfectly fine to catch because I have already caught one out of season. I would say this is by far the hardest fish for this entire challenge. One in 600, and like half the fish I can catch right now are medium sized. And the dace is not exactly rare either. Well, it might not be the final episode. It'll depend on how lucky this arowana snag is. Jade is making some weird noises. Jade, you're right. I think she just has a hairball. <laughs> well, she's right there. Jade... Okay, she's all right. Cats. <clears throat> so I think right now, the eel is actually as rare as the arowana normally is at the moment. So eels are about 1 in 100 at the moment. Because at 4 a.m. they get less common than when I caught it at midnight. However, now that I think about it, I did go to a lot of trouble to get that eel when I could have just got it during this moment. Potentially. But of course, there's the 1 in 6 chance I would get the arowana before the eel, and then it would have felt silly to have not gotten it at midnight. So I think I made the right call. Actually, it's more like a 1 in 5 chance I would get the arowana before the eel. Anyways, it's going to be a chill stream. Nice and chill. Enjoy the fishing ambiance. The 4 a.m. music will be nice as well. Nice change of pace from the midnight music. Or the 1 a.m. music. 
and we we might get 5 a.m. music. It'll all depend on how lucky the arowana find is. Or rather, how unlucky. Most likely, this will take more than an hour. I think on average, this will take like an hour and a half. If I had to guess. Hi, Jade. Welcome back. That was a bad cast. Jade. Jade, I, I literally cannot see the fish. Okay, now I can. Good Jade. Jade, I, I can't I can't see the screen. I think I just scared off a medium fish. That's fine. Good Jade. Okay, you should settle down somewhere. Alright. It's either Dace or an Arowana. The Dace. We'll probably catch over a hundred of these Dace. Probably. But it is going to be very exciting to get that arowana. My favorite shiny that I made. I'm excited to see it in person. Jade's tongue is currently sticking out. Oh, she, she realized and put her tongue away. I didn't use any program to edit the colors. Um, well, I guess I just used paint. I used, okay, I, I used paint.net. That is what I used. Oh, I think we, oh, no, we don't have an eel. We just have a bass. Paint.net. And then from there, I base. I didn't want to, like, um, change any of the like, I couldn't change any of, the any of the textures, so I can only do palette swaps, so I mostly just changed the hue, saturation, and um, sometimes I would change, like, a, I make it grayscale, for example. And then from there, I would swap out whatever color was originally there, and then replace it with whatever color... Um, it repla I, I ended up replacing it with through paint. That was my strategy. And it worked out pretty well. Nothing fancy. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. The tool was good enough for the job. Yeah, if you're playing Tears of the Kingdom right now, you can enjoy some nice, chill fishing ambiance. 
my uh, my like uh, recommended as well as my friends list. Like two thirds of them are playing Tears of the Kingdom at the moment, which is fair. My girlfriend's actively playing Tears of the Kingdom as well, and that, it made me wonder. Like, is if everyone's playing Tears of the Kingdom, wouldn't that make it less interesting to watch? I don't know. I guess you'd just probably watch one, one person. Like, if I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, I would not want to watch other people play it while I'm playing it. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that's just me. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. And that's fine. But I feel like I would want to completely immerse myself in the world. And... I don't know. Not get spoilers, potentially. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see, like, someone finds a Korok, and I'm like, oh, well, shoot, now I know I can find a Korok there, for example, or even solving a puzzle. I don't know, just a thought. If I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, I would want to watch Animal Crossing. <laughs> Nice, chill background, still hanging out on a stream with someone, with or with a streamer in chat, but not getting spoilers to the game I am actively playing and enjoying. Maybe that's just me. Either way, though, it looks like an amazing game. And I'm glad people are enjoying it. I didn't watch anyone when I was playing New Horizons, because I was streaming New Horizons <laughs> uh, like all day, every day for the first two weeks. I didn't have time to watch anyone else. So, yeah, I guess I did the same for New Horizons. I did not watch anyone. Because <laughs> I was streaming. I mean, you could watch someone while you're actively streaming. There's no rules against that. But I did not. And there definitely were people that uh, intentionally did not watch parts of my stream because I was, like, you know, progressing as fast as possible with New Horizons. And they're like, I haven't done that yet. I haven't I haven't gotten the sixth villager from the Mystery Island yet. And I, I'm crafting all the things for him. Um, no, I'm gonna... I'll come back later. I said, fair enough. Understandable. That I'll probably be done with day six or, or day three stuff soon. And it'll be back to a generic island uh, building day or something like that. Whenever a new game comes out that I'm really excited to play... Or, I'm going to eventually play it, but I, I don't want spoilers. I well, I actively avoid any spoilers I can, that, that may exist on the internet. I just don't like to know what's going to happen. If I haven't personally done it yet. Or experienced it. Like, even when I was setting up my modded Skyrim, that was that was actually the first time I'd ever played Skyrim. I was trying to mod the game before I ever played it. And it, it kind of worked out. I did eventually need to do a 
pretty long playthrough before I got a good idea of what needed to be modded and what didn't need to be modded. Nice eel! We got the one in a hundred. Heard a noise downstairs. Just ignore that, I guess. Anyway, so for Skyrim, I was trying to mod the game, but I was also trying to avoid spoilers. And it worked out pretty well. I ended up getting a spoiler or two, but, I mean, I was trying to mod the game, so it made sense. But even then, I was doing my best to avoid any sort of spoilers. You're trying to avoid Tears of the Kingdom streams or videos right now as well? See, there you go, I'm not the only one. So Animal Crossing is a perfect stream to watch to avoid such spoilers. And it's super... This is a super chill stream. This is quite possibly the chillest Animal Crossing stream I've done in a while. And I am enjoying it. Anyways, it was good I caught that eel, because that that shows that I still have the uh, uh, the 1 in 6, or I still have the fish term index set to a value of 5. So I still have the roll. That did not go away. So it means arowanas are, in fact, possible to catch, which is very good to reinforce that that information. Yes, this is on a GameCube. It sure is. GameCube controller. Yep. Just a standard old GameCube with some HD capabilities. I thought about not streaming today, because I knew that my viewership would likely be half of what it normally is. Because <sighs> people are actively playing Tears of the Kingdom. But I was like, you know what? I want to play Animal Crossing. Who cares? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do what sounds fun. And I have no regrets. We'll see how productive this session ends up being. We got one eel so far. On average, I should find five eels per one arowana. And it has been 25 minutes. All right. Now, keep in mind, I likely will scare away some eels. This fish went in this... So it may not be perfectly 5 to 1. Ah, right as I say that, I catch an eel. Right, I've caught two eels now. Couple of 1 in the 100s. Easy, simple stuff. We are more interested in a 1 in 600. The longest fish that has taken me to catch was actually the sea bass. <laughs> but not because I was actively fishing for it and I couldn't catch it. It was because I got the world's most unlucky fish uh, term index rolls. Took 20 times to roll a 1 in 6. So if you exclude the 1 in 6 roll, the longest fish 
that it took me to catch was the guppy, a little over an hour. Angelfish I got insanely lucky with. I don't remember how long it took, but it was not long. It was like... 20 minutes, maybe? Crazy. Crazy good RNG with the angelfish. Arowana. Same odds, technically, but more fish to go through. Less filtering options. Pretty much just going to catch every medium fish I find. Every now and then I could distinguish between the bass, rainbow trout, eel versus dace or arowana. But for the most part, we'll be catching every medium fish. And every single river fish that is medium size is currently out at this very moment in the entire game. Kind of crazy. If I was fishing at the lake, we would truly be able to catch all seven medium-sized river fish. But it does exist. It can be caught at the moment. Pretty cool. Oh, we got. I think we have our third eel. I'm, you know, I'm gonna catch eels for fun. I think it's an eel. We'll see. Oh, it was not. Just a simple rainbow trout, barely outside of its vision. That is fine. It was definitely not a dacer marijuana. A low sandbag. It hasn't been 48 hours. It, it, it has, though. It has been over 48 hours. Actually. I also have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I have an idea of what you're talking about. Well, that's why I banned links in chat anyways. It's a crazy people like you, Sandbag. As well as bots. It doesn't show up as link deleted, silly. It shows up as three asterisks. <laughs> Hello, Kyler. Welcome. Yes, you've missed a lot of rare fish snags. You missed one stream. Insanely lucky stream. And, uh, suddenly, we're trying to catch the final really tough fish. Just like that. The hardest fish of the challenge. But we got... 
the other, the second and third and fourth hardest fish at the challenge out of the way already as well. Yeah, the cha this challenge really has sped up. I just got super lucky. It only took me an hour to catch the guppy. And it only took me 20 minutes to catch the angelfish. Both lucky. The guppy was only slightly above average luck. Angelfish was like... Six times luckier than it should have been. Maybe seven. Yeah, the rarest... Well, the rarest fish is tied between all the 1%s. But this will be the hardest fish to catch. Because I can't really filter out the medium fish. At least not very well. Since every single medium-sized river fish exists right now. And dace are also pretty common. So yes, effectively the arowana should on average take the longest to catch out of every fish for this entire challenge. So far it's been 33 minutes and I've caught two eels which are five times more likely than an arowana. And yet they still sit at a odds of 1 in 120. I have now caught three eels. <laughs> At one in 120. On average, it should be about five eels per arowana. But I definitely think I've gotten lucky with the amount of eels I have caught. Or rather, unlucky. Oops. Because I don't want the eels. Oh, I know why I didn't go for the eels while, go while I went for the arowana. Because the eel was what I used to determine if I got the 1 and 6. Because they're way more common at midnight than at 4 a.m. That's right. Have I played Tears of the Kingdom yet? Um, technically, no. I have watched my girlfriend play. And I was doing a Majora's Mask plus OOT randomizer while she was playing Tears of the Kingdom on the big screen. <laughs> and I was playing on the little... I lugged a CRT downstairs and played on that. So I, I've watched her play for several hours. Looks like a good game. It reminds me a lot of Skyrim. At least my modded version of Skyrim. But maybe I... I haven't played it, so... Skyrim with powers. Kind of. Sort of. That's my impression of after sort of watching it in the background. Dang, Kyler, so it sounds like you are... You spent the whole weekend playing it, as well as most of today. And you're probably still actively playing it. Have you even slept? <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I wonder if there's anyone in the world right now who literally hasn't slept since Tears of the Kingdom came out and they've played it nonstop <clears throat> since they got it. Like three or four days ago. Probably. Yeah, probably. Do we have another eel? 
We'll see. Yeah, it looks really good. No, it's just fast. Okay, yeah, well, once you told me you may or may not have had it for some time, I fully understood how you had progressed so far. Anyways, good. Glad you have been having a good Tears of the Kingdom life balance. Ooh, the mushroom hunting code. That's a fun one. I think I figured out everything there is to know about mushrooms. Or rather, hunting them. You can get five to spawn around... You can get all five, I should say, to spawn around one tree. Which is pretty cool. Oops. That was probably the arowana. My bad. Dang, so there's no way to get a fixed mushroom of the day. Oh, what about the time interval in which they start disappearing? Is it 10 minutes? Or is it actually different? 15 minutes. Really? Maybe I knew that. Well, oh, it runs till 9.14. Are you sure? I swear I've never found a mushroom after 9 a.m. Alright, fair enough. Now I'm kind of determined to find a mushroom after 9 a.m. Because I swear... Well, I mean, I, I know I've never found one after 9 a.m. But I also... Well, I know you'll only get one, but still, you get 14 minutes if you start at 9 a.m. to get one. Yeah, I mean, I get that. There would be one available if you load up your town at 9 a.m. But I've done that many times during mushroom season, and I've never found one. Smokey, with the Prime sub, thank you very much. Four months. Thank you for the good luck on the shinies. I do appreciate it. If we get this arowana soon, we might finish this challenge today. We'll see, though. Thanks again for the sub, I appreciate it. Mushrooms can spawn under any tree, right? Except for... Yeah, no, yeah, any tree, right? What about palm trees? Is that the only one they can't spawn under? Oh, they... They can't spawn under a tree that has hidden items? Really? Nor golden trees. Or money trees. Hmm. 
nor fruit trees, but only if they have fruit. Oh, those are the ones they can spawn under. Oh, okay. So what are the ones they can't spawn under? Fruit trees if they don't have fruit on them? And... Regular trees or cedar trees if they have a hidden item. As well as, what about um, trees that are like uh, not fully grown? And they have to be fully grown. Cool. Uh, this is, I don't care, it's, it's not near one. Cool. Well, it's good to get more detailed information. I don't think I knew that. The exact trees with which mushrooms could or could not spawn under. Yes. I did know that color. I have found five mushrooms in front of one tree before. And I knew they couldn't spawn behind it. I wonder what happens if you don't have any available trees for mushrooms to spawn. But you do have trees, but none of them meet those criteria. What about bees? Do they count, or is that considered a hidden item? Okay. Interesting. Next, I'll be curious about the bees, because sometimes not all five bees spawn in one day, if you don't have enough trees. But you can still get, like, bell bags or furniture. Or nothing. Maybe. Oh, wait, that's what- that's how I've gotten five- Uh, that's how I've gotten five mushrooms to spawn is because I had a bunch, I had a handful of regular trees, but I chopped on all my other trees in town. I had like seven or eight regular trees slash cedar trees. And then I had one fruit tree. That explains it. And it all spawned around the fruit tree. Whoa, what the heck was that? Hold on, let me check the bite time for the arowana. I think that was a rainbow trout. But it got away from me. Pretty sure the buy time for the arowana is actually pretty chill. Yeah, the buy time for the arowana is chill. Same with the rainbow trout and the bass and the dace. Huh. Unless it was an eel. Well, it was not an arowana. Whatever it was. Has to do with the order. Yeah, I'm curious what the order is. Does it go like one bell bag, one B, one bell bag, one B, furniture? Or does it go like all, first all the furniture, then all the Bs, then all the bell bags? It'd make more sense if they did it one group at a time.
Yeah, I know. The game prefers to place the mushrooms in a unique acre. I did know that. But it doesn't have to be. Oh, a unique X acre. Oh. Really? So that way it's more like hidden, I guess. Now, when you say X, is X a letter or a number? Does it represent a letter or a number? Is it the row or the column? Oh, it's the row. Okay. The column? Oh, yeah, the column. Right, there's five columns, five mushrooms. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Cool. That is good to know. Optimize mushroom searching. Well, good stuff, Kyler. Thank you for sharing your mushroom info that you gathered. I don't know when I'll do another mushroom-related challenge, but maybe as like a part of a different challenge. Good to have some more info. Yeah, there we go. Collecting all the food items. Yes. All the different fruits. Mushroom, candy. What else can you eat? I think that's it. Turnip. Turnips. There we go. That is interesting. Well, they're, you can eat them, so... To me, they're a food item. To you, they're a food to item. <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> They're a kabu item. Well, that's what turnips are in Japanese. I think. Yeah, I definitely knew that because I'm proficient in Japanese. Not because um, of kabu manager or anything along those lines. Related to stock market uh, price prediction. What are some of your options for your next source files to work on? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
anything I want to understand better? Hmm. Let's see. What do I want to understand better? Yeah, a lot of the stuff that I'm curious about, or have been curious about in the past, we've either looked it up already, or we already knew, for the most part. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, you should figure out why the bar knife jaw can't be caught five days before uh, it appears in season. Or four days. Alright, well this is not a Dacer Arowana. Let's see if it's an eel. It is not. I do not want it. I don't think this is a Dacer or an Arowana. Yeah, there you go. There's one. The set Gyo Yai actor. Yes. You need it for complete decomp. That's what you need it for. Oh, are there prerequisites? Oh, I gotcha. I understand. I don't either. Couldn't tell you either. And you've already done the town generation code? Nope. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe there's something we've missed. Maybe. be a good one. Good gene. I see. Well, set manager sounds like a boring one. Well, when I said boring, I meant 
it would take a while to do. And without a whole lot of, I don't know, information be gained from it. But I could be wrong. Okay, I would have caught that fish if it wasn't for you. That was probably the arowana. Okay, there are no lucky cats in this game. There are as beta items, though. So I guess you will be my lucky cat. Oh, 5 a.m. It's been almost one hour of arowana fishing. Five AM music's actually really good. I just don't hear it very often. Okay, there you go, Tyler. That's not too bad, then. I don't think this is a day certain arowana. And I was correct. So at like 5.50, I'm going to um, go back to 4 a.m. Because at 6 a.m. it's a new, it's technically a new Animal Crossing day. And I want to fish between 4 to 6 a.m. We'll see if it happens. I I estimate about on average an hour and a half to catch an arrow on on average. Well, whatever this is, it's not an arrow on. Mm 
Alright, I think I'm ready to catch the arowana whenever now. It's been an over an hour. I'm ready to catch it now. We'll see. Nope. What is the Rainbow Trout AI? Oh, actually, you don't. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's the same as the bass. I say. Oh, whatever. No, I said days. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, there's a bass and a bass, but there's, <laughs> but it's the dace and the bass, not the bass. Get, not get confused now. Is everyone excited as I am to catch this arowana? It is my favorite shiny that I made. And any single one of these fish could be it. Well, any single one of these medium fish. Except for this one. But it's been a while since we got an eel. Let's see if it's an eel. It is not an eel. Watching closely, awesome. 
good on the edge of your seat for over an hour straight. That's what I like to hear. We have another eel. I'm pretty sure I'm like 95% sure this is an eel. No, I was wrong. That surprises me. Oh well. We did not have another eel. Whatever that is, it's not a dace or an arrow one. I'm going to try to filter better. Now that I really want to catch this arowana soon, I'm going to try to improve my filtering. I don't think this is a, a dace. No. Hey, Becca. The shiny fish is... The shiny fishing is going well. Having a nice, chill arowana session. I haven't caught it yet, but... It's been nice and chill and relaxing. It's been nice. How are you doing? Awesome. Good to hear. Yeah, having a nice, fun, chill time fishing. Can't complain.
I don't think this is a Dacer Arowana. Yeah, I'm pretty much I'm pretty similar to that pun as well. The the bass. However, the sea I got a sea bass. Sea bass? That pun's pretty well ingrained in my mind as well. But yeah, the New Horizons one sticks out as well. What is what is this fish? Bass. But yeah, the regular bass, the drummer pun doesn't doesn't really stick for me. But the C plus, yeah, it sticks. Oops. For the C bass. I've decided I'm no longer messing around. I will only catch fish that could be dace or arrow uh, as best as I can. Oh, I don't think this was one of them. Yep, serious fishing time. I've enjoyed messing around for this long. It's time. Can this fish... Okay. Oh, it's kind of far away. Uh, not sure yet. Okay, now I'm pretty sure. Actually, that one could have been. Oh, well. That one's not... No, it wasn't good enough. Could be anything.
Ah, same. No, it's not anything. Nope, not good enough. Don't know what it is. Maybe. No, it's not. It's not it. We'll catch it, though. Yeah. I'm impressed I haven't run over my flowers yet. Oh, that was a bad cast. Uh, I don't think this is it. No. I know, don't jinx it. I, I, gotta, I gotta be careful with that. I know, I've made a mistake. Well, we'll see what happens. If enough time passes, it will be unjinxed. I think that's how that works. I don't know about this one. We'll see. Yeah, well, now I know. Yeah, maybe that's how it works. Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Oh, this could be anything. Well, I'm approaching what I believe is the average amount of time it will take to catch an arowana. We're not, we're not even quite there yet. could be anything. Whoops. Well, I thought, I thought that was the fifth bite. I miscounted. Oops, that was a medium fish. I don't know what this is. Now we know.
Alright. Nope. Just a dace. But could have been it. There was a possibility. I don't think this is it, but it swam quickly toward the bait, so I wasn't able to determine. Pretty sure a dace would have gone after that, or an arowana. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's a 1 in 600. It's not going to be easy. This is officially the longest it has taken to catch a single fish. Knowing it is possible to catch the fish. And that is okay. I had a feeling this is the hardest fish for this entire challenge. So I am not surprised. Just catching this. No. I don't think so. I don't know. Now I know. Mm-hmm. 
Just gotta think of how awesome it's gonna feel to catch this thing. It's gonna be pretty cool. What color will it be? Hmm. think of a shiny arowana, what do you envision? Well, hopefully we'll find out soon. kind of weird green. A lot of them do seem to be that way, don't they? Not all of them, though. Alright, so your guess is green. Okay. One for green, one for aqua so far. Imagine I don't change it. Because it's already perfect. <laughs> Tyler says gold. One green, one aqua, one gold. <laughs> one of those barely shiny shinies. I'm trying to think of an example in Pokemon of a barely shiny shiny, because I know what you're talking about. There are plenty of them. Oh yeah, Gengar. Yeah, that's a good example. And Garchomp, apparently. Squirtle is... I mean, you can tell it's a shiny. It's lighter blue. But yeah, Gengar is one of those barely shiny shinies. That stands out to me. What about Rimmerade? I mean, it's kind of a dull gray compared to its dull blue. <laughs> Have I had any barely shiny, shiny fish so far? I'm trying to think of a, the closest.
I mean, the sea bass, maybe. It's more bluer than it is green, I guess. Lots of dace, that's for sure. Imagine Erewhon is actually impossible to get five days early. Wouldn't that be hilarious? That'd be that'd be comedy gold. Oh hey, we got an eel. I am once again 95% sure. We do not have an eel. I was once again 95% sure and completely wrong. That's so weird. I swear that those rainbow trouts are acting like eels. But they must barely be outside the vision range, or the vision angle. The only thing I can think of. That was a bass? That's the same vision angle as a rainbow trout? And that thing is acting like a dace. It's crazy. It's craziness. Oh, there's an eel. <laughs> See, they still exist. Well, I am officially in bad luck. Bad luck territory for this arowana. That is eel number five. One got away. And I'm sure there's been more that I've scared off. Officially in bad luck. Five eels per arowana on average. That is the fifth guaranteed eel. Predict one in 20 minutes. I hope so, because then I don't have to change time back to 4.02 a.m. Also, fun fact, I, I wonder if this is why the first day of summer in Animal Crossing is May 27th. Five days before June 1st. Probably is why. Probably not a coincidence. See what time is it? 5.40 a.m. Alright. 
15 more minutes till I'm going back. It's not the end of the world if it happens, but it would be cool if I didn't need to. Oh, I'm so glad I have no more one in a hundreds after this, minus the Arapaima, which is guaranteed once we find it. Well, if I catch it, of course. No more insane one in a hundreds. Oh yeah, the sun is coming out. <laughs> it is sunrise. We've never seen a sunrise because you can't actually see the sun. In the sky. There is no sun. There's only illusions. But I know what you mean. It is getting brighter. Cool. Oh, I don't want this. What do we have here? A not arowana. That's for sure. Yes, you can get a tan in this game. And it, you can get a very dark tan. And it doesn't take too long either. However, it has to... I think... You know, that's a good one, Kyler. What hours of the day can you get a tan? And what days exactly does it start? It's summer months. But I don't think it starts in June. I think it's July. When you can start first start getting a tan. July through the end of August, maybe. July 15th through August 31st makes the most sense to me. But I'm thinking it extends beyond that a little bit. Ten more minutes. Will we get an arowana in ten minutes? Technically eleven. Oh really? July 16th through September 15th. Interesting. Between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Cool. I did not know those exact that exact information. Of course, you can get it year-round on the island. Oh, and you also can't be holding an umbrella.
The loom presents have a 20% chance to hold fruit and an 80% chance to hold an item from your rare list. A furniture item from your rare list. And I think it has it's specifically a foreign fruit as well. Yeah, it pulls from the foreign fruit list. So you can still um, have the bug where you might not, where you it will be impossible to get an orange if you don't have peaches in your town. And yes, the higher your goods power is, and wait, well, I thought it was, um, I thought it was your town rating, not your goods power. That was both. Okay. And they can appear on certain minute intervals, just like the uh, just like New Horizons and other games. I forget which minute intervals. <sighs> oh. Is it two and six? Or two and seven, I mean, or one and six? No, yeah, it's one and six. One and six. And it can appear from any direction except the from the beach. It can appear from any side except the beach. I think. Except I should say from the south side. They are pretty rare. Like, I haven't seen one this whole... Or wait, no, I've seen one this challenge, I think. You pretty much have to just be running around your whole town. Find one. You, like, if you're, if you're looking for him. Oh, it's not a specific minute. Oh. Cool. But it is on the minute. I think I know that much. I think I'm pretty confident about that. It spawns on the minute, I think. Unless it's just been coincidence. Which is possible. Dang, lots of dace. How are we doing? Six more minutes. Will we get an arowana in six minutes? Or are arowana even possible? That'd be crazy if they weren't. It'd be so hard to determine that. It would have to take like 30 hours of fishing until I'd be like, mm, yeah, they're not, they don't exist. And even then.
Is a balloon guaranteed to spawn as soon as that reaches zero? Okay. You know what? Pretty sure this is not an arowana, but I'm gonna confirm that. Cool. Alright, how are we doing now? Four minutes. More complicated than that. That's right, Kyler. I remember that now. It, it, once it reaches zero, then like there's a percentage that changes until it's a hundred, and then a balloon is guaranteed to spawn. I remember that at some point. One minute till we go back. You know, we'll do three more medium fish. I'll catch them all. So we go back to 402. Two. 
Okay, it is at a certain minute. Okay, cool. All right. Last medium fish, then we're going back in time. All right, going back in time. What time is it? Oh, wait. It's only 5.55. I caught three medium fish in one minute. We'll do three more. That three and eight. Okay. One. Two. Oh, so fast. About three medium fish in a row very quickly. We'll do one more. There, that'll be seven fish since I said three more. That's a that's a good number. Alright. Back to four. 402. Well, it is proving to be a very challenging fish. I might not even get it the entire stream. And we go back. Yeah, I was definitely hoping to get it by now. But that's okay. Back to 4 a.m. Dark outside again. <laughs> Imagine I instantly catch it. That would have been crazy. Alright, we have a believer. I hope they're right. We have two believers in chat. Back to 4 a.m. We'll see how this goes. That'd be cool to do a time lapse of the entire day cycle for Animal Crossing. I should do that.
Oh, what do we have here? Not an arowana. Oh, I don't care what this is. It's the bass. Yeah, let's see. There could be different time lapses in different areas. So, like, what it looks like inside a house. What it looks like outside. Um, various buildings. Inside an igloo. Actually, that would not be interesting. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it would be. In the museum, that would be a good spot. The bug section. Good idea. Because you can see the different bugs and their activity throughout the day. That's a good one. Ooh, yeah, okay, okay. I know where I would stand if I were to do one outside. I would do one of those overlooked acres. I think that'd be a cool spot. Like the waterfall overlook. Oops, that was a medium. Fine. It was probably just the arowana. No big deal. Whoops. Probably also the arowana. No big deal. You're right, Kyler. You're absolutely right. Why didn't I think of that? Alright, I'll do that. Dang. I knew there was a possibility that was actually it. Nope, just another dace. This is not it.
This could be it. It is just another dose. Alas. I don't know, Kyler. Maybe. Gotta believe. Well, I don't believe that was an arowana. This one. Hugging the wall. Ugh. Stop hugging the wall. Oh, well, this is not it. But I'll catch it anyways. That's alright, though. We're having a good time. I'm having a good time. Nice and chill. Though, I am ready to catch it whenever. But, still a good time. Yeah, you're right, Tyler. The bass is really just a shiny green arowana with a texture change. I just need to convince Blathers of that now, and then it'll be good. You know what? I know what the issue is. I haven't pulled up the stats of what the likelihood of finding dace are or rainbow trout are. As soon as I pull up the stats, I always catch the fish. Once the fish realizes that it's against it's it's currently against the stats, then it, it then it corrects its mistake. Alright, let's figure that out. So it is currently May, between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. Dace are a 6.25% chance. Same with Rainbow Trout. Bass are 18.75%. And Dace and Arowana share the same AI. All the other fish do not. Well, Rainbow Trout and Bass do. They share the same AI. And then there's technically the possibility of getting an eel, which is a 1 in 120 roughly. And the Arowana is 1 in 600, roughly. Probably a day. Probably a day. That was the first time I actually, like, knew it could have been an arowana and missed it. I would have been... Well, oh well. No way to know. I was looking... I was... Focusing too much on the stats. It was probably a dace. I mean, if a dace is 6.25% and an arowana is 1 in 600. A 
Let's see, 6.25 is 1 in 15, roughly, I think. 1 in 16. Versus 1 in 600. How many dace did I catch on average before an arowana? 40? Nah. 35. Something like that. I've definitely caught over 35 days. Definitely. Easily. So for every 35 days, I should catch one arrow one. I think. Did I do that right? No, it's more than that. No, that's about right. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I've probably caught about 40 to 50 days. Maybe. Maybe more. Who knows? I've lost count a long time ago. Yeah, I'll call the person that releases all these fish into the river and ask them what is going on here. Where's my 1 in 600 arowana? I've been fishing for two hours. It's time. Oh yeah, the season fish is an intended mechanic. They specifically programmed it in the game. It's very complicated, but there is a lot of code specifically related for seasonal and out-of-seasonal fish. It took a while to figure out. Yeah, it's a pretty neat mechanic. But 100% intentional. And unnecessarily complicated, in my opinion. But Nintendo sure is proud of their fishing mechanics in various games. Yeah, the idea is to uh, blur the limits between seasons, yes. Yes, that is probably the reason why they do it. However, they don't do a good job of that with the ground, which is way more noticeable than fish when it comes to seasonal differences. They absolutely could, like, they definitely could have transitioned seasonal ground changes a lot better and a lot smoother, but they were just lazy. There's no reason why it's so, like, s complete snow on the ground one day, nothing at all on the next day.
They could have had transitional ground patterns with partial snow on the ground. That looks like it was melting. Maybe they tried and they thought it was weird. Or they thought it looked weird. That's a possibility. Yeah, nothing unusual about complete in entire snow melt while you're inside a building for a split second. Nothing weird about that. Nothing unusual. Happens all the time. But only in Japan. That's why that's why it's so unusual to us. Right, right. Something like that, yep. Whenever I miss fish, 99% of the time it's because I know it's not going to be an arowana. I don't know about 9. 99 is pretty uh, generous. 95. <laughs> Ideally, I don't catch any rainbow trout, bass, or eels. I should be able to distinguish if they are uh, what they what those fish are before I catch them. If I'm good enough, like this is gonna be a dace or an arowana. Hopefully, an arowana. That's ah, a dace. It's another dace. That was a bad cast, but should be enough information. Oh, I don't want to catch it. Yeah, one in six hundreds are no joke. The rarest fish in the game is proving to be a true adversary. There's also a slim 
possibility that it doesn't even exist on May 27th, since we've already discovered that for one of the fish. But at 1 in 600, it's uh, very hard to say. <laughs> it would be very sad. It's unlikely, because the only fish that had that issue was an ocean fish. And the rainbow, not, well, yeah, every other uh, fish in the game, rainbow trout, eel, angelfish, large char, giant cat, giant catfish, guppy. They all exist. Yeah, drain the water to check. I just want to know. I'll put it right back. Hey, ghosts. Do I play GameCube casually? Um, I do have a casual town. I actually have several casual towns. I occasionally load them up, yes. Like my hacked town, for example. As well as my original one from my childhood. I do occasionally load that up. What do you mean? So, what you're telling me is what I'm doing right now not casual? Is fishing for two hours straight for a single fish not casual enough for you? <laughs> Hey, greens. Yeah, Wild World's cool. Its portability and online capabilities are, are pretty nice. But yes, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Wild World just because of its graphics are uh, less than ideal in my in my mind. But I played about thirty hours of it. I gave it a good solid attempt. But I ultimately concluded I am a fan of playing on a big screen with a controller and not a stylus. But I definitely appreciate Wild World for what it is. It's not for me. Oh well, there's an eel. It's good to confirm. We still got the the fish term index value at five.
that is the fifth eel that I've actually caught. And the six that I can confirm exists. The megaphone. I don't know what that is. I swear, every single every single stream that we talk about New Leaf, I learned something new about it. There's just so much about it. Well, I also have never played it. So what do you do? You call their names? Do they, like, like just show up next to you? Oh, I have a 3DS. All right, no, I don't have a 3DS. I have a 2DS. I have a regular DS. Oh, cool, another eel. I'm really good at catching one in 120s, apparently. Ah, I see. I like the megaphone. That's pretty nifty. It has a lot of good mechanics, it sounds like. A lot of good features. Wait, I actually don't know the odds of the eel right off the top of my head right now. I think it's 1 in 120. Yeah, I'm correct. Actually, it's closer to 1 in 100. Okay, eels are more like 1 in 100. So on average, I should catch six eels per arowana, which I officially have. I'm always surprised to hear more New Leaf features that aren't in New Horizons. Seems like there's a lot.
Towns versus islands. I think they're both fine. As long as it has a really cool setting. Doesn't really matter a lot to me. Keep in mind, islands can be huge. Like, I mean, in real life. As long as it's a cool setting, doesn't matter to me. Yep, you can catch fish out of season up to five days before they're normally supposed to spawn, actually. And that is coded into the game's mechanics. I think it's actually true for other all the other Animal Crossing games as well. My goal is to catch every seasonal fish the max amount of days possible before it's supposed to spawn in season. It is six times rarer to find find fish five days in advance. So there are several fish that are one in a hundred. They now become one in six hundred. Hence shiny fishing. And I'm going for the hardest one right now. And yeah, it's it is proven to be very, very difficult. They cannot be caught five days after, no. Only five days before, for some reason. Lazy programmers. Lazy devs. Sort of lazy. I hope I catch this thing today. I only really have, like, one more hour to catch it. Just kind of hoping I'd at least catch it. Catch one new fish. We'll see. I've caught all the other 1% in, in an hour or less. Or just over an hour or less. But this one... Caused me a lot of trouble. Well, no, it's not wasted time. I'm having a great time. Right, yeah, every fish that isn't an arowana will somehow improve the chances of it being an arowana for the next one. I think that's how that works.
I knew it. Another one in a hundred. Number seven that I've caught, and surely I've scared away a handful of them as well. Yeah, I probably should have found a, about or around two arowanas by now, on average. Really? Another eel? No, it's not. Never mind. It's so interesting how sometimes the bass and rainbow trout act like an eel with their vision. Even though it looks like they should be able to go for it. Must be a perspective thing. Hey, this literal child has been doing great up to this point. Beginner's luck. Yeah, it is 4 a.m. after all. That is pretty, pretty late or early. That's how you know it's late, is when it could also be early. Mm-hmm. 
All right, I'm gonna go fish in a different acre. Starting to get superstitious. Time to mix it up a little bit. There, I've mixed it up. No, I'm just gonna. I am gonna go. I don't know. Somewhere else. <laughs> Let's go over here. Mix it up over here. Well, whatever this is, it's not a dace or an arowana. But I'm going to catch it anyways. Well, never mind. It's not an eel. Let's go to a lower, let's go to the lower section of town. That sounds fun. Oh yeah, that's not, not a medium fish. You know what, let's go see if we can find Wisp. He might be around town somewhere. Maybe Wisp will bring us good RNG. There's a medium sized fish. Should I wait for it? Sure, why not? So I haven't caught a brook trout yet. That's why. Silly me, I need to catch every possible medium fish. This thing ever decides to swim down here. There we are. There we go. Now I've caught every possible medium-sized fish. Now we're good to go. All right. Um, let me uh, let me fish in every acre, and then we'll complete the ritual. Catch a medium fish in every acre, and the ritual will be complete. Every uh, possible acre, of course.
Flipping the acre doesn't necessarily make the fish move down the acre. But I like to think it does. I can at least check for other fish while it's moving down the acre. Alright, let's fish off the waterfall. Alright, well, we did that. Let's go down. Complete the ritual with one medium-sized fish in the waterfall acre. And then we should be able to catch our arowana shortly after that. Proven ritual. Works every time. Oh yeah, a uh, large char can be caught as well in this acre. That's fun. I, that might have been a large char. Alright, I've completed the ritual. I've caught a medium fish in every acre, every river acre. And I caught every medium fish except the arowana that I can catch right now. All six of them. It is time to catch the seventh one. Right now. Never mind. Probably. Yeah. Oh, is that right, Kyler? That sounds that sounds like that should work. Well, unfortunately, it's past 4:30 a.m., so I think I'm out of luck. Dang. Well, next time it's 4:30 a.m. Oh, you saw something like that in the code, really? Wow. That's amazing. The devs really really thought of it all, didn't they? It's a secret debugging technique. Gotcha. That it's left over still in the game. Final release. Mm, okay. Yeah, no, that all makes sense now. It's... That's uh, perfectly logical and understandable. Well, next time it's 4.30 a.m. Were there any other times that work? I don't have an umbrella either. Bummer. I think I remember something like that CRQ. Maybe once, and I ignored it. So probably just you with the weirdos, yeah.
Hey, Spear. Thanks for the good luck. Brian Moped 16. That's... Well, that's not me. I don't know who you're wishing good luck. So, uh, never mind. That sounds like a weird wild, wild world thing. There are no villager pictures in this game. Those sounds like a standard wild world player. <laughs> no, I, I've never heard of that CRQ. But I could definitely see something like that, like that existing. Oh my goodness! How many dates is that? Who's counting? Is that date number sixty? There are no shiny Pokemon in Animal Crossing. Unfortunately. But there are shiny fish. Sort of. Now that CRQ, that is a true statement. It's the popular fortune. And character and villagers of the villagers of the opposite gender will like chase after you. <laughs> and they'll like say hi to you without you greeting them. They'll greet you. That is true. That is not a rumor. <laughs> Yeah, basically shiny Magikarp hunting right now. Very true. Very accurate. See, there's a shiny Rainbow Trout right there. But I don't want that. Arowanas do look like Magikarps. At least their color does. What does that icon next to your name mean? Does it mean you're not watching? Only listening? The cool badge. That's pretty cool. You can turn it on for no reason. I see. Oh, 5 a.m. Another hour has passed. And no arowana. Well, yeah, if you're typing in chat, you'd have to have an overlay over the the view the uh the stream that prevents you from being able to see the stream yeah but if you're typing in chat it means you have the stream up oh unless you're doing uh well even if you're doing tts or not tts but like uh yeah tts or no the opposite stt Speech to text. 
it still will make Twitch the active window, I think. Yeah, there you go. You you taped a piece of paper over your screen. Uh so you block the stream but not your not the Twitch chat. Yeah, there you go. Now it all makes sense. Hey Hinder, thank you for the good luck. Oh, you didn't say good luck. Nice to see me again. Good to see you for the first time. Hope you're doing well. Oh, you know what? Maybe part of your screen is broken. Like, you're on mobile. And uh, your phone is so badly broken that no matter what you do, you just can't watch the stream. But you can still type in chat. There you go. That's a possibility. Yeah, it is some serious dedication to chatting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a very unique situation. But, you know, Twitch thinks of it all. Never mind how you managed to navigate to that that streamer's uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch page. But, but, you know, you just have it as a default. Oh, is that right? Mobile has an audio-only option? Oh, okay. I did not know that. That, okay, that, that actually explains it. Okay. The mystery has been solved. I clearly don't use mobile a lot, because it just destroys my battery. No, I wasn't memeing. I actually did not know that. <laughs> Maybe if I talk louder, Kyler, you can hear me. Kyler, what do you mean you can't hear me? Sure you can. You can lip-read. I guess that's not listening. Streamer, what did you do? I can't see you anymore. What have you done? This is your fault. I'm not listening. <laughs> Can you have both badges at once? Can you... No, no video. <laughs> Sadly, no. Aw. I feel like if you could, that would be heavily used. Ironically, of course. Yeah, the just here for chat badge. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with interacting with the streamer. <laughs> Twitch doesn't like that idea. 
I don't think. Dang, I only have like 30 minutes left until I have to go to bed. Come on, Arowana. It's like... It's like 60 days. Daces? Dace? Daces? I don't know. Too many. No, oh, this is a dace or an Arowana. Dace. Dacey. <laughs> Dice. What about bass? Basses? Is that right? English is weird. Kyler, you must have had that uh, no audio badge earlier because I mentioned that like three times. That would suck though. That's fair. Well, if you weren't paying attention, you should have a badge that shows you're not paying attention. Where's the not paying attention badge? Yeah, but how's I supposed to know you're working on the set manager actor? If there wasn't a badge to indicate that. No, that's not good enough, Kyler. It took too long for me to decipher those... those random words that you put on the screen. I needed a picture. Fully understand what you're doing. Preferably in badge form. You know, if you send me a Discord voice, uh, like, thing that is a variety of clicks and sounds, I will mute you on, uh, on the, on our Discord channel for two days. It's like being banned, but less aggressive. Anyways, yeah, it would really suck if the arowana was bugged. That would be a real shame, because it's really hard to figure that out. With 100% certainty. Considering, you know, it's a 1 in 600 fish. And we don't have any indication of how it could be bugged. But I don't think it is. Because we've got the angelfish, we've got the piranha, we got the guppy. Those are all 1%s. Turned into uh, 1 in 600s. And I got all those. I think it's just really bad luck. How often do I stream on Twitch? That's a great question. Typically whenever I'm in the mood. Maybe if I was partnered, I would be more regular. But I'm not. 
Even though I have, I've applied for it. Even though I've met the requirements to be a partner. Twitch turned me down. Because it wasn't consistent enough. That was, that was cool of him. Oh yeah, you're partnered, Aaron. It doesn't do anything. I thought for some reason you got paid more from subs. Maybe that's a that was a thing of the past. That must be a thing of the past. <laughs> it does not get you paid more. I thought you got paid from ads more. Not that I run those, but maybe seven years ago. Dang. Uh, felt like yesterday. You get e you get e more emote slots. I know that's true. And um, what else does it do? Your vods stick around for sixty days as opposed to fifteen days. And um, you could. Try to get on the front page. Maybe. Regardless, though, if I met all the requirements for Twitch partnership and I was declined, they should change their requirements. It's ridiculous. Oh, whatever. More emotes would be cool. They, they clearly don't give it away like candy nowadays. Because I did grind it out. I, I streamed for 21 days in one month. I averaged over 75 viewers. And I streamed for, like, 40 hours last month. It was one month ago when I went hard on speedrunning Animal Crossing. And they turned me down. I applied the moment that it, uh, that I was eligible. Yeah, it was really weird. It made zero sense to me. So I was just, I was like, well, clearly, clearly we don't need to stream regularly anymore. Because Twitch doesn't care. But it's fine. Whatever. I'm over it. You know what else is absurdly unlucky? Catching this arowana. I think that was the ninth eel? Which is one in a hundred. And the sad thing is, if arowana is bugged and it's actually impossible, I'm not going to be convinced for like probably like 50 hours. That would really suck. Oh yeah, let's see what time is it. 5.15, okay. So we're not going to reach 6 a.m. in today's stream.
Oh, really? The Animal Crossing Sunrise is almost synced to your IRL Sunrise right now. Oh, that's right. You live in Europe somewhere. That's that's funny. That's nice. It's cool. There is a way to sync Animal Crossing Sunrises with your real-life Sunrise. And that's to play in real time. But that also assumes you play bright and early. People do that? <laughs> That's a thing? I thought RTC stood for random time clock. That's true, it does not match throughout the year. Animal Crossing apparently takes place perfectly on the equator. Never off by a single second. And even that varies throughout the year, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. I've never been perfectly on the equator. Couldn't tell you. Or have I? I guess I have. When I flew to Peru, there was a very split second I was perfectly on the equator in the air. What on earth did you just type, Kyler? Is that a latitude and longitude? Followed by 17.64? I don't even know what that means. I figured it was somewhere in Japan. That'd be crazy. If someone's like, hey, wait, whoa, that's, that's where I live. Creepy. I'm sure someone from that city has watched at least one of my videos at some point in time. Probably. Does the player character make any other sounds? Um, I don't think the player character makes, like, if you mean vocals, like, voice sounds. I don't think it makes any. It's all jingles. Background jingles. Jingles from the unknown. It doesn't make any vocal sounds when it catches a fish. That's just a random background jingle. But there are other jingles, yes. Like if you catch all the fish, that has a unique jingle. 
and paying off all your debts. And getting stung by a bee or bit by a mosquito. <laughs> They're humming. <laughs> Perfect ventriloquist humming. Do 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 do. Uh, yeah, you can hear the game without any audio if you open up the disc. Uh, you open up the disk drive? No, not the disk drive. What do you call it? The lid? If you open up the lid, the GameCube lid, during the demo screen, the music will conclude and become silent. Well, it'll eventually conclude. Unlike this challenge, apparently. I'd be impressed if you could hum this jingle. It is quite high-pitched. Maybe you could do it. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, that was the 10th eel that I've caught. Eel number 10. Should have caught two arowana by now, if they're possible to catch. What instrument makes that noise? Um, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. The the marimba. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it does. The biwa loot. The ditchery do. Modified, of course. Oh my goodness! It exists! <laughs> yes! It only took three hours! <laughs> there it is! The shiny arowana. Oh my goodness, it finally actually happened. It exists! It's a real fish! <laughs> it's real! <laughs> yes! It's not yellow, it's gold. Look at that shiny arowana. Oh, perfect. Look at it. That is the rarest fish in the entire game. Caught at the most difficult time to catch. It only took three hours. There's our golden dragonfish. Our golden arowana. Oh, finally. Jeez, that took forever. All right. Let's go save. Oh my goodness. I am so happy I actually found that thing. Wow. Yeah, that was just really bad luck. Yep, that's all it was. Just really bad luck. <laughs> it's real. We can move on. Yes. Well, we're not going to be completing this challenge today. But um, we're actually not done in May. What else do I have to catch, you have to say? Uh, well, now we have to go to the 
we have to play during the day. Next up... will be uh, the giant catfish. No, that's a lie. The giant snakehead. Yes, we still actually have one more uh, fish I'd like... No, don't demolish the house. We still have one more fish I would like to try to catch tonight. If not, no worries. The arowana, I'm just so glad I actually caught with 20 minutes to spare before bed. Um, But let's get these day fish. Wow, we still have the the fish term index value set to five. Wow, that was that was exciting. Do you guys like the shiny arowana? Anyways, up next will be a shiny giant snakehead. See if I can get it in 20 minutes. And then after that will be uh, the arapaima. That'll be the last one in a hundred, but that one should be relatively quick. Jeez, let's look at this one more time. Look at that arowana. I was starting to doubt it existed. But I also want to catch uh, a pale chub and a bluegill during the day as well. So as we run down to the lake to look for a giant snakehead, we try to find these fish as well. Actually, I'm going to get them before the lake. Because, um, as we have learned while trying to get the giant catfish, it was nice to implement net strats to uh, scare away fish that are far away. Oh, we got the bluegill. There we go. Bluegill is not seasonal, so it is not shiny. And I can catch it whenever, I just hadn't caught it yet. Nice tiny fish. And we're looking for a pale chub. That is correct, CRQ. Yeah, the jellyfish will be the very last fish. Oh, actually, that's not true. The salmon will be the very last fish. It will complete the one-year amount of gameplay. There's our pale chip. All right. Let's get that giant sneak in. What do I do for a living? Oh, it varies. Right now, I'm a civil engineer. That is my day job. Uh, yes, it did require a degree. So I do have a civil engineering degree. Alright, uh, anyways, lake over here. Yes, over here. So, we are looking for a giant snake head. Let's pull up the odds. The odds of the giant snake head are... Oh no, it's 5% right now, because it's June. Well, it'll, it's it's May, but this, these will be the June odds. So, we're actually looking at a 1 in 200. Oh boy. Wait, no, not 1 in 200. 1 in 120 on the dot. 1 in 120 on the dot. But with my my lake strats, I found this side of the lake, uh, you can see every single fish. Um, hopefully I can find it in 20 minutes. If not, it's all good, not the end of the world. But as you can see, it takes much longer to search for fish at the lake. Yep, I have many talents. Some include playing Animal Crossing. Some include engineering. Some include, uh... What, are, what, what other talents do I have? I'm sure I have some more. I'm really good at sleeping. I'd say that's one of my, my stronger talents. 
I am good at walking. You're right, Kyler. That is true. I'm good at... Yeah, well, catching fish is lumped into Animal Crossing. At least uh, in this context. But yet you were correct, yeah. I would say I'm decent at it. Good enough. I've tried it IRL. It was alright. Ah, oh, you're right. Maybe now that I have, you know, all this experience with fishing and Animal Crossing, maybe I'll translate to real life fishing. Vision angles of various fish. Mm, yeah, I think you're onto something. I could be a professional angler. That's a that's a thing, right? Sure it is. Oh yeah, for sure, Kyler. Yeah, they definitely, they, especially the coelacanth. They really needed to, I think that was the one they spent the most time on. Don't forget percentages. The AC devs traveled to, I don't know. They just, they fished for months straight, collecting data on fish. And they determined 1% chance to find arowana. Every 100 fish they caught, it was an arowana. And they did it uh, throughout the entire year. Well, they never found, they never caught a whale. That's why the whale doesn't, um, is not actually catchable. They, they never could catch one. They did give it percentages. That is true. But that's, uh, that was their best guess. Yeah, they saw it once. Yep. The whale speaks like Mabel. What are you talking about? But you're right. Wh whales are mammals, I guess. I guess that's true. I would say the whale speaks closer to the the player character. It it doesn't say anything. Oh, okay, Kyler. I, I thought you were onto something. If you do catch it, which you can only catch it by spawning the thing uh, through a hack. Uh, I did not realize it goes out of bounds and says, Welcome to the Able Sisters. I actually didn't know that. I've never caught a whale because you can only catch it with hacks. I believe. That's a fun fact. That's a good question, Cart. Has every single possible dialogue been uttered? <laughs> Probably. There are a lot of extremely rare dialogues, though. But between every single person, well, every possible dialogue, Some rare ones are just like random dialogues when they're in a particular mood relating to a holiday. There's one with there's one that's that has a typo that I remember very well. It's the fall equinox, and it's around the fall equinox at nighttime, I think. 
and it's a snooty villager, maybe. And the it's a typo. It's E Q U N. Wait, no. What is it? How did I? I forget. E Q U N I O X, maybe. Yeah, I think that's it. That's a uh, that's somewhat rare, but pro I would say probably ones that only occur when villagers are whistling, and it's related to an upcoming event. It would be fun to determine every single dialogue and how to activate it. That'd be a fun project. There you go, Kyler. Fun project to work on. Yeah, every item's been discovered. Now, the rarest dialogue is I caught an arowana. A shiny arowana. Yeah, I was gonna... Um, yeah, how's that How's that gonna work for you when you uh, start the... Uh, um, when you start the uh, decomp for the dialogue stuff? Is that just, is that one massive block or one massive function? I actually don't know exactly how it's broken up. One massive actor. Okay. Now, yeah, that'll be a blast. That'll be a really fun one. Kind of weird they made it an actor, but sure. Probably just lazy implementation. comes from OOT. That makes sense. Well, I got about I have about 5 minutes left of fun today. We'll see if I get the giant snake head in 5 minutes. It is a 1 in 100. Oh no, it's it's less than 1 in 100. It is 1 in 120. And it is only at the lake where we cannot filter through fish quickly. I've probably only gone through about 50 or so fish at the lake at this point. And the giant catfish, if anyone remembers that, that took forever, and those were those odds were twice as good as these. I don't even see the fish. Hmm. Well. Alright then. Well, clearly, I didn't run far enough away. When will I stream again? Probably tomorrow. Yeah, probably tomorrow. I would like to wrap up this challenge. There's a very good chance that tomorrow will be the last... Or only one more stream will be the last day for this challenge. Probably. Very good chance. 
There, of course, are a few more rare fish left to find, including this one. And the Arapaima. But I can't, I don't imagine they're going to take three hours like the Arowana did. And then I have to roll, uh, so I have three more one in six rolls I have to do. The one for the Sweetfish and Arapaima. The one for the Jellyfish. And the one for the Salmon. And, you know, those could take a little while. The jellyfish one will be quick. The salmon one should be relatively quick. What? No, I didn't mean to catch this butterfly. I was trying to scare away a fish. <laughs> I did not mean to catch that butterfly. <laughs> I didn't even know it was there. <laughs> didn't even recognize... Didn't even register there was a butterfly in front of my face. That was funny. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll probably stream tomorrow. Probably finish up the challenge. Sub-20 would be pretty cool. We'll see if it happens. It doesn't really matter. I think sub-24 is pretty cool. Sub-1 day, and that'll for sure happen. Not like it's a speedrun or anything. It's not, but it's... It's fun to see how optimal I can be when even though RNG is an incredibly major factor, there is still certainly plenty of skill involved. Like catching that butterfly. And I also plan on doing this challenge again with bugs. It's not again, but I'll, I plan on doing this challenge with the bugs at some point. I don't have that set up. But, uh, one day. <clears throat> I think bugs won't take as long. We'll see. Hard to say, though, because um, I can cycle through the fish very quickly in the corner acre. Bugs, though, I can't cycle through them as quickly. Because, you know, when you get dragonflies flying around, you have to completely leave the acre and re-enter it. Um, like, like, you have to leave the acre, run far away... And then re-enter it. And then you might get a new bug to spawn. And bugs are not guaranteed to spawn. There is a chance nothing spawns. And so you have to enter and exit acres multiple times sometimes to get bugs to spawn. And uh, and so that adds up. So I actually don't know which, is, which would take longer, bugs or fish. I still think fish will take longer. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. All right. Um, I think we'll cert we'll do three more fish at the lake. One. Two. Oh, we'll do seven. We'll do seven. Three. And then we'll call it a stream. Four. Five. Six and seven. All right, we will get the giant snake head next time. It was very unlikely I was gonna catch it or find it this time. We'll do uh, we'll do one more one more check while we're up here. Nice golden spot. One more check for the fans. I don't even see it. One more check up here. We'll call it a stream. 
There's the last check. All right. We will get the giant snake head next time. One more look at the shiny arowana, though. Doesn't that look awesome? Whoever guessed gold, that was Kyler. Gold was the correct answer. One shiny arowana. Very fun. Which should make sense. The golden dragonfish. <laughs> you you knew subliminally. Or subconsciously. I don't know. But yes, it was a logical guess regardless. And that is why I made it golden. The golden dragonfish. Well, I would say without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, last time we left off, it was definitely not 9.42 a.m. It's like 9.20. We'll go to uh, 9.25. That sounds good. Now nah, we'll go to 9.20. It was probably about 9.20. Doesn't really matter. All right, let's see. May 27th. Yes. Okay, we're good. It is fishing time. We'll see how this goes. The giant snake head is going to be a major find. It may make or break if this is going to be a finale tonight. See how it goes. We got the net, which is not used to catch fish, but rather to scare away fish. And we have one rare big fish to catch right now. The last daytime fish. Let's see. It's a 1 in 120. Let's see how it goes. Oops, I did not need to run that far. 1 in 120. Let's see how long this takes. Anyways, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's enjoyed their day since I last saw you. And hopefully you're looking forward to some more fishing. Yeah, I had a chill day today. Got some work done. Uh, pretty much it. Hung out with the cats. Cats are very happy that I work remotely. And yeah, work, sleep, eat, pet the cats, play Animal Crossing, can't complain. The greatest snack food. Uh, it varies for me, it changes regularly. Right now, probably goldfish. However, I also have loved having goldfish as snacks since I was like, as long as I could remember. We were, we were rewarded for goldfish when I was in kindergarten. And I don't know, I've, I've just loved them ever since. <laughs> and how ironic <laughs> that I am fishing and my favorite snack currently is goldfish. But it definitely changes. Sometimes it's Cheez-Its. Sometimes it is club crackers. Sometimes it's Gardettos. It really does change quite a bit. But yeah, I would say at the moment, Goldfish. I, in fact, I have a little small container of them right next to me as we speak. Hey, how's it going, Fricks? Thank you for the good luck. I'm gonna need it to find this giant snake head at a 1 in 120 odds at the moment. That, if, yeah, if we remember the giant catfish was a problem, that took forever. This is twice as rare as that. So fun stuff. See how this goes. 
if I can get it within an hour, I think I'll be on a on pace to complete this challenge tonight. The faster I get it, the better, though. Ah, that's great to hear, Frix. I did not realize you were on a speedrunning hiatus because of lack of a memory card. Well, glad you got that resolved. I also have my speedrunning memory card ready to go as well. It is good to have that ready. Because my last speedrunning memory card corrupted from this challenge. During, I guess I should say during this challenge and I had to start over. <laughs> yeah, I was a 1019. That is, of course, the speedrunning memory card. Also, Fricks, I agree completely. This is the worst lake for speedrunning. However, for this challenge, it's actually really... Oh my goodness, I found it. We got to 1 in 120. Now we only have to wait 30 minutes for this thing to get down here. <laughs> wow, we got to 1 in 120. Uh, this is the worst lake for speedrunning. However, I would say this is one of the best lakes for this challenge. Because you can see every single spot on this lake. You can see everywhere on this lake. Ooh, that was a nice, nice time save right there. It lunged downwards. Perfect. Do it again. Wow, this was super lucky. This could have taken over an hour to find. Easy. But there it is. There's the one in there. 120. Now, uh, now I just gotta catch it. Once it decides to get down here. Here, we'll do the waiting in another acre strat. I don't know if this works, but it feels like it does. But yeah, for this challenge, I would say this is the best lake. If not tied for the best, because you can see everywhere. Waiting five minutes is no big deal when it could take over an hour to find this thing at uh, 1 in 120 odds. So I am more than thrilled to have quickly found this thing. More than happy. I don't mind waiting a few minutes. This is great. I'm definitely completing this challenge tonight. Famous last words. Alright. It's coming down. Slowly but surely. There, yep, there we are. It's over halfway there. That's crazy. That only took like a dozen fish. I don't know. I feel like it. I feel like it. It uh, slowly. I feel like it gets to, it goes down the lake faster when you're in another acre. But I also am not 100% sure. And yeah, and it's more interesting to go back and forth. I'm also just going to play it safe. There's no, or This is not a speed run. I'm just going to wait till it's like super free to catch this thing. Before I even like go for it. I don't want to be like having to have the world's greatest reflexes to catch it. All right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> there we are, nice and easy. There we go, a shiny giant snakehead. Look at that, look at that fish. That is a shiny right there. Yes. Very colorful. A little less purple in the inventory icon, uh, but that's all right. We'll see it in the museum when I donate it. Let's go! Easy! Quick giant snakehead got insanely lucky. That's what we like to see. Makes up for the arowana luck yesterday. Yo, we just got a cosmic raid. What's up, everyone? Thank you very much, cosmic. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, everyone. Just in time for the shiny giant snakehead, and now we're moving on to 
the shiny Arapaima, and Sweetfish. But yeah, thank you very much, Cosmic. Appreciate that a lot. Hope the stream went well. Hope you're doing well. So, um, yeah, we'll see if it's the finale. Very high odds it's going to be the finale. We shall see. It's all going to come down to a few more 1 in 6 rolls. So, what we're doing now is we're going to get the Arapaima. We'll be going to June 26, which is the earliest possible day you could catch Sweetfish and Arapaima. And we're actually going to be going to 4 a.m. Because Sweetfish are more common at 4 a.m. versus midnight. And we'll be using Sweetfish to determine if we got the 1 in 6 chance of getting the, uh, the fish RNG roll. The fish term index roll. So, 4 a.m. June 26th, we go back a year so we don't get weeds. And, um, yeah, that looks good to me. Let's do it. So, now what we now what we do is we are rolling a 1 in 6. The 1 in 6 is going to, uh, it needs to be the max value of 5. We don't know what the value is. It is a hidden value, but we will try to figure it out through a few techniques. The technique I'll be using for this particular day will be to see if I can find a sweet fish. Sweet fish are small. They also have a picky vision-ish, picky-ish vision. And, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's not an angelfish. <laughs> Look at that. That's a shiny angelfish right there. <laughs> that is not what we wanted, but that is that is quite the find. <laughs> Uh, we'll save it for fun. We don't need to. We've already caught one. <laughs> we got ourselves a shiny angelfish like it was nothing. I may not save this. Uh, because if I don't get the sweet fish, if I did not get the one in six, we'll be resetting. Uh, wow. That was a shiny angelfish like it was nothing. Crazy. Very cool, though. Okay, well, anyways, as I was saying... We are looking for small fish. The small fish um, we will catch, and we are looking f specifically for a sweet fish. It's normal odds during June at 4 a.m. are like 27%. If you're trying to catch it out of season five days in advance, which is the very earliest you could possibly catch a sweet fish, the odds actually aren't too bad. They're, it's always one-sixth of its normal odds. So if it's 27%, that would be 4.5? Yeah. 4.5%. So a 1 in 20, roughly. Hello, Jade. 1 in 20. And uh, if we're only looking for small fish specifically. So if it's a small fish, it's actually probably closer to like... I don't know, one in seven, one in eight for a small fish. Maybe even better odds than that. Oh, what do we have here? Oh my goodness! I'm insanely low. Oh, it's a cherry salmon. I thought it was a sweet fish. I forgot my own shinies. Uh, yeah, never mind. We don't need this because it's still. Wait, cherry salmons are around in June? Apparently. I thought they went away I thought they went away in May. Or like May was their last month. Alright. Apparently you can catch cherry salmons in June. I don't know why I didn't know that. That is why that caught me off guard. I did not know that was an option. There's another one. Okay, so um cool cool shiny cherry salmon. However, we're those are very common, so we don't need those. And uh, we are looking specifically for a sweet fish. However, we have to roll a one in six. If we, if we're not, if we don't find a sweet fish after like, I'll give it about ten small fish or so. If we don't find it after ten small fish, we probably did not get the one in six, and then we will reset and re-roll the value. This is not anything useful. Honestly, I could probably do seven or eight. That's probably enough small fish to uh, 
be about 90, 95% certain that we did not get the 1 in 6 roll. But if we don't get the 1 in 6 roll, no big deal. We just simply reset and we re-roll the fish term index value. And we hope for the 1 in 6 again. Alright, two more small fish. Call it good. And I will pull up the odds of all the small fish here in a moment. I think I saw no, one more small fish. And then we'll reset. I'll pull up the odds for all the small fish at this time. I don't know why I didn't know cherry salmon wasn't around in June. It is kind of weird that it is, though. Because most fish that are around in March, they go away in May. Mostly. Or maybe they don't. I don't know. Alright, so... Probably did not get the 1 in 6, so we'll reset. And we'll try again. And we'll repeat this until we get the 1 in 6. And once we do, which I'll know because I will, I will have caught a sweet fish, then we go for the Arapaima. That's going to be a, the last huge find for this challenge. And then we will get a few more, few more 1 in 6s for the Jellyfish and Salmon. And that will wrap up this challenge. But this is the last major hurdle. Now we gotta deal with this. Alright, while I deal with this, let me pull all the odds for all of the fish. As well as the AI. As well. Where is the fish AI? Sweet fish, I believe, are search type. Oh yeah, what does he want me to say? I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop. My bad. Yeah, I'm being sincere. Sweet fish. Sweet fish. Oh, actually, have the same search range as angelfish. That's cool. Alright, so now we search again. And we'll repeat this until we get the 1 and 6. Hey, what's up, Kyler? Hey, ghost. Sorry, my cat is currently blocking my chat. So I can't... Oh, this is not a sweet fish. So, um, I currently can't really read all of chat at the moment. I'm trying. I I can only read chat in this small little window. <laughs> Bottom left. I got the giant snakehead about... 8 minutes ago. 9 minutes ago. I got insanely lucky. Uh, it only took me like a dozen fish until it appeared. It's crazy. So actually, we can catch a lot of small fish right now, believe it or not. We can catch, well, apparently a cherry salmon. Cherry salmon, small bass, crucian carp, freshwater goby, angelfish, piranha, and sweetfish eventually. That is all, oops, that's not a small fish. Right, so to answer everyone's questions, how are these fish shiny? It's a mod. It's only, uh, the, the mod only changes palettes. So there are no mechanics changed about the, uh, about how rare these fish are. This is, these are vanilla mechanics. I thought about doing this challenge without any mods, but I thought it'd be more fun to have some shiny fish to show off. So I made the palettes for the shiny fish, and, uh, Kyler and I worked together to get this mod ready to go. And, uh, so shoutouts to Kyler. And I'm just very happy that we got it to work. 
Palette Swap is a somewhat simple mod, but it is still it still took a while. There's lots of different palettes, even for one fish. Anyways, uh, yes, this what I'm doing. You do not need a mod to do this. However, you want a cool red cherry salmon like that, you will need a mod. But otherwise, catching these fish uh, in at rare times is com is completely vanilla, completely a standard normal mechanic, and it's pretty cool. So the sweet fish, probably like one in seven, one in eight for a small fish. Uh, but the Arapaima is normally a 1 in 100, roughly. Well, this is, it'll be 6 times rarer. So we're looking at a 1 in 600. Now, incredibly, I've already caught a handful of 1 in 600s. The one that took the longest was the Arowana. That was uh, 3 hours straight of fishing. And that did not even include the time it took to get the 1 in 6. Which I think took about 30 minutes. 30 to 40, 45 minutes or so. But yeah, thank you for the good luck. Oh, hey, Violet Pumpkin. Appreciate it. We'll see how it goes. I got the giant snake head out of the way very quickly, so I'm feeling pretty good about completing this challenge tonight. I have about three and a half hours so I have to go to bed. We'll see if I can complete it by then. Okay, Jade laid down. I can now actually fully read chat. Yeah, that's correct, Frix. However, if I go to fish at the lake for the Arapaima, wouldn't that be funny? Then it would actually be a 1 in 600. Alright, one more small fish. I probably did not get the one in six, but we'll do one more. And then we'll reset. Try again. This will be the last tough one in six to get. Because the jellyfish will be super easy to figure out if I got the one in six. It will not take long at all. The salmon will be slightly harder, but still super easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you ever catch an angelfish and reset your game? <laughs> and the reason why I'm not saving and changing time is because in order to re-roll the fish term index, I'd have to go to a lot of trouble of going back in time so I don't get weeds and uh, saving and quitting twice, which is actually slower than just resetting. All right, so let me pull up the percentages. So this... We're effectively July fishing, and it's 4 a.m. at the river. So we have Crucian Carp, which is 8%. We have the Small Bass, which is 6%. And we've got the Freshwater Gobi, which is... Oh, wait, no, I should be looking at... June times. I think that actually makes more sense to do. June times. Yes. Crucian Carp is 8.75% chance. 
Small bass is 6.25. Angel fish is 1.25. Crazy, I've already caught two of them. Um. Oh wait, there's no piranha out right now. Because it's 4 a.m. Right. We're on a leave at 4 a.m. Uh, cherry Sam is 6.25. Yo! Who did that? Anonymous Gifter? Thank you very much. Gifting five subs to uh, the community. Thank you so much. Congrats to Violet Pumpkin. To Mossy Matt. Uh, Hero Sia Dune. Asylum and Ghosts. Wow, I know four out of the five who got gifted subs. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. I'm glad you're enjoying the Animal Crossing content. And congrats to those who got subs. Thank you. Well, hey, that's just more motivation for me to do this challenge again, but with bugs. Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to run some stats here pretty soon and see what kind of odds we're looking at for this sweet fish, assuming it's a small. So, all right, let's add it up. 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Freshwater goby. Oh, yeah, that's also an option. 20, 21. Okay, so 21... Which means there's a 1 in 5 chance we'll find a small fish. Roughly. And if it's a small fish, 4.5... If it's a... What is this fish? Cherry salmon? I think it's the cherry salmon. Yeah. 1... The so 1 in 5 we find a small fish. And a 4.5% chance it's a sweet fish. But multiply that by 4 for small fish only, roughly. So. Sixteen? No, twenty. It's like a 1 in 5 chance the small fish will be a sweet fish. So I should catch... We'll go with 8. 8 small fish should be adequate to feel fairly confident if I got the 1 in 6. We'll go with that. 8 fish. 8 small fish. Feel pretty good with that. And also keep in mind, it's entirely possible... Though extremely unlikely, that's a cherry salmon, extremely unlikely uh, that we find an aeropyma before a sweet fish. And we'll know when we find an aeropyma. Okay, this is not a sweet fish. This is like a cruch and carp or small bass. We also have fish AI. Determines like how far away they'll bite the bait. Which I should... I should test because. Okay, so this is not a, cher a crucian carp or cherry or a, or a small bass, but probably a cherry salmon. Yeah. All right, one more small fish, and then we'll reset and try again for the one and six. Last small fish. All right, don't need it. That was a crucian carp or small bass. All right, we repeat this until we get ourselves a sweet fish. Now, what's interesting about this is that I'm starting at 4 a.m., even though midnight is an option. It is possible to catch Sweetfish at midnight four hours earlier. This is the only situation in which I'm not catching fish at the earliest possible 
minute. And the reason why is because sweet fish are about five times rarer at midnight versus 4 a.m. Now I could... I could make it more painful on, uh, on this challenge and try to catch it at midnight as opposed to 4 a.m. Alternatively, if I find it at 4 a.m., I could save and quit and go back to midnight and catch it then. But I thought, I decided 4 a.m. was probably the most reasonable thing to do. I don't really feel like spending 30 minutes for every 1 in 6 check. Yeah, that's a cherry salmon. Because if we're spending about 5 minutes per check right now, multiply it by about 5. It's about 25 minutes for every 1 in 6 check to feel pretty confident that there's no sweet fish. Alternatively, we could also try to use the Arapaima as the 1 in 6 check, which feels a little ridiculous, considering it's a 1 in, well, effectively 1 in 500, actually. That's about 20 to 30 minutes of acre flipping until I feel confident that I didn't, uh, we didn't get the one in six. So I think this is the less painful option. And let me know if you think I should go for the midnight checks. Because this is still the earliest day, which is the point of the challenge. It doesn't have to be the earliest minute earliest moment. Nice. Finding angelfish is like it's nothing, but uh, they're not exactly that common. I'm going to save them in case I get the one in six. Because it's a cool fish to look at. Alright, it's a freshwater goby, angelfish, or sweetfish. Let's see what we got. Freshwater goby. Let me know, would you rather me go for the 1 in 6 at midnight, or the 1 in 6 at 4 a.m.? I mean, I did get the giant snakehead super quickly. That gave me, that was about 30 to 45 minutes, like, bonus time. I could spend it going for the midnight 1 and 6 roll. What do you guys think? Not too late. I have yet to find a sweet fish. I kind of want to try it. Maybe twice. But I'm also, you know, that's just who I am. I like to give myself a challenge. <laughs> Two angel fishes. It's ridiculous. We'll let this one go. Getting a little out of hand. They're not common. Alright. We're going to go for it. We're going to do one or two attempts at the midnight for the one in six roll. I've decided. If the giant snakehead decided to appear that early, it was a sign. Let's make it as challenging as possible. Alright. Craziness. Craziness. We'll spend about 25 minutes <laughs> hoping for a 1 in 6. Craziness. That'd be pretty cool, though, if I got it. So, this is going to change our odds. Let's see what we're working with now. We are fishing at 9pm to 3am. 
Crucian Carps are uh, still five... Wait a second. Oh, yeah, because Sweetfish are less common. I'm like, wait, these odds look better. There are actually less small fish to work with. Or there's less odds for small fish now. But sweet fish are five times rarer. I dig you. Wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, I, there was an exclamation mark. For some reason. There. Hmm, interesting. Midnight strats. Fish, uh, small fish are slightly rarer. Actually, more like one in seven. One in seven odds. Oops, that was a small fish. That's fine, it's not the end of the world. One in seven odds. Now we can officially catch piranhas. I don't, I don't think this is it. We'll catch it though. Yep. We can now actually catch piranhas during this time. But we cannot catch cherry sand. Oh, and we get fireflies at midnight. Aw. Well, now I definitely want to do midnight strats. We get a look at fireflies. That's worth extra 20 minutes per check. For sure. Horse, fireflies are out. I knew I, I knew I should have gone to midnight. But you know what? We never found the sweet fish during the 4 a.m. time. So it's all good. And we might find an Arapaima. It's a one in Actually now it's not a one in five hundred. Now it is rarer. Oh, wait. Actually, that could be... I might be mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. Aeropime is like... Is back to 1 in 600. Well, 1 in 150. 1... Not 150. 1 in 550. 1 in 550. Whenever I say 1 in 600... At the river, it's actually more like 1 in 550. But if it's at the lake, it's 1 in 600. Big difference. So let's see. How many small fish should I go for? Well, the sweet fish is going to be about the same odds as an angel fish now. Which is kind of cool. And a piranha as well. Sweet fish is currently 5.88%, so we're looking at a 1 in 100. Slightly rarer than an angelfish flash piranha. And if we're catching, we're gonna, if we want to, well, let's see, if there's 15 possible, like, fish weighted, like, the weight of all the fish, they're it adds up to about, or it adds up to exactly 15 for small fish. So, we're looking at 15 small fish on average to catch a sweet fish with a 1 in 6. And if we want to be pretty confident, 25. But if I want to meet somewhere in the middle, go with 16. That's not in the middle exactly, but I like that number. That's a good number. 16 small fish per midnight check. Actually, that's not going to take 20 minutes. Maybe 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe, not even that. 10 to 15. If it's basically the same odds as an angelfish or piranha. Then, um, you know, it could take a while, but... Might not take too long. 
Might not take as long as I had originally anticipated. Anyways. Yeah, we'll go with Midnight Strats. Max Challenge. Go with the Max Challenge. And you never know, maybe I'll find that one in 600 Aeroplima. That's also a possibility. That'd be pretty cool. That was a, not the greatest cast, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll catch this fish anyways. This is probably nothing special. Correct. Alright, well, grab some popcorn, buckle in. We got ourselves a long RNG grind ahead of us for these last couple fish. I'm going max challenge mode because I got that giant snakehead relatively quickly. Max challenge. I'm surprised I haven't caught an angelfish or a piranha yet. Good thing I'm not doing a goldenrod run. Hey, what's up, Max? <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Max odds? Yeah, yeah, max odds. <laughs> Too bad there aren't any roses in this game. They're pretty cool flowers. Hey, what's up, squirrel? Or, sorry, awkward squirrel. Stream has been going well. I got the, the giant snake head within 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes. And now I'm trying to roll a 1 in 6 for the sweet fish in Aeropyma. I'm pretty sure roses are common enough in Japan. I don't know. They picked three flowers for this game. And I guess roses didn't make the cut. Too hard to model with the limited capabilities for textures, maybe. Oh, hey, we got a piranha. I was like, what did I just catch? <laughs> Nice, shiny piranha. We'll let it go. This is an in-season piranha. I've already caught one out of season. Uh, that is definitely not a sweet fish. Also not a sweet fish. Alright, we'll go with... Three more small fish, and then we'll reset. I'm glad I'm going for Midnight Strats. This is more fun. Okay, we got a possibility here. Probably Freshwater Gobi. Yeah. Two more small fish. Last one. Doesn't look promising, but I'll catch it. Alright, let's see how long that took. If I had to guess, actually only like 10 minutes. Yeah, that, don't, that only took 10 minutes. That's not bad.
One. something I don't want. Correct. Four. Come on, small fish, where are you? This is a really good way to get comfortable with the different fish AI, though. To get used to it. Very good practice for speedrunning. Seven. Eight. I don't think this is anything useful, but it's hard to tell. Nine. Oh my goodness! Another five subs from Anonymous? Is it the same Anonymous or a new one? We'll never know. Wow, thank you very much. That really means a lot. Dang. Thank you. Congrats to Cart, Bobuki, Shamana, Rix, and, uh, and Jake. Thank you. Very much, wow. Uh, well, that is that is some good motivation for streaming. Nice piranha. Thank you again. Dang. Alright, sweet fish, it's time. It is, uh, it's a secret, yeah. 
Apparently so. Shoutouts to Anonymous. <laughs> Whoever this person may be. Thank you. Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh, more of what we don't need. Alright, we'll catch this one. I think this is 12. 12. You know, I should probably play it safe and go for 20. Probably. If we're investing this much time... And I actually did get the roll, but I just didn't know it yet. Whoops, that'd be uh, that'd be unfortunate. All right, Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Nice angelfish. Oh, don't drop the money. Yeah. Was that was that fifteen or sixteen? I don't know. I think it was sixteen. So who's excited for off-season strats for Goldenrod? <laughs> New Goldenrod route? Off-season fish? June 30th? For the, uh, for the, uh, June Arapaima? <laughs> Honestly, not a bad idea to look into off-season strats. Because one day in advance is only 5-6 the normal odds. So if you if you if it's normally 30% and you're only 5-6 of that, still really good odds. Angelfish number two. Pretty confident we did not get it, the one and six. But I'll catch one more small fish. I don't know. I don't think I'm the only one who's crazy enough to use such strats. Me. Alright, let's see how long that took to catch 20 small fish. Or uh, check 20 small fish. Oh, that wasn't even 10 minutes. Oh, okay, sweet. Well, it was exactly 10 minutes. Alright, cool. Yeah, no big deal. All that time that I spent, or all that time that I saved from the giant snakehead, we'll spend with these extra couple minutes per 1 in 6 check. There, I feel pretty good about this challenge now. This was one of the things I was sort of, like, debating internally if I wanted to uh, go for 4 a.m. 
or midnight for the sweet fish in Arapaima. I wanted to do midnight, but the odds were five times better to uh, to verify we got the sweet fish. Um, like at 4 a.m., it was better to verify. Sorry, I'm a little distracted with this creature waving a pickaxe in my face. But yeah, it looks like it's only taking about five extra minutes once you get past the overhead time with the Rossetti and changing the time. It's only about five extra minutes for midnight check versus 4 a.m. check. Maybe. With maybe slightly worse odds. Okay, we, we got a freshwater goby, or an angelfish, or a sweetfish. <laughs> nice. Nice first fish angelfish. Like I said, I'll keep one of these. Um, and, and maybe we'll get it with the sweetfish, that'd be cool. Yo, Tynite, you've been watching this entire challenge on the VODs? Nice. Glad you're enjoying it. Thank you very much. I'm doing my best to finish this challenge strong. Make it as as difficult as possible on myself. <laughs> Anyways, thanks. Glad you're enjoying the challenge. It's been fun. I've had a great time with this challenge. I was a little overwhelmed at 1 in 600 odds for several fish. Oh my goodness. Goldenrod speedrun? <laughs> Goldenrod world record time? Let's go. Um, But hey, I've made it this far. I have gotten through almost every 1 in 600. One more to go. And it won't take... It won't be too bad. Wow, I'm getting a lot of semi-rare small fish right now. This is either a freshwater goby, angelfish, or sweetfish. <laughs> Goldenrod times two speedrun? Two angelfish, two freshwater goby, and a piranha. And I've caught every fish I've, every small fish I've seen, I think. There we go. There's something that isn't one of those fish. I think that was small fish number six. Oh my goodness, another piranha? What is going on here? Two piranhas, two angelfish, two freshwater goby. What is this RNG? Um, I think this is garbage, but we'll catch it anyways. Yeah. Keep in mind, the sweet fish is just as rare as the angelfish and the piranha. However, that's insanely lucky I caught two of each already. There, I've caught all the small fish. Except for the sweet fish. Oops, that's a medium. Arowanas are out as well right now. But I'm not going for medium, so... I've probably scared off a handful of arowanas already. Bang. More freshwater goby. Crazy. That's small fish number nine. Oh wait, no. Ten. Because I scared one off. That's number eleven. Which I scared off on purpose. Where are the where are the fireflies in this acre? Some other dumb bug. Occupying this acre at the moment. Bummer. Oh my goodness gracious. <clears throat> Three angelfish. Three freshwater goby. Two piranhas. 
probably scared off a third piranha. Oh my... Wow. Three for three for three. What what is what is this RNG? That's twelve or thirteen small fish. I mean, at this point, I like there's no way this. I I got the one in five. There's just or the one in six. There's just no way. Oh my. Why? Where is this RNG when I need it in Goldenrod or Goldenrod plus Net? What? What is this? Just casually getting one in a hundreds every other fish. Not even every other. Two out of three fish are one in one hundreds over and over. Yeah, this is just... I'm getting a refund on my RNG from yesterday. Yeah, you're right. Well, I still have, like, five more small fish to catch until I'm going to reset. Let's see what else I find. There we go. There's something normal. Normal RNG. Four more small fish. This is something special as well. Freshwater goby. There we go. Four angelfish, four freshwater goby. Probably scared off a piranha. Oops. Number 18. There we go. Two small bass, two crucian carps, three piranhas, four freshwater gobies, four angelfish, one more small fish. That'd be crazy if it was a sweet fish. Well, it's not a piranha, it's not a crucian car, or it's it's probably a crucian car. Craziness. Go again. Hey, that only took eight minutes. Also good RNG with finding small fish. Wow. Where were you June 26, 2009? I actually think I know where I was. I think I was playing Animal Crossing, believe it or not. I think I was going for HRA World Record. Or rather, improving on it, on my own record. Oh, you know what? I was working with Bowser's enemy, I think. Or was that... what year was that? Yeah, that was 2009, pretty sure. I was. It was one. Of, I was either working on HRA record or working with Bowser's enemy. On a hacking Animal Crossing. I was definitely playing Animal Crossing though. Oh boy. You are my uh, sunshine. Yeah, first try. Let's go. Oh, you know what? I actually might have been playing Pokemon Red. I actually... No, you know what? I think I was. I think Bowser's Enemy was the year before. I think I was playing Pokemon Red. I was... I was at... It was a Max Pokedex run. Cool! Alright, the RNG continues. Piranha. You were either on Tumblr... Sorry to hear that. Or you were... Uh, watching DVDs of Grey's Anatomy. Nice. Sounds like a good time.
I believe I was playing Pokemon Red going for max Pokedex. I remember doing that that particular summer. And the reason why is because I just got a copy of Pokemon Red for $1 at my local game store. Oh, nice piranha. We got two piranhas. Yeah, can you believe that? I found a copy, a working copy of Pokemon Red for $1. It was, uh, it was like a sale. It was the greatest find of the century. And it worked. And in fact, it still works. I have not had to replace the battery. It saved fine. Um, the only issue with it was the cover of it was a little scratched. Or a little faded. But that was it. Well, even back in 2009, Pokemon Red was going for like 25 or 30 bucks at my game store. I don't know why they decided to sell it for $1. It was perfectly fine. They were just having, like, a special sale. But, yeah, now it's ridiculously expensive. Now it's absolutely absurd. Whoops. My bad. But, yeah, good times indeed. That's why I was playing Pokemon Red. is not a sweet fish. Alright, so that's three fish so far. The way to get into Gen 1 Pokemon is to give yourself a challenge. I tried playing it casually again, and I did not enjoy it. But for me, I gave it a challenge. I give it a challenge, and it's a, a lot of fun. Because there's so many mechanics in the game that you just don't really casually use. There's really no reason to. I have, I would say I have fairly equal nostalgia for Gen 1 and Gen 2. Maybe a slight edge towards Gen 1, but both games are very nostalgic for me. However, I think I never really stopped playing Gen 2, so I don't really feel nostalgia as much because I never really stopped playing it. Gen 1, though, I definitely stopped playing. for uh, quite a while, until I found that copy of Pokemon Red for $1. Yo, what's up, bug? You made it. Oh, Kyler, I changed my mind. I decided to fish during midnight because um, I thought it would be more of a challenge. So the odds is now... The odds of a sweet fish are now 1 in 100. But for a small fish, the odds are like 1 in 15. Yep, it's a 1 in 100. And it's taken me about about 10 minutes to check each one in six roll. No, I, I don't I don't know what my term index is at the moment. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. The only the way to figure it out is with the sweet fish. If there was a better way to determine, then I would I would use that. Well, 
it's not willingly going from a 1 in 7. Oh, wait. Was I going? No, it was... I'm willingly going from a 1 in 20 to a 1 in 100. It was 1 in a 7... It was 1 in 7 if it was a small fish. And now it's 1 in 15. So, I effectively have my odds. In order to... Uh, Increase the challenge. Since I got really lucky with the giant snake head. But yeah, it's still a little insane. For no real reason. Other than maximizing the challenge. I have thought about other ideas after this. Um, I'm probably going to go back to golden net and rod speedruns to reclaim that world record. I may spend a few days on Golden Shovel or Chores and Credits, just rolling the dice, but not really taking it too seriously. After that, I actually have, like, three other ideas for challenges. And one of them could be a series. Um, one of the challenges would be creating my Nook Mile Plus program. That'd be one. Another one would be just going straight into doing this challenge again, but with bugs. And then, after that, I had an idea to make uh, hacked towns for fun. Maybe. At least one. Making a new hacked town after 10 years or something. 10 years later, new hacked town. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I think they're all fun ideas. So, plenty of Animal Crossing to look forward to. The fun doesn't stop. Yeah, the Nook Mile system, but as a mod, would be so cool. Well, just gotta wait for decomp, then we can actually implement that. Wait, seriously? You're at the point where decomp is done enough, or is like good enough that you could do an entire Nook Mile system? Really? Well, I will start making the program, um, you know, outside of Animal Crossing, an, a, an external program that you follow along with, and then that would set the basis for the programming. And it would be smart, you know what would be smart of me? Big brain of me if I did this, in, if I made the program in C, or maybe, maybe not. Then it'll just be ready to implement, potentially. Either way, I'll at least. Ooh. Ooh. I'll at least uh, implement it, or I'll at least make the program in some language at some point. Hopefully soon. Oh, I could do... Oh, even C++? Oh. Oh, it uses an old standard of C. I guess that makes sense. Or I, actually, that doesn't make sense. Why? Well, this is not a sweet fish. Yeah, it's Piranha. Oh, that's fine. That's not a big deal. That's how VBA is, I think. 
At least that's how I worked with VBA. Not a big deal. Alright, um, two more small fish and then we'll say it's probably not a sweet, probably didn't get the one in six. Okay, we'll catch these last two. That is crazy, Kyler. <laughs> All the way until the Wii U. Wow. Well, if it works, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Something like that. Well, hey, just like Nintendo. How fitting. As a company, of course. They do make great games, though. Good jade. Here we go again. Rolling the dice for a 1% fish where there's only a 1 in 6 chance it even exists. There was a mod that added actual shiny fish in the game, like Pokemon. So you mean like there can be regular fish and shiny fish? It would it be the shiny shiny challenge? No, it'd be the uh, it would be the full odds shiny challenge. Nice work, Kyler. Yeah, sounds good to me. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this barred knife jaw mystery. Maybe. What do we have here? Freshwater goby. That is, in fact, what we have here. Yeah, but who wants real shiny fish? Like, you really want to fish 8,000 times to get a shiny fish? And you can't filter out if it's shiny. Unless... Ooh, I got a good idea. Unless the shiny fish is... Instead of its shadow being dark gray or whatever. Instead, it could be like gold. So that way you know you found a shiny before you catch it. Thoughts? Or should it only be shiny 
upon catching it. Yeah, or it sparkles and uh, has a sound effect when it spawns. Yes. Or that. Basically what I'm getting at is there are two options. One, is it a uniquely uh, noticeable fish before you catch it? Or is it only shiny or is it only noticeably shiny once you've caught it? I feel like might have mixed uh, mixed thoughts on it because if it if it's uh, noticeably shiny before you catch it, the pressure's on to catch it, and if you're not like an experienced fisher person, uh, it can be very anxiety-inducing. But if you don't know, then you'll never you know you'll never feel bad about missing it. Because you'll never know if you've missed it. Cool, back to back angelfish. If we get three angelfish in a row, the same odds as a full odd shiny. No. Hmm, decisions, decisions. But it, also, if it's truly like you don't know it's shiny until you catch it, how many people have caught 8,000 fish in their life? Have I even... Yeah, I've definitely caught over 8,000 fish in my life. But uh, that's also over hundreds, uh, no, sorry, thousands of hours of gameplay. Probably literal hundreds of hours of fishing. So it might be so insanely rare that you never even really get to appreciate the feature. Well, we could have an option. Make it an option for the, the player. Maybe. Because think about it. Even during my catch every fish I find for an entire day challenge. Well, that wasn't exactly the challenge, but I, it eventually turned into that. I ended up with 500 red snappers. 300 barred knife jaws, I think, and like 200 something coelacanths, maybe? That sounds about right. That's a thousand fish in one day. And that's a full day of fishing. That's like 12 hours of fishing, I think. Was it 12 hours? Yeah, it was 12 hours. And that's only a 1 in 8 chance I would have found a shiny during that day. So it would take eight times that for one shiny on average. So that would be 100 hours of fishing for one shiny. At least ocean fishing.
probably closer to like 75 to 80 hours for river fishing for one shiny and that's non-stop fishing that's like you don't do anything except fish for three days straight and that's any fish True, it's not it's not bad compared to shiny hunting in older Pokemon games. However, older Pokemon games, there were I don't know, depending on what shiny you're going for, there's different strats you could do to improve your odds. Or at least guarantee which fish you catch or I'm sorry, which Pokemon you find is shiny. At least improve your odds of it. But here it could just be any fish. Most of the time. Unless you're going for like a shiny crawfish or something like that. Alright, anyways. Two more small fish and then we'll reset. Not getting lucky with this one in six. Or if I am, I'm not getting lucky with finding a sweet fish or arapaima with it. Anyways, one more small fish. And then an extra fish after this for good luck, you're right. Alright, extra fish for good luck. It'll affect the rest of the RNG calls for the rest of the night. And I'll catch whatever it is. Crucian carp, small bass. Yeah, that's probably one of those. Yeah, you could definitely mod Resetti out of the game. You could you could mod it so that Resetti never appears, basically. Yeah, there's already an action replay code for that. Wouldn't be too hard to make a mod for that. But why? Why would you want that? Who's going to tell you that it's bad to reset? I'm not. Someone has to. I didn't want to change. 
I did not want to change any mechanics for this challenge. So if that means keeping Rossetti in, you know, grinding out the 1 and 6 for the fish term index, all the good stuff, the only change is the pallets. And even that was not necessary. Just a cool, fun addition. Changes nothing about the difficulty of this challenge. But for get casual gameplay, if you are a fan of resetting and you don't like Rossetti, then yeah, it can be done. Let's see, that was six. Small fish number six, or maybe seven. I think it was six. Whoops. Eleven.
I am starting to grow impatient, if I'm being honest. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Three more. Eighteen. You ever reset after catching a piranha? <laughs> I have. Hi, Jade. What? Very aggressive. Good, Jade. Good. 
Yep, she knows that she is a cute cat and takes advantage of that fact every moment of her life. And you can't... Alright, it's fine, it's whatever. At least I noticed. Oh my goodness, we got five more gifted subs? From an anonymous gifter? Yo! Wow! Thank you. That's the third time today. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Congrats to Aaron, Mickey, Apple, and Damo in state. Thank you very much, anonymous gifter. Wow. Dang, what am I gonna do with all this, all this gifted sub money? I'll put it towards shiny bug hunting. <laughs> Anyways, it's all good. Jade, when she was stepping on my keyboard, she stopped my recording. At least she didn't end stream. She definitely could have done that. She's almost done it before, but she's actually has yet to do it. That was very close though earlier. It's all good. Nothing particularly interesting happened during that 10 minute interval. So it's, uh, it's all good. I guess. Anyways, back to the one and six. Thank you again, Anonymous Gifter. Jade has comfortably found a spot to lie down in peace. I think we're I think we're good for uh, for a little while, hopefully. Oh, this this spot. Two. It would be nice to roll this one and six very soon. I am growing impatient. Well, that's definitely not a sweet fish.
I'm getting pretty bad luck with this 1 in 6. My 1 in 6 odds have been definitely not the not very lucky this entire challenge. Whoops. I was impatient. Alright, what do we have here? Oh my goodness, there it is! Yes! Got it! We got the one in six! Yes! There it is, everyone. The sweet fish. Yes! I got it at midnight. 12.05. Yes, let's go. I'm gonna go save and continue. There is our pink sweet fish right there. We got the one in a hundred. Oh, I'm very happy about that. Go save and continue because we got the arapaima to catch now. Looks very sweet. Sure does. Oh, what a relief. That took longer than it should have, but I did eventually get that sweet fish. And we got the bonus angel fish as well. That's fun. Oh, yeah? That's your favorite one so far? I guess it is pretty cool, isn't it? Alright, well, we'll uh, let's go put the angelfish inside. Since we already have it, might as well. We'll put it over here. Oh, it's kind of hard to see with this bug zapper, isn't it? There we go. There's our angelfish with the neon green uh, outline. It's fine. Very cool. Sure. Good enough. Cool. Yeah, I'm so glad I noticed that my recording stopped just in time. Well, it stopped because of Jade. So we got we got proof. I think what I would have done is I just would have downloaded the VOD. There was a uh, backup. All good. But yeah, all good here. All good. So now it's time for the last 1 in 600. Let's see how long this takes. 600 fish on average. Till we find the big one. The Arapaima. June Arapaima. Very rare. Specifically June 26th Arapaima. Very rare. Let's see how long this takes. Here we go. Let the fun begin. The string fish actually only took seven minutes, but that was super lucky. I estimate on average this takes like 20 to 30 minutes. Probably closer to 30 minutes. To go through 600 fish. See what happens. Wow. There it is. <laughs> uh, no! It wasn't... No! It wasn't going for the bait! Oh, uh, whatever. I found it quickly. We'll find another one. No! <laughs> I didn't think it... Why was it going for the bait? It was way past the front of it. Ah. Uh, way past. The... It baited me. It really did. Well, on the bright side, that was like the world's fastest 1 in one, one in 600 find, so, you know, we'll find another one. That's the first time that's happened this entire challenge. It, uh, you know, it, it happened. Dang. It was way past the front of it. I was like, there's no way it's going to go for it. I was even being extra careful. Yep. There we go. Now it's a now the video has a little a little extra spice to it. Throwing for content as they say. It's too lucky of a find. Had to 
Had to get that thing out of there. <laughs> Throwing for content. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll find another one. That only took two minutes. I'm sure another, another one will spawn in two minutes. I wasn't even, like... I wasn't even nervous or anything. I was like, alright, here we go, let's catch it. Just bad luck. Oh well. I am not... <laughs> I'm not too upset about it. Considering how quickly I found it. Alright, here we go. Uh, get comfortable again. Because it's likely going to take forever. Uh, stupid Arapaima. You know what? Now I can say I've officially missed a 1 in 600. That had yet to happen. I can't say I've done it all unless I, unless I miss a 1 in 600. Well, glad that I glad that I did that. Now I can rest easy knowing I've done the 102% run. All the trash, hand boot and tire. Plus the 1 in 600. You know what else would be good content? If I make room in my inventory, catch a trash, a piece of trash. So if I find another one, I could risk catching a tire. Wouldn't that be exciting? I think that'd be exciting. Because we're not gambling enough. Please don't. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's 90%. You know, it's a 90% chance that it's not a piece of trash. Those are pretty good odds. You you wouldn't take those odds? Now, nah, Russian Roulette's 1 in 6. This is 1 in 10. Way better odds. <laughs> Only if there's shiny trash. Sure. Sure there is. I'm sure there is. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes for me to find another Arapaima. That may influence my decision if I feel like gambling. If I find it in the next 15 minutes. Maybe. But if it takes me 45 minutes to find another one, I'm not doing it. Or am I? It's only 1 in 600. Ooh, that'd be a good shiny for a boot. A yellow rain boot. I like it. What would the can be? I don't know. Gold? <laughs> no, we already have the yellow boot. It would just have a different label. What about the tire? Has anyone ever seen a tire that isn't black? Is that is that a thing? I guess I guess in New Horizons you can customize it. Jeff Boy RD suit uh, can <laughs> shiny can would be a can't. I like it. You can make the tire gray, so it's like, you know, a worn out tire. 
That could be the shiny tire. It'd be one of it's like the Pokemon that are barely different in their normal palette. Nah, because we already have the angelfish that's white now. It'd just be a a ripoff of the angelfish if you made it a white tire. I like gray. Or like blue. It could be blue. That could be an option. That's not a... Well, that would be a whole texture change, Coral. That's, uh, that sounds like a lot of work. Unless secretly, the tire already says good year, but it's like basically, or it's the exact same color as the surrounding colors, so there would be no way to know without changing one of them. Oh! Alright guys, we found another 1 in 600. As you can see here, I have an open space available. Oh, I already had an open space available. It was already a gamble. Here we go. <laughs> that would have been funny. As you can see here, there's an open space. Uh, so this could be a piece of trash. There's a 10% chance for trash in this game. Let's see what happens. Oh god. Okay, I'm not... I've, yeah, okay. okay. <clears throat> oh my goodness, it's going to the hardest possible spot to catch this thing. I'm going to smack it on the face so it goes elsewhere. Pro strats. Alright. I did it. Shiny Arapaima <laughs> through the face. Let's go. It was not trash. Look at that green Arapaima. <laughs> Let's go. Shiny Arapaima complete. We gambled and won. That wasn't so bad. Arowana catch for the fans. Oh, second best. Got a sh ourselves a bonus shiny you. We'll throw it back. Whew, what, what an adventure. It's not over yet. We still got the jellyfish and salmon, but there it is. That is the last rare fish. Crazy, crazy challenge. Dang, that feels good. Two Arapimus. Gambled both times. Craziness. Wow. <laughs> Alright, we gotta we gotta get a couple more one and sixes before we're done here. But we're on a very good pace to finish this tonight. Two more simple fish to find and catch. Wow. It took a while to get the one and six, but once we got it, those last couple of fish, the sweet fish in Arapaima, didn't take long. We are going to August tenth actually. 2008. Let me confirm that. Uh, yes. At midnight. And we're going for a jellyfish. Jellyfish is up next. We gotta roll another one in six. But this time, it won't take very long to confirm if we got the one in six, because jellyfish are medium. And we will find nothing but large fish until we get jellyfish. So, fastest way to the beach. Not this way. 
we'll go the faster way next time. <laughs> Ooh, but we wanted to see the summer campers. You know what? Let's see who we got. We're having fun here. Hello, Cyrano. Sorry, my bad. This is snooty. My anteater knowledge is not the best. Anyway, see ya. Snooty the snooty villager. <clears throat> Ignore that. Alright, let's go see if we got a jellyfish. Jellyfish. I don't even see a fish. So, I imagine it, I only really need to check, like, we'll go with seven fish per check. It really is not going to take long to confirm if we got a jellyfish or not. Because right now, jellyfish are normally, like, 80%, something crazy like that. The so one in six would be 12. So, one in seven, one in eight. I guess there's no point in gambling that much. We might as well check like 12 times. Check a dozen times. That should be good enough. A dozen fish should be adequate. I was like 8 or 9 already. 10. Eleven. You know what would have been really funny? If that first Arapaima that I caught actually ended up being a tire. That would have been hilarious. But we'll never know. I found those 1 in 600s relatively quickly. I found two of them relatively quickly. So I had plenty of time to gamble. It's all good. Famous last words. Considering each of these checks takes like 2 to 3 minutes. Probably closer to 3 minutes. So on average, this will take 18 minutes to find a jellyfish. Yep, 18 minutes to find a jellyfish, I think. I think it's about right. And it'll probably take about 20 minutes on average to find a salmon. So, oh look, and the summer camper's over here now. Hi there, Hornsby. See, I know every villager. It was it was the lighting in the last one. It was the lighting. Obviously, I know this that Sirena wears the Misty shirt, or is that Snooty? Let's not talk about food because I'm actually pretty hungry right now, and just seeing the word spaghetti on my screen. Like, made my mouth water. <laughs> Dang. Spaghetti sounds so good right now. Or lasagna. Or that chowder that's in this game. In the igloos. Nice soccer ball. <laughs> Wait, hold on. We gotta we gotta kick this soccer ball. Do you think I can kick it across the bay? I'll push it a little closer. Hopefully. Can it be done? Can this soccer ball be kicked 
all the way across the bay. All right, here goes nothing. Nope. It's fun, though. All right, three more fish, and then we'll reset. <laughs> Wilson! <laughs> Hey, Wilson's a volleyball, but that was probably the closest ball in this game that looks like Wilson. I actually just watched Castaways, like, a week ago. Yo, are you kidding me? Five more gifted subs from Anonymous? What? <laughs> Thank you, I don't even- I don't even know what to say, this is crazy. Craziness, thank you so much. That's 20 gifted subs from- Maybe the same person, maybe different anonymous gifters, who knows? Thank you very much, anonymous gifter. I find it interesting I don't know any of these five people who got gifted subs this time. But, thank you very much. Congrats! Congrats to all five of you who I don't know, but maybe I will know now. Dang. 20 gifted subs. That adds up, that's a lot of money. That's not, that's no joke. Thank you. I think, let's see, how much money does that end up going into my pockets? Five. Times four is twenty. How much is that? Forty bucks? Did I do that right? That sounds about right. That's one dollar per fish. Thank you. But more importantly, all these people have emotes now. We can spread the, the Brian MP16 emotes. Anyways, thank you again. <laughs> Appreciate it. Alright, attempt number three for the jellyfish. More specifically, attempt number three for the one in six. Now, there it is. We got it. <laughs> we got it. I was just going to say, fun fact. Hold on. Let's let's admire our shiny jellyfish. It's pink. Pink jelly, Pink jellyfish. Let's go. And there we go. One fish to go. Just like that, the final fish, the salmon. Uh, I was going to say, August 10th is actually six days before the next term in which fish will, uh, you know, fish will change their spawn rates. Not five days. There is a bug in the game's programming, similar to, or exactly the same programming bug that the sea bass has, where any fish that change spawn times in the middle of the month can actually be caught six days before they're supposed to spawn again normally. Not five. It is a bug in the program. So that's why August 10th was possible to catch a jellyfish. I actually I actually accidentally recently discovered this. Actually accidentally. Alright, so now the salmon. Now, I actually haven't... Actually, I have not tested this. There is a possibility that the fish term index value will not change. So, we'll see, though. August 27th. Let's confirm that date. Yes. Five days before September 1st. We go back a month so we don't have to pick weeds. I'm pretty sure the term index value changes every term, including the half the term in the middle of the month. But, there's a chance that it doesn't. Pretty sure it does. There's a chance it doesn't. No, we got, we got a, we got the 10% chance for a thunderstorm. Cool. So, let's see here. The salmon will be slightly harder to confirm if it exists versus the jellyfish. Or, not harder, but slightly longer to confirm. I'm going to scare away any fish I find in the ocean. 
and rather only catch fish that spawn in the bay. Or only catch which would be this which would be a guaranteed salmon. Also, look at that medium fish. We will we will, we have plenty of jellyfish in season now. However, the the out of fish jellyfish or I'm sorry, the not out of fish, that's not that doesn't make sense. The out of season jellyfish was the first first fish that spawned anyways. Kind of funny. Or the first one that I saw. So I think... I think a, a salmon are normally 50-50. Which means it is now like a 9% chance. So I think I'm going to go with 15 fish in the ocean per reset. I think that'll be safe odds. No, shiny, shiny air plima was green on Passant. We just caught it. Not too long ago. You know what? I can... I don't know why I'm not just always running. Who cares? I can run the whole way. If I, if I find a salmon and I scare it off, no big deal. We know it exists. All right, one more fish. Probably didn't get the salmon. I was probably correct that the term index value does in fact change. I'm, you know, I'm gonna give this one a little extra longer to confirm, just in case it does exist. We'll go with three more fish. One. Well, the darker colored Arapaima in New Horizons is not shiny, so it would not make sense for this one to be like the New Horizons one since it's not uh, shiny. Okay, well, that's three. It would be shiny for this game. I gotcha. Now, I liked green. I thought a green Arapaima... Uh, was a good it was a, it was a nod to pokemon shinies where like half of them are just some weird green color we couldn't get away with just without at least one of these shinies being a a, a weird green color and we got we got 10 percent chance for rain again I swear there's something weird with resetting and keeping weather. Okay, that was quite the yawn. Flash meow. But yeah, think Tauros, for example. Shiny Tauros just becomes a weird green color. Not that it's bad. It's just... It's just, an, it's just a green. You know what? I got it. If you, uh, if you want to see different shiny colors, you can make the shiny bugs. Who wants to make the shiny bugs? Then it could be a surprise for me. Um, I will, uh, I'll pay you, uh, nothing. Unless, unless there's an outcry. In which case, I guess I could. Who wants to make shiny bugs? You have to recolor the sprites. And, um... But you have to recolor them in such a way you don't change the texture. Only the colors get changed. You don't change any pixels. Oh, you also have to make sure that you don't accidentally have two of the same color. For, uh... Like, you, you have to make sure that you don't, like, accidentally turn two colors into one color. That'll make my life a lot 
more difficult. You be down, CRQ? Sweet. Well, the nice thing is, is I don't have to provide any any sprites. You can find them all already. Well, if you seriously actually would be interested in making shiny bug sprites, that'd be sweet. Um, we can talk later. Or we can talk now. I guess it doesn't matter. Basically, what you do is you go to the data spreadsheet, which you can find online, and then you can pull all the sprites as well as the models from that website, and then you can go to town. Just use a combination of hue changes, saturation changes, or hue shifting saturation changes, lightness versus darkness, or uh, or yeah, or invert all the colors and call it a day. As long as they look good, that's uh, that's all, really all that matters. And it would be kind of fun if someone else made this the shinies, because it would be a, a true surprise for me. So you also need to do the same palette swapping trick, or the same palette style for the inventory icon, as well as the uh, like the 3D model of it. No, unfortunately, they don't share the same palette. But I have learned from experience that the museum models are typically about the same palette as the uh, catch model and the house model as well. So only two palette changes for shinies, one for inventory, one for the catch model. Or I guess in this case it wouldn't necessarily be a catch model. It would be it would be the display it would just that's what the fish would or not the fish. That's what the bug would look like when it's um when it's just like you know, ready to be caught. Because for fish, you only see the shiny model when it um, uh, when you catch the fish. But for bugs, you see the bugs before you catch them. So they would already be shiny before you even catch them. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a similar process to get the pallets for the shinies between the icon inven the inventory icons and the models. It's a it's very similar, but you'll notice that the pallets are in some cases actually quite different. So it's not completely straightforward, but it's pretty close. Anyways, Salmon, final fish. It won't be too much longer, most likely. But I could get really bad luck. What is this? What is with this rain? I mean, I kind of like it. Kind of cool. But it's weird. Because it's not supposed to be like this. Yeah, shiny rain. If this is truly full odds rain three days in a row, that is one in a thousand. However, I have a feeling it's not. I have a feeling it's not a coincidence. Sometimes the weather appears to stay the same after a reset, and sometimes it changes. But it is weird. Can't quite get to the bottom. I, like, I haven't been able to figure out if the weather truly changes or stays the same after resetting. 
Because I've seen both. Very, very odd. Yeah, if you want to, well, yeah, if you want to be extra with the colors, you can edit it manually. You just have to, I recommend using like a fill tool that uh, is a global fill with like zero tolerance. So that way um, you're overriding the same pixels of that, of that one color. If that makes sense. I did a lot of manual editing for various fish like um, like the rainbow trout for example I did a lot of manual editing with that one but it would the the pixels were always the same so the texture remained the same but yeah you can definitely do that I would say I probably did manual editing for about somewhere between like probably like 40% of the fish I did manual edits I wanted to make sure they were good actually yeah maybe maybe half hard to say it was at least at least a dozen which is half which is just about half and for the bugs i mean i guess you might as well make all 40 shiny might as well because for bugs they're all they're they're not all seasonal but 90 percent of them are seasonal at that point, you might as well just make them all shiny. Yeah, a tablet would speed up the process, or it would have. However, making the making the shiny palettes was only about half the, not even half. Probably, probably the majority of the time was actually. Figure, like converting all of the colors to RGB, um, whatever it was, 5A9 or something like that. Whatever, whatever that particular RGB style is. That was the most time consuming part, but I got a system down. Anyways. Shiny salmon. Where's it at? Who knows? I find it odd I haven't found a, a coelacanth yet. With all this rain. There's just so many jellyfish. Yeah, there's no way this rain is a coincidence. Uh, yes, on Passant. Yes, that is correct. But, you know, you could... 
you could uh, team up with CRQ and knock it out and share them pair it together. Work as a team if you wanted. If you both want to make shiny pallets. Then you only have to individually download 40 images. That's not so bad. But yeah, I did that for the fish. It it was uh, it was kind of a tedious process. But I don't know a better way. If you know a better way, I'm all ears. Forty K turnips, huh? Is this in your casual playthrough? But today is not Sunday. How could you have Oh Oh channel points. That makes that makes a lot more sense. I was like, Fricks plays this game casually? No way. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. Wow. I didn't know you watched that much. Cool. Yeah, I'll let you know when there's a spike. Whoa, you play this game casually sometimes? That is hard to believe. But, I mean, you gotta, you know, all speedrunners start with their games casually. So, I guess, or most of them. I, I guess it makes sense. Sort of. What should I do with all these channel points? What should I... What kind of rewards could I make? Hmm. I think I've exhausted my odds with a salmon spawning here, probably. Come on, salmon. Don't pull a sea bass. I don't really want to start and finish this challenge with 20 attempts at getting the 1 and 6. What is going on here? Is there... Is this anonymous gifter just like on a schedule every 20 minutes they gift five more subs? I mean, I'm not complaining. Thank you though. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a hundred dollars worth of subs. And congrats to all of those who got another or who got a gifted sub. Another set of five. Congrats to Akimbo, Joe, uh, Lisa. Demercio and uh, Somni. Thank you. 
you very much for the gifted subs again. Thanks. Thanks. Alright, well, I'll see you in 20 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Surely that's the end. Because that is $100 worth of gifted subs. Thank you. That's a lot of money. Hey, there's that uh, mountain beetle. We've seen now four different beetles on that particular tree running down to the beach looking for this salmon. I'm excited for shiny bug catching in the future. I don't know about the immediate future, but in a couple months, probably, possibly. I'll need to do some testing with the mechanics. However, I already have the bug index value, the address for it. I've already determined it in uh, in Animal Crossing. What? We got one gifted sub from Anonymous. That's not five, but that's also not zero. Thank you. <laughs> we got a bonus to buy Commando, who is active in chat. What? And now one to CRQ. They're they're uh, they're picking active chatters now. I think that must be what's going on. Thank you so much. That's crazy. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh oh, we we got we got uh oh now we got all the people who didn't get a sub chatting now. <laughs> all right, we don't uh. We don't need to ask for gifted subs. That's not that's not what we do. However, no one is really asking. <laughs> Awkward squirrel. Congratulations with the gifted sub to you from Anonymous. This is go this is crazy. That's a lot of money. Thank you very much. What are we doing? We're trying to catch a salmon, right? That's That's what we're trying to do. There's a reason why I'm running around this bay looking for salmons. Another one? Inferno Brin. <laughs> Who said cool in chat and got a gifted sub. Thank you very much. Congrats, Brin. Are you going to be an active chatter now? Maybe. That'd be pretty cool. Anyways, thank you very much for the gifted sub. <laughs> and Java. <laughs> and Java. <laughs> Also got a gifted sub. Oh, this is this is too much. Thank you. It can't be stopped. <laughs> I I greatly appreciate it. I don't even know what to say. Thank you very much. You are the chosen ones. Uh, you were literally chosen to get a gifted sub. Congratulations, and thank you. Sub only chat? <laughs> Kyler, what happened to your badge? What happened to your, your sub badge? Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, you're you're first, my bad. I'm just so used to seeing tree saplings next to everyone or trees. Right, right. My bad. On Passant didn't have a sub? They dodged all the gifted subs until now. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Anonymous gifted gifter. Thank you very much. Congrats to On Passant, who is an active chatter. Now can use all the emotes that I currently have. Maybe I should reapply to Twitch uh, partnership. Be like, hey, look, look at all these active subs that I have. Over the last several months, maybe you should accept my partnership application because I qualify for it. I should try again. See all these sub points? See how much see how many people sub to my channel? They all want one thing, and it's more emotes. More emotes. I do have two cats after all, but only one cat emote. Apply for it right now. 
actively streaming. Good idea. Oh, there's a coelacanth. I'm surprised it took that long to find a coelacanth. I guess coelacanth odds are fairly low in August, aren't they? I guess it kind of makes sense. How many turnips does chat collectively have? Probably over a million. Probably easily over one million. Alright, probably didn't get the one in six again, but that's alright. DRQ is 30k. Kyler has like 500k. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, enough turnips to destroy the stock market economy. Oh wow, Kyler, you actually have more than I thought. Well, I have an I have infinite turnips. So does that does that mean anything? All right, so let's see. 30k, 212k, 10k. That's a quarter million between three people. Oh, and then 4k. Still a quarter million. What are you talking about, Kyler? I obviously have improvements to be made on my 100% speed run. It's not like it's a one-time thing. Forty-eight K. Wow. Also, hello, Guppy. There you go. That's three hundred thousand. Also, that was a saw stag. We have we saw that now. We have seen every bug, except for the giant beetle. Oh my goodness, anonymous. <laughs> They spotted an unsubbed person in chat. Gotta fix that. <laughs> Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> I was gonna say, Guppy, maybe you were the anonymous gifter. Since you had not received a sub. Can, an can anonymous gifters gift themselves a sub? Hmm. Now nah, we don't need to figure out who the anonymous gifter is. That would that's that beats the whole point. Probably Kyler. Thanks, Kyler. No, I'm just kidding. I actually have I actually honestly have no idea who the anonymous gifter is, but I'm very thankful. Thank you for the gifted sub to variable Y. I really appreciate it. All right, we're catching something. I'm tired of not catching anything. There, we caught a jellyfish. Thank you for the gifted sub to variable Y, who is also an active chatter. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. Well, dang, maybe now I should pay people to work on these shiny sprites. Considering this windfall of of money I have I have suddenly received. Alright. <laughs> you know what I really need? Now, now, now I need to start thinking about upgrading some equipment. Let's see, what should I upgrade first? A new mic would be cool. I also think I need to get some better backlighting. Faster internet speed? I don't know. It's This speed served me well. I feel like.
If I had Google Fiber options, I would definitely take that. What? The bitrate's too low. That's at 3,000. That's good. It's a good bitrate. Is it really? Oh. Well, dang. I actually was streaming at 8K bitrate for a while. Uh, but I had one day where I started dropping frames. So I changed it back to 3K thinking there wasn't going to be a difference. Or noticeable. <laughs> yeah, I should buy one of those uh one of those lights, one of those circle lights that has a uh, backdrop of light. Or I could get those leaflets. What are those things? Those those leaf lights for uh or not backlighting, but front lighting. So that way my face is illuminated better. I should. I should do that. I actually already have a green screen. However, I couldn't get the green screen functions in Streamlabs to work very well. Probably because of the lighting. So it would be useful for a green screen. You're right. However, I feel like I'd be weird. I feel like a green. I would look weird with a green screen. Yeah, the problem with the Jade Cam is that she moves all the time. She's always moving. Jade doesn't sit still. She doesn't pick one spot and just lie there for a while. She's always moving. GoPro. Alright, let's see if we can get rid of this rain. As much as I like the rain, it slightly decreases the salmon odds because of coelacanth possibilities. A Jade GoPro, that would be the solution. I'm sure she would love me if I did that. Jade would be so happy if I stuck a camera on her head. She would definitely not try everything in her power to get that thing off of her head. Do they even make cat GoPros? I'm sure they do. She doesn't wear a collar. She hates anything on her. I've tried putting a collar on her, and she just gnawed at, at it for until I took it off. There, I got rid of the rain. It worked. What do you mean, wrong? Oh, there needs to be a period after the I heart moles? Why? It's not a complete sentence. Unless you consider the heart emote a word. I guess it is. Yes, but I... There aren't many Rossetti phrases that re he requires you to have proper punctuation. It's just so random that that one happens to require a period. But that's Rossetti for you. Also, hello, Royal Leo Knight. Welcome. You made it for the final fish, maybe. Maybe, hopefully. We got one hour to get a one in six. Where I'm averaging about five minutes per check. actually spending a lot longer per check than I thought uh, than I would have anticipated 
All right, I need to start like counting. That's six. It's a one in nine, roughly, for the salmon to spawn. So we're gonna do 15. Oh my goodness, anonymous gifter, gifted a sub to Royal Leonite, sniped. <laughs> Welcome to chat, here's a sub. Thank you very much. Anonymous gifter, and congratulations Royal Leonite. All the Brian MP16 emotes will be used throughout the internet now. Go to your favorite speedrunner. They reset. Or if or, or if I'm your favorite, your second. Whoever you watch. Just uh, use that resetty emote in chat. It's perfect. Good for any speedrun. Yeah, neato. <laughs> Streamers trying to tell you to, uh, you know, subscribe with your Prime sub. Sold out. Perfect, perfect usage. Yeah, if they make a minor mistake, that costs 0.5 seconds. Rossetti emote, perfect. Streamer cart starts complaining about RNG. We got an emote for that too. Uh, speedrunner does something really awesome. Hey, I I have a I have an emote for that. It's a, it's a reaction, and you can thank anonymous gifter for having such power now for a month. <laughs> oh, and if they have a cat, well, I got a cat emote. Or anything related to a cat appears on stream. Perfect. Did I test the salmon? I've I caught one uh, before. So yes, it has been tested. I have caught a salmon on August twenty seventh before. So yes. But that is good to verify that. That is true. Yeah, that's right. It has the weird term stuff where it's where it changes its location on in September fifteenth. Well, that sounds like a really cool chatter in your in your stream fricks. Very cool. Next. I have one hour to get the salmon. I have one hour to roll a one in six, where it averages five minutes per check. Ooh, I did four minutes that time. Improved my efficiency slightly. Oh, okay, it was only a little bit of the time. Oh, that's why I was only four. It was five minutes. I started at 11.59. Right. Oh, you know what else? I could also get more Animal Crossing shirts. Yes, I could. I could get a shirt with a giant Rossetti on it. That could be fun. One hour to roll a one and six for the salmon to spawn. So, 
And I've already I've already reset like six times or maybe more. I've lost count. There's just been so many gifted subs that I, I just lost count of the entire salmon search. Though not that I wasn't messing it up, just haven't found a salmon. And I haven't counted how many times I've reset for it so far. But I think it's a I think it's six. So you know. Nothing out of the ordinary as far as RNG is concerned. At least not yet. Oh my goodness. Jellyfish. Also, what is going on here? <laughs> we got four fossils <laughs> appearing in, a, in, in the same row. That's where all the RNG is going. Or not fossils, but gyroids. Or buried items. Things keep appearing. They're playing a game. Yeah, they're playing tic-tac-toe. Or they've won tic tac toe, one of the other, or one of one of that, one of the one of those things is occurring. Something like that. <laughs> or battleship. You're right. They're playing battleship. I like it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. In case some funny business is going on, I am going to reset one more time. Actually, no, that would that that doesn't make, that wouldn't make sense. I am going to save and quit, believe it or not. And I'm going to manually change the fish term uh, index value instead of resetting for it to change. And the reason why is because since I'm coming from August 10th, I'm a little there's a there's a slim chance that some funny business is going on. Probably not. There's no indication that there should be any funny business going on. Nice shiny barred knife draw. But just in case, we're going to do a manual fish term index change. Ah, so about those bug CRQ, when would I like them done? I probably am not going to do the bug shiny bug catching for at least another month. So, no rush. Say by the end of, end of June. I, st I have a few other things I would like to do in the meantime. Yeah, no rush. I, I did all the shiny palette stuff for the fish in like four hours. So it doesn't take too long. All right, so we're going to go to January. Nah, let's not do that. Let's go to March. Let's go to March 26th, my birthday. Alex Burke. We will reset the fish term index value manually. And to do so... There, there, done. We did it. No, we're actually we're we're not resetting. Resetti is not going to spawn for this. Uh, but we are resetting the fish term index value. So I guess it, yes, it does work. But we reset it every time I reset. It resets the fish term index value. Just slightly faster. But since I got a few extra years, we can do this. 
All right, so we're going to August 27th, 2006. Yes, 2006, so that way we don't get weeds. But it's actually faster to reset than to save and quit and change the time twice. Okay. Still one hour remains until I have to go to bed. And it would be cool to get this challenge finished in less than 20 hours. So my odds are very good of pulling that off, but they're not guaranteed. I need to get this one in six salmon. One in six fish term index value. And it's a one in nine salmon. Where's this fish at? Yeah, it would be really silly to have one more stream dedicated to one salmon fish. I agree completely. That would be very silly. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Wow. Look at all these fish spawning right here. That was already eight fish. It's almost time to reset. Nine. I'm going to start counting. It's starting to get a little serious now. Ten. Eleven. I'm doing sixteen fish till I'm pretty confident I didn't get, did not get the one in six. Eleven. That is, that is funny, Ghost. Maybe subconsciously you were like, uh, you know, I think Brian's going to stream this, that fishing challenge today. Hmm. Fish. That sounds good. Yo, what's up, Debrax, man? Welcome. Yes. One fish remains. The salmon. Just need to get that one in six. All right, one more, one more fish. Here it is. Reese. Just need a one in six. I got 57 minutes. I would like to have a little time left before I end stream because I gotta donate all these fish and then I want to show off all the fish in the museum. So really any moment now would be appreciated. Yeah, the reset, you, you remembered why, but for those that don't remember why, the reset is to reset the fish term index value to re-roll the one in six. Hey, what's up, Casey? Welcome. Fun fact about Shiny Diglett. I've actually found a Gen 1 Shiny Diglett. Oh, I guess I should say I found a Shiny Diglett in Gen 1 in Pokemon Red. I only knew it was Shiny because I checked its IVs. Um, this was on an emulator. I checked its IVs through a, a program, and it confirmed it was Shiny. <laughs> So I have found a Gen 1 Shiny and confirmed that it was Shiny without glitches, of course. And it was a Diglett. It was pretty cool. I've also found a, found a Shiny Diglett in Pokemon Go. I think the only thing that changes is, is that its nose turns from red to blue. Gen 1 doesn't have shinies per se. They don't have shiny palettes. But in Gen 2, shinies are based off of the stats. So when you trade Pokemon from Gen 1 to Gen 2, it can become a shiny. All based off of stats. 
So there's a popular video of shiny hunting Mewtwo in Gen 1. And you can tell if it's shiny based off of its stats when you catch it. But yeah, Gen 2 it sparkles when it when you when you see find it in the wild, as well as when you um, use it in battle. And of course its palette is a shiny palette. And it has the three little sparkle icons on the on its uh status screen. Yep. Yeah, Gen 2 is when Shinies first became a thing. But since it's based off of the IVs, or in or in Gen 1, the the EVs? Then, yeah. It can become Shiny when you transfer it. Oh my goodness. Max Rose gifted five subs to the community? Yo, Max. Thank you very much. Dang. I really appreciate that. We've got Anonymous Gifters, and now we got Max Rose. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. The the gift the, the gifted sub just doesn't end. Apparently. Thank you very much. And Casey got a sub. Nice. Is there a problem, Max? <laughs> Were you the anonymous gifter? <laughs> I mean... Several people gift five subs at once. <laughs> uh, either way, if you were if you were the anonymous gifter, thank you, Max Rose. If you were not, thank you for the five gifted subs. Sounds like you were, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I really appreciate it either way. <laughs> thank you, Max Rose. Appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Really do appreciate it. <laughs> 12 gifted subs in the channel. That's a lot of gifted subs. Really appreciate it. I don't, that's, that's crazy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Means a lot. It really does. Appreciate you a lot. Thank you. All right. Looks like uh, looks like we probably don't have a salmon. That is a recent. Come on, salmon. You know, I mean, I can't even be mad about the salmon because the first fish was the sea bass. And it was trolling us to the exact same level as the salmon. Where I could not roll the 1 in 6 for the life of me. How fitting to start the challenge with just not being able to get this 1 in 6 to finishing the challenge to not being able to get the 1 in 6. How fitting. I think this is the eighth or ninth attempt for the salmon. The sea bass took 20 attempts. Which was the longest amount out of any of the fish. I think the second longest was like 10 or 12. So this is approaching the second longest reset attempts. Yeah, 20 is the longest amount so far. Oh, I'm gonna be so mad if I don't get this in the next 50 minutes. There's no way, right? There's no way that RNG is gonna happen. Alright, what do you want me to say, Rossetti? I che <laughs> Hey, hey now. That's that's not what's going on here. That's not happening. 
We're just resetting Rossetti. It's not it's not cheating. Have I gone through every Rossetti phrase? At this point? Probably not. Come on, Rossetti. <laughs> we're we're friends here. That's not what's going on. Yeah, so after after uh, you reach the final dialogues, it cycles through the same three. So the three dialogues are the one where he fake resets your game. Then there's one where he just it's all up, he's all up in your face. And then there's one where he tells you he forces you to say something. Yeah, it, it increments, but once it reaches a value, it it, it goes back to uh, a different value. My favorite Rossetti dialogue is the second one, because it only takes like 15 seconds. That one's the best one. Alright, I'm tired of not catching anything. Let's, let's catch this. Could be the salmon. Probably not. Yeah, the fake reset's so good. I wonder how many people actually have, like, damaged their hardware from the fake reset. Whether it was uh, on purpose or on accident. Like, they get startled, so they, they like, throw their controller or something. I'm trying to remember... I don't think I fell for it the first time I saw it. I don't think it got me. But I think the reason why is because I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying. So I was just like mashing A and B, looking elsewhere. And then suddenly my, then you know, then he goes for the fake reset. And I didn't have enough time to really process what happened before the screen came back. So, I don't think I got got, because I wasn't paying attention, if I recall correctly. Max Rose with five more subs? Dang, Max. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is a lot of subs, and it really means the world. The, the generosity, where does it, where does it end? When the stream ends, I guess. Thank you so much. You are the shiny chatter. <laughs> really appreciate you. You didn't do the thing again. <laughs> appreciate it a lot. Wait, does that unlock more emote slots? I think I've already unlocked every possible emote slot for, uh, whatever I am. Uh, not partner, but, uh, affiliate. But there's a, maybe not, there might be one more. There might be one more. And this might do it. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I, I figured out the word. It took me a minute, but I got there. But yes, thank you. Anyways, thank you again, Max. Really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know. Let me check. During this reset, I will see if I've unlocked them all already. Or if I have one more. And I'll let you know. And yes, you did help. That's correct. 
All right, let me pull up my stream or my let me pull up Twitch. Ooh, there's a chance it's close. Let me see here. Let's see. Viewer, where do I even go? Settings? No. Rewards? Emotes. Wait a second. Wait, I have four open slots for for tier one. When did that happen? How'd I get that? Last time I checked, I did not. <laughs> uh, wait. Is that right? But I'm not partnered. Unless they upped it. I feel like I unlocked the amount of emote slots I would get if I was partnered. I'm so confused right now. I'm not partnered now, suddenly, am I? <laughs> There's no way, I was declined. For some reason. Um, well, I guess I can just go to my... No, it says I'm affiliate. I, I checked. It says I'm affiliate. I don't know how I got four more emote slots. Well, the, the thing is, is I've already qualified for partnership. And I've already applied. But just because you qualify doesn't mean you'll get accepted. So, I don't know. Weird. Twitch made a weird decision. They said it's because I wasn't consistent enough with averaging 75 viewers. Just because I happened to average it and meet all the requirements and unlock the button to apply for partnership doesn't mean it's guaranteed because it's not uh, consistent enough. So it's only really down to average viewers at this point. However, once you've unlocked the button to apply for partnership, it doesn't get unlocked. So, I mean, I could click that button as much as I want until they get annoyed and probably manually remove the option till, <laughs> till, I, uh, till I can apply again. <laughs> that seems like a good strat. Yo, Max. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. Jeez. <laughs> I'm very thankful. That is now 73 sub points. Which might be the most I've ever had at once. I know I've been in the 60s before. I don't know if I've ever been in the 70s. Thank you, Max. Appreciate that. And the only time I was ever in the 60s was like someone gifted 25 subs. Oh, it was during my 100% uh, not speed run, but my 100% playthrough. That was when I reached 60 plus sub points, which makes sense. Other than that, though, it's it, it is. I don't think it's ever been past sixty something until now. Thank you, Max. <laughs> That's awesome. Appreciate it a lot. Oh, you like my Animal Crossing shirt? Thank you. I designed it myself. Believe it or not. Oh, okay, Royal Leo Knight. That explains it. So, affiliates have just a 
accumulated or acquired more emote slots over the last whenever they announced that. Well, dang. Who needs partnership now? Just got more emote slots. Didn't even know it. Thanks for the info. That's awesome. Five follower follower emote slots? Whoa. Cool. Yeah, I've designed like six or seven Animal Crossing shirts. However, two of them I don't wear. One of them was a KK Slider shirt, which I thought looked really cool in the design. But the problem is, is um, I didn't like, it wasn't high up enough on the shirt. So you only see like half of KK when I'm streaming. So if I, if I could redo it and uh, put KK Slider higher up on the shirt. I didn't think that one through. The other one was a design I thought was hilarious at the time, but I am no longer a fan of it. One of them I lost. I don't know what happened to that shirt, but it wasn't my favorite one, so it was fun. So there are three of them I don't wear. There was a design I never made a shirt out of. And then I actively wear three of my designs, and then I have three or four other Animal Crossing shirts that I wear as well. That I did not design. Are there any other grandiose projects that I've been wanting to take on? One of them I would say is the Nook Mile Plus uh, program for Animal Crossing for this game. Like a standalone. Just like a, a fun thing to do. I tr I hired someone to finish Majora's Mask VR for me. Or by hire them, I mean I'll pay them if they actually do it. Um, but they have been unsuccessful so far. So, unfortunately, um, Majora's Mask VR I really hope can get finished, but there's just been one complication after another. It's just a... The engine is just different enough from Ocarina of Time to cause a lot of complications. I was so close to finishing it all by myself. Uh, but ultimately, it just became too complicated. And uh, even this person who is an expert at programming Majora's... Or not programming, but working on Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time stuff, even they're having trouble with it. So, we'll see about that. Anyways, so that one's really out of my... Like, out of... Like, I, I tossed that project off to someone else. So, as far as big project that I want to work on personally, or I am working on personally, I would say another large project would be finishing, or rather, starting... <laughs> and finishing my No Nooks Challenge video. That's a huge project that um, could take me quite some time. Because I really want to show off a lot of the No Nooks stuff on a, in a video. I've completed the challenge. I have all the videos for it. I just need to, uh, it's, it, you know, it's 150 hours of footage. It takes time to edit. So that's a major project I would like to work on and complete at some point soon. Yeah, just ask Kays, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Kyler. I'm sure he has experience. Actually, I would be interested if Kays could figure it out, because I don't think he's ever done Majora's Mask modding. But of course, yes, he was, in case you, those who don't understand the, uh, the Kappa, um, Hayes was, did the, uh, the, the framework for OTVR back in 2017? Yeah, 2017. And I built off of it. But Majora's Mask, it has been 
entirely new material. All right. Dang, this is salmon. Salmon is not playing nice. Yeah, that's the, the same case, yeah. That's the case. Could achievements be coded into Animal Crossing? Absolutely. But we need decomp to be finished. I think it'd be really cool. Decomp was going to unlock a lot of modding, fun modding stuff. I think villager photos would be a fun mod. Hybrid flowers. Other 3D model items. But until then, um, no, nah, it would be too complicated. Yeah, C stick to emote. Exactly. Yeah, one of my ideas for uh, a future stream could be making a new, another new hacked town. Though that takes a lot of time, even with ACSE. So it that would be a big project. But yeah, I'm also a huge fan of decorating. Come on, Salmon, please cooperate. I'm actually running low on time. I'm catching this fish. We've seen two large fish in a row. Surely that must mean it's a salmon. Come on. And yes, I have tested salmon is possible to catch. On August 27th. Or I have done it already. Not in this particular challenge. Dang. Well, how fitting to get the final one in six to be a nightmare. Just like the first one in six. That was a weird looking salmon. <laughs> it was weird my player character didn't do the jingle, considering that was. Uh, you know, uh, it was a salmon, it was just weird. The first one in six was the sea bass. It took 20 tries for that stupid sea bass. This has already tried like 11 or 12. No, I'm not kidding. It took two hours and 25 minutes to get the sea bass. The second longest time so far. First longest was Arowana. Maybe I shouldn't have trolled around with that Arapaima. Maybe I actually needed more time. This is the third attempt at this challenge. So yeah, I had caught a shiny sea bass on a previous attempt. The reason why this is the third attempt, I, this is only the second one that I... Um, well, no, this is the second attempt. The first one... Well, my town got corrupted. I was going to reset anyways, 
because I found you can you I figured out you can catch jellyfish and um sea bass two days or, or one day prior due to a bug in the game's programming. So I actually caught a sea bass with better odds the first time. That's why I found it instantly. Because its odds were really good. It was a 1 in 3 chance the first time I found it. Uh, on the first, uh, first attempt at this challenge. Before I started over. Jeez. This is crazy. This is attempt 12 or 13 for the salmon. Guess I'm not gonna eat spaghetti tonight. <laughs> Guess that's not happening. Yeah, it's sad. Is there any way to make spaghetti healthy? I mean, it's pretty much just pasta and sauce. And cheese. Is that healthy? I don't like mushrooms. Yeah, but how does one make the pasta healthier? Oh, you mean like the, the noodles? Healthier noodles? Ooh, carrots. Good idea. Carrots and spaghetti? Now, I, I mean, does that work? I don't, I don't think I've ever thought of that. Ooh, zucchini? Zucchini? That's That's not a bad idea. That's true, you can, you, yeah, you could have salad with your spaghetti and there are carrots and salad. That's a fair point. Oh yeah, there's spaghetti squash, and you could have pumpkins with that as well. I don't know. I have to be in a particular mood to really like spaghetti squash. Yeah, maybe the way to make spaghetti healthy is to have a salad with it. Well, okay. If spaghetti is healthy... Wouldn't that also make pizza healthy? Aren't they basically the same ingredients? I guess the only thing... You know, maybe, yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. They're just arranged differently. Oh, okay, so pizza is unhealthy because it typically has more fats. Is that the only thing that makes it unhealthy? I mean, that's a pretty big thing. Is pizza actually healthy if it doesn't contain all those fats? Yeah, exactly. What qualifies as unhealthy? Okay, oil is a pretty deciding factor. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, there's, there's weird variants of pizza. But I mean, like, just standard cheese, bread, sauce. 
maybe a topping or two. Fats and sugar quantities. That makes sense. Okay, okay. I see. Cheese is so good. I'm so glad I'm not lactose intolerant. I eat so much cheese. <laughs> Margarita pizza on cauliflower crust. That actually sounds pretty good, but I'm also hungry right now. That's good, Casey. There is the, um, yeah, there's plenty of cheese alternatives. Some of them can be pretty good. But, thankfully, that's not something I actively avoid or need to. So, I will eat pizza any day of the week. <laughs> any, uh, seven times out, actually. I'll eat it, I'll eat it every day of the week. If I could eat, if I could have anything in the world to eat right now, what would it be? Hmm. Um. I don't know. Something incredibly healthy and incredibly delicious. Now, what exactly is that? I don't know. Still, still trying to figure that out. Oh, there we go. We hadn't seen a cockroach on a tree yet. Now we're just missing the giant beetle. Then we'll have seen all the bugs on the trees on the way down to the salmon. Then it'll spawn. If I could have anything to eat right now, <laughs> it'd be a salmon out of this bay that I'm currently fishing. A shiny salmon. That's what I want right now. Alright, so that's five fish. That's six. You know, like, uh, sparkling water? Or sparkling apple juice or grape juice? It's basically that. But with whatever food you're eating. Oh, yeah, here's another good example. You know those, have you ever had Pop Rocks? You know that thing that, like, uh, that, like, uh, I don't know, pops when you're eating it? Just imagine that, but with whatever food you're having. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not scary. It's, it's, uh, if, maybe if it's unexpected. I actually really like the Pop Rocks. I thought they were great. I thought they were fun. Unless I wasn't expecting them. Not when you swallow it. Well, I think the point is they're supposed to finish popping before you swallow it. So, I think you've messed up, Kyler. No wonder you hate those things. <laughs> you should try again, but with a better technique. <laughs> Alright, I got like three more tries. Come on, Sam, are you kidding me? 
What is going on here? We're going back in time. Not like it matters. We're going back a year. 2005, that'll be the year. Why August 11th? I already got a jellyfish on August 10th. Unless you're joking. Now I'm playing on August 27th. Because that is the first day salmon could possibly spawn. Tyler, I already got the jellyfish on August 10th. I don't think you're paying attention. Oh, okay. No, it, it, you mix up jellyfish and salmon. Probably. No, I already got The jellyfish is August 10th. I repent. Alright, if that's what I need to say. Threat. It's not a big deal. Yeah, Rossetti's Rossetti's wild. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, come on, it's time. This is this is attempt number fourteen. This is officially the second longest or the second worst luck with getting a one in six so far. Let's not make it number one, please. Where's the fish even at? I don't even see it. There it is. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. It's time to get efficient for the last part of this challenge. I say as I go back another year. 2004. Yep, it's time to optimize. Either attempt 14 or attempt 15. The 
the salmon. This is crazy. This was supposed to be done an hour ago. But, uh, we're super close. <laughs> Max, with five more subs. Oh my goodness, thank you, Max. That will help motivate me to finish this challenge. Congrats to 1UP, Acrolance, Pusheen. Yo, Mason got a sub. That's ASAP proc. And then uh, Sanzo. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you very much, Max. Appreciate that a lot. Let's channel that good uh, generosity into uh, a, a salmon right at the end here, please. That'd be great. Alright, so... Thank you, Max. That is two fish. Three fish. Four. Are you heading out now, Max? All right. Well, thanks again for everything. It means a lot. Really, really do appreciate it. And I'm glad you are enjoying the Animal Crossing and the community. Thanks again. Have a good night. And thanks for the good luck. We'll see you next time. Alright, come on, salmon. This is probably not a salmon, but I haven't caught anything in a while. Oh, look, it's going It's going into the bay. Just because it goes into the bay doesn't mean it's going to become a salmon. Though that would be... That would be pretty nifty. Alright, anyways. We caught a fish. It's been a while. Nice to remember that we have that ability. Alright, I think that was fish number seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. No. Okay. 2003! Fun. 2003. We're really going back in time, aren't we? This is attempt 16 at a salmon. This is getting a little ridiculous. I hope I don't have to go into overtime on this stream. If I do, it won't be by much. Yeah, some good games came out in 2003. That's true. Some even better games came out in 2002, though. Notably, uh, the one we're currently playing. Alright, here we go. Attempt 16 at the 1 and 6. Will this be the 1? I hope so. Alright, 1... Two. Three. Four. Five. 
five. Six. Fish. Jane, help. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. <laughs> Eleven. Twelfth fish, please. Well, dang, this is crazy. All right, this is attempt sixteen or seventeen now. We'll stay in two thousand. Three for the time being. Considering Animal Crossing wasn't even released on August 27th, 2002. Wasn't even out yet. Yeah, I also thought this was going to be a shorter stream. <laughs> Turns out it may be a longer one. Said it with proper punctuation. Are you happy, Rossetti? <laughs> One. thought the real boss of this challenge was the salmon oh yeah you're right that's what uh that's what abilene did in the 100 speed run when we were trying to get a certain fish abilene donated or, or gifted a sub to that fish because <laughs> apparently you can do that that's true the salmon never got a sub <laughs> It all makes sense now. Resetting, I'll stop resetting if you can make these salmon spawn. I really don't want to do an entire stream for one salmon, though apparently, uh, apparently, it, apparently, it's it's demanding that I spend several hours of my life getting this fish. Eight. Nine. Ten. 
11. What do we have here? 12. We'll just catch it, see what happens. Yeah. All right, we're still still streaming, aren't we? Wow. No, I've caught a salmon on August twenty seventh before. I so uh, I know it's possible. We're going to two thousand two. Two thousand two time. The before times. All right. This one is the fastest dialogue, though. So that's good. Where's the fish? I like it. Alright, this is attempt like 18. 17 or 18. Still not the most amount of times I've spent trying to get a 1 in 6. Somehow. Six, seven, eight, nine. Eleven. Twelve. We'll catch one more large fish. Uh, I really was hoping this wouldn't happen, but... I guess I'm gonna have to do a little bit of overtime. Crazy. Catch this large fish, unlikely to be a salmon. Alright. We'll do three more attempts in overtime, but other than that, otherwise I I really need to go to bed. So that's 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 a pump. Yeah, and absolutely, if I try it next stream, I'll get it like instantly. If only I didn't miss that first Arapaima. <laughs> I 
And we got the jellyfish quickly as well. I got, I've been, I'm being teased by this salmon. Dang. This is attempt 19. One more attempt and we'll have tied for the most attempts at a 1 and 6. Starting off with the worst RNG, ending with the worst RNG. How fitting. Can I even get a sub 20 hours at this point? <laughs> Statistically, I still should. Alright, sounds good, CRQ. That sounds important. Sounds like that'll that'll do the trick. There it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. There it is. Uh yes. Alright. There we go. <laughs> Oh, let's go! I did it! That is time. Oh my goodness. Jeez. I did it! Yay! <laughs> this is gaming hour. Oh my goodness. Thank you, everyone. That was insane. But we got there. Yes, it did work, CRQ. Thank you. Oh my goodness. GG. Shiny fishing challenge complete. It did not play nice. But we got there. The first day of overtime. Let's unequip this fishing rod. We'll put it right there. Here, we'll take out all the other items as well. There is our 101% completion. All the all the bugs, or not all the bugs, all the trash, all the fish. We'll put that there. Let's go donate these things. Let's go get our golden rod. Let's finish this. Just in time for bed, too. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy timing. GG's. Hello, blathers. <laughs> Goodness gracious. What a challenge. What a challenge. I have officially caught every single seasonal fish in the game as early as possible. Under 20 hours as well. Shiny fishing challenge complete. Probably the only person in the world that has done this. I would say there's a one in a billion chance anyone else has ever done this. Oh yeah, arowana. Let's, let's admire this one. Yes, yeah, another rare fish. That's a, that is a good one right there, Blathers. That one took me three hours. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited to show off all these fish in the museum. We'll do a museum tour. A little bit of overtime. Not too bad, though. Barely. Barely not too bad. But yes. Wow. GG Salmon. It only took... five or six times longer than it should have. <laughs> Well, it took it took about four times longer than it should have. Three to four times longer. Craziness. Every single shiny fish. Wow. I did it! Let's go! Oh my goodness. What a what a stream. But yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. What a fun challenge. I wasn't sure how long this would take. I was expecting it to take about 24 hours, and well, here we are. I exceeded my expectations. Yes. Four hours faster than expected. Four and a half. 
Yep, there's a sweet fish for your blathers. I am a fan. It's like bubble gum. World record! <laughs> World record. The shiny fishing challenge. Sub 20. There you go, Blathers, Arapaima. The only 1 in 600 fish that I missed. Actually, the only fish, the only shiny fish that I missed. As far as I'm aware. The only shiny fish that I had yet to catch, I should say. And we got ourselves a pink jellyfish. With a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of opacity. You can see through it. Fancy. And the salmon. The opacity is vanilla. Uh, but I kept the opacity for its shiny version. And there's our salmon. And yes... All the fish have been donated. A complete shiny fish collection. GG. Let's check them out. Look at our shiny fish here. We have shiny string fish, shiny rainbow trout, shiny large char, cherry salmon, sweet fish, crawfish, and then, uh, and then we've got ourselves a dace and a pale chub. Oh wait, there's more up there. Uh, and the pond smelt as well. There's the pond smelt. Moving on, we'll do the bottom right tank last. Moving on, we have... Um, the shiny bluegill. What else do we have in here? That's it for shinies. But up here... Oh no, not yet. That's it. That's it for shinies. Oh, and the eel. The, and the shiny eel. Yeah, yeah. I knew I was missing one thing. Oh, and the shiny killifish. I thought that was elsewhere, but there it is. You can barely tell it's shiny. Oh, then now you can tell. Look at those. Look at that eel. That actually looks really, really cool with all the other fish. Oh, this is awesome. Moving on to the ocean fish. There's our salmon. Stupid salmon. We got ourselves the shiny barred knife jaw. Sea bass. <laughs> they're really swimming. Uh, they're, re they're really having a good time. Jellyfish upside down for some reason. Oh, frog spoiler. And then the coelacanth as well. Nice and gentle giant. That jellyfish is really having fun. Purple coelacanth. Shiny starfish down there. Shiny coral. And we have our shiny frog. This thing was a pain to get shiny in the museum. But shoutouts to Kyler for figuring it out. It was formatted, uh, its texture was formatted differently. We actually had to make a shiny variant of its texture. Or of its, like we did a full texture, not just palette, but texture. And it was a pain, but we got there and look at it. It looks so good. One shiny poison dart frog. Shoutouts to Kyler. Perfection. In this tank... Wait, we don't want spoilers for that tank. We have... Shiny Loach. Nice golden Loach. We've got ourselves... Shiny Giant Catfish. What else do we have? Quick Run. Shiny Catfish. Shiny Catfish, Giant Catfish, and Loach. Ooh, look at it from that angle. Look at its whiskers. The goby is stuck. <laughs> Poor goby. Look at that. Look at that goby. And finally, the rare fish tank. Here we go. All the shinies, all the rare fish. What is the angelfish? The angelfish isn't shiny. Don't look. How'd that happen? Oh no. Rest in peace, shiny angelfish. We'll go look at it in the house. It reverted. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, but it's... We, we'll look at it. I shaved... I, I saved a shiny angelfish in the house for a reason. Yes. We're going to conclude with looking at the house. Uh, we'll make a we'll make a patch. This will be patched in the next, uh, next installment. Uh, anyways, just ignore that. 
shiny giant snake head, shiny arowana, shiny. Look at the piranha. It like tries to attack you. It's it's kind of kind of vicious. And our shiny arapaima looking a little pixelated in all of its glory. And then the shiny guppy. There we go. Angelfish hid away because it knows it's not shiny. Oh, there it is. Look at that arowana. Big old green eye. And then one final run around the museum. Or around the fish. This actually might be my favorite tank. So many colors. If the angelfish was shiny. Maybe this one would be. We'll, we'll get that fixed in the next patch. One last run through. We will uh, we'll go back to our house. We'll check out the house. And we'll look at our shiny angelfish in the house where it is actually shiny. And, uh, and we'll uh, call it a conclusion to this challenge. Very fun. And I'm going to actually keep this town and this... Uh, and this challenge for uh, shiny bug catching. I'm not going to start a new town. There's there's no reason to. So we will have a complete shiny fish collection and shiny bug collection when I continue this challenge for bugs. And we'll get that angelfish fixed. But in the meantime, somehow I knew to catch a second angelfish. There is the true shiny angelfish. There it is with the lights off. There it is with the lights on. Here, let's put it more in the light. There we go. There's our shiny angelfish that we we know and love much better. Let's go. Challenge complete. GG's. Tyler, I don't know if I'm ready for a real full odds. 1 in 8,192 shiny insects. I don't know if I'm ready for that. But I will be ready for uh, 1 in 600 gi uh, giant beetle. That'll be a good time. All right. Well, let's go ahead and call this a challenge. Call this a stream. It's bedtime. For me. Pretty good timing. Not perfect timing, but pretty dang good timing, nevertheless. Good stuff. Challenge complete. I actually am kind of in shock that it got completed tonight. I was I was ready to mentally prepare for another day of salmon searching. Right at the end, it decided to exist. Good stuff. All right. That's the challenge. Shiny fishing challenge. Off the list. Did it. It was a challenge, all right. But I got there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you had a good time with the challenge. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.